covering that pretty amazing previous match but it is time for the quarterfinals map pool showcase and we're going to be starting off as always in the nomad pool with more featured artist type this time unconquered from hellblind mapped by idust someone making their very first appearance as a mapper in cwc for this uh, 2019 edition circle Even size enough. of four and approach rate of 9.4 and a drain time on the shorter side of 1.42 yeah, even though Germany did have a little disappointing loss this week, they have a pretty big win with one of their German mappers getting his first ever map pool, or map in the map pool for CWC. He's gonna yeah, be very much an, uh, an up-and-coming mapper in the uh, the recent kind of 12 months or so has made huge strides towards uh, storming the ranked section, and this is one that you may well see in the ranked section uh, by the end of this year. Obviously, featured artist hype, as we suggested. Lots of anti-flow on offer on this one, and uh, some very dense one-eight streams that get combined in there as well, along with the fairly prevalent one-four. Yeah, probably some of the more stronger teams with confident teams on the shorter adversity maps will be picking this one. Song does a good job of balancing calmer and more intense sections, giving players like a quick burst of energy and then a nice little break and then obviously bursting straight back into a more difficult section. You can see there's some really high slider velocities and some snappy hyper dash chains in here as well. A little bit of everything on offer as far as uh, flow and snapping is concerned, I think. Even got some little wonky sliders over here. We've seen that Nomad 1 is traditionally a considered more of a comforting pick in uh, map pools over recent years and pools and you got to wonder that if this is your your comfort pick what could be coming up next huh because this looks quite tricky yeah i don't know if this is a comfort pick for most teams because it's pretty hard especially that long spinner too it's going to be pretty brutal if you can't spin on that pretty well Twenty thousand points just from the spinner Uh, World Vanquisher from Void Mourn Finale is going to be our second pick. I think this was the victor in the ultimate catch mapping contest number three? Or number four, not the collab contest. Or was that number three? I can't remember. It was it was a victor in the mapping contest, uh, similar to uh, Sorcerer's Excelsior that we saw in the previous pool. So this is uh, mapped by Sinnoh, who is obviously the creator of the group stage tiebreaker Botched Us. A very streamy pick with circle size of 4, approach rate of 9.6, and a drain time of 2 minutes and 30 seconds. You know, I'm noticing, why does this have a fate background on this song? The map selectors have uh, provided little notes saying, please ask Sino to write a paper describing the relationship between this song and the fate background. So uh, maybe we can get some, uh, some thoughts from him on that one. You are one week from right now. Yep, go. On a full thesis. <laughs> College, a full report. Essay. Yep. Gotta go into every single detail. So similar to uh, some of the patterns we've seen in previous Sino maps, this one does feature some long, high slider velocity sliders, as well as some snappier sections with chained hyper dashes. And again, one of those uh, stacked slider tail to slider end patterns that we saw in both Dorchadas and again in the uh, Rabbit 16 tiebreaker. There's also quite a lot of buzz sliders thrown in here, which aren't all particularly easy to hit by standing still. Like, there's some that you're not, you, you won't ever have to wiggle for them, but there's some that require pretty good balance that can be very difficult when you're coming out of a uh, strong hyper dash. Yeah, a lot of those one half hyper dashes that were chained together look pretty far. So you can expect a few misses on those. Looking like a lot of anti-flow on some of these final stream sections, but the spacing doesn't look too mean. This yeah, is something, especially... at least this part, that most players who play kind of the current speed map meta would be reasonably familiar with at least.
a little tricky hyper dash one half jump section at the end, but hopefully that won't result in any fails. So two down, four to go. Reversible Doll by Wawaka, RIP Wawaka, mapped by uh, Minato Yukina is our third selection. Man, this is one of my favorite all time CTB maps. I could go on for probably like a good hour talking about my memories. Well, I'll do, you, I'll do you one almost as good. You can go on for three minutes and 21 seconds about it. How does that sound? All right, I'll try. I'll try. <laughs> so this was one of my first maps only about in like 2014 that I actually tried super hard to get an FC on and try to actually get a good score, right? And then CLSW kind of had his mass exodus of maps where he deleted all of his maps and a lot of them weren't really ever to be seen again. He's been uploading a few of them since, right? And then maybe I think about a year ago, I'm not sure on the exact date, but I told him, hey, you should revo revive Reversible Doll because I think it's one of your best maps. I sent it to him because he didn't have it anymore, I believe, and then he uploaded it. And here we are. Now it's in CWC map pool. I get to play it next week. I'm excited. Let's see if I can get an FC on this and try to prove myself from four years ago. Say, hey, oh, I don't can put do too this much now. pressure on yourself, huh? Oh, it's gonna be hard because this map is still really hard, even though it's an older map. It's still very difficult for even new players, especially because of some of these, you know, one half kind of vertical streams that you have. Yeah, it feels quite a lot uh, more dense than it is due to obviously the BPM of 225, but these are all one half jumps. Um, CS of 4.2 and an AR of 9.5, a little bit longer than our previous two, as I said, about three and a half minutes. And something that I think probably doesn't have too many huge difficulty spikes, but is very much more of a consistency pick than the previous ones we've seen. In the chat, I see Mulkis asking, is this the same as the Nervous Breakdown difficulty? I believe that this is the Nervous Breakdown difficulty, but when CLSW uploaded it back, he made some changes to make it more appealing to modern day and to the ranking criteria so that you could maybe get it ranked at that time. I'm not sure where that is anymore, but yeah. Maybe you should ask him to provide that one too. Oh boy, maybe if he decides not to rank it. I don't know if he has both versions, so we'll have to see. Some of those doubles are a pattern that are, are quite common in more kind of tech-focused maps nowadays. It's interesting to see them in uh, an older map like this. Some mappers were obviously just so far ahead of their time. Unless that was one of the changes that was obviously adapted no, to the... I don't think it was. I think those have been there for quite a while. But one of the common themes of the key eyes, as you can see, pretty far spacing. Always got a whole dash to be able to catch the next note. It's never really anything pretty much. Hence the original name of Nervous Breakdown. Very little period for rest outside of that one break in the uh, in the middle. Very few kind of slow sections or sections where there's little movement or a lesser amount of dashes. It's gonna be interesting to see who has the stamina for this one. Oh, it's gonna be great. From a uh, not quite ancient, but uh, definitely an older map to a brand new one. This is AKNQ's Axiom Crisis, mapped by Lacrima. Another person who I believe is making their debut into the Catch World Cup as a mapper. The Vicious Labyrinth difficulty has a CS of 4.2, an approach rate of 9.5. CS, uh, an HP of 7, so with some of these denture sections, it is slightly more possible to fail than in some of the ones we've seen previously. And a length of 2 minutes and 7 seconds. There's some BPM variation in this one, and that could catch out some people as we did see in uh, Confusion Part 1. Not quite as dramatic as uh, that map, obviously, from the group stages, but they might catch some people out, especially towards the end of the first key eye section as well. I think there is like a jump section where the BPM does slowly decrease. That might be very interesting to see who's uh, keeping an eye on that one, who can avoid dashing too early. 
you know, funnily enough, I think this is actually the map that Makuma asked me to test play two days ago. Saying, what do you yeah, think? I think so. I, I, I have test played this one very recently as well. Yeah, I thought I it was like, very oh, fun. I like, I like the yeah. kind of um, balance of styles that are on offer. There's a lot of flowing sliders as well as more burstier patterns and lots of anti-flow, which I like to see in a map set that's on like this. There's the slowdown section just there, and I believe I do believe that caught me out in a rather wicked way when I test played this map, as I said. And uh, a little slow section here where players will be able to receive a little bit of a respite, but then we go right back into some more dense patterns very soon, so you can't leave yourself too much time to breathe. Yeah, it's definitely going to catch you off guard if you're not ready for that. Just, just to get that awkwardly snapped breakdown section, and then it's a slow section right after it to get in this break. building right back up into this final section as well. We see some significant anti-flow combined with 1-4 hyper dashes. But the ending itself is not too extreme in any way. And we do get a decent sized spinner at the end here, which players may compete over. That little 1 4th H dash into the 1-1 one, one H dash might catch a few people off. Missed the last note of the map. Oh, was Maybe that a some... one miss, I see. Oh. Fifth no mod pick, first of the converts is Akiyama Yuni, one of my personal favorite Toho artists. Chi no Iro Wakiro, the extra difficulty mapped by the legendary CTB mapper Hollow Wings. Is this the first Hollow Wings map we've had this tournament so far? It is. Oh boy. Already getting started. Starting early this year, yes. So hopefully you can wiggle nicely for this one because there is a lot of brutal anti-flow patterns combined with direction changes. Lots of them combined with hypers and strong dashes with no regard for uh, um, os catch. Typical flow, obviously, as you'd expect from a combat difficulty. CS3 makes some of these edge dashes maybe a little bit more lenient than you might expect because obviously you have that bigger plate size. Um, and obviously AR9 does improve the uh, reading ability, or it makes it a little less kind of difficult, I suppose, for certain players. But also this map is quite long at uh, 3 minutes, so consistency is important. This is going to be one where if you can get up to 200 combo, you want to try and hold on to it for as long as humanly possible, because you'll be pulling out a huge lead of your opponents if you do so. Oh, these wiggles are looking so brutal. The spacing on them is just so far. Oh my god. Oh! See, there you go, you got double oh. edge dash combined with hyper dash anti flow. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this one. This looks very mean. I'm surprised that miss right there from Ken was right there and not anywhere else. Not sure why, whether he decided to wiggle that one or whether he wanted to stack that one, but. There's just so many micro movements that you have to get perfectly right. Be able to hit a lot of these wiggles. I think in some senses this is similar to, although obviously far more difficult than uh, Sanshi Suime from the pool we've just seen, in that there are a lot of movements and dashes in particular that if you're slightly too far to the left or the right when you hit them, you can make it almost impossible to hit the next jump. Whereas if you're good at catching things on the edge of your plate, you can make the next jump significantly less stressful for yourself. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of a mix of the Sanshi Sui Mei map and Fallen a little bit. It's like it's got the difficulty of Fallen a little bit, but the patterns of Sanshi Sui Mei. This might be one where you just have to memorize the parts that are most difficult for you and uh, deliberately position your catcher further to one side or the other oh, yeah, to try and hit. There'll be, we'll, we'll see lots of different play styles and innovation to try and cope with the difficulty on offer here, I think. Oh my lord. There were so many edge dashes in the middle of that stream too that you could just be slightly off on. You gotta leave those fruits as soon as you catch them. Can't be late by even just a few milliseconds. And if one featured artist was not enough for you, we have more with Loki's Interlude rounding out our Nomad pool, the second of the two convert selections. Mapped by Chuin at a slightly higher BPM of 175. 
very standard um, Oscatch specific fare, I suppose, for a level of this difficulty of, of CS of 4 and approach rate of 9.3. And the only word to describe this one is jump. There really is nothing else to this pick other than reading and positioning for jumps, as we'll see throughout pretty much the entirety of this pick. These jumps are so far. Like I said in the last map, there were some places where you had to be just a few mil milliseconds, and you had to, if you were late by just about that, you're gonna miss. This is a pretty much the same thing, except there's a whole map for the most part. Yeah, like, absolutely. Especially those jumps. Oh my gosh. I've always been, uh... A fan of but also very bad at playing those kind of funnel jumps where they slowly expand or contract because the point where the dashes become hyper dashes is always so difficult to kind of adapt to and it always yeah. catches players out and although Tell you're a fan. yeah you have, <laughs> this is uh, definitely map what's it called uh the one map we use them so many times i've done that in quite Hard a few one. maps to be honest but I know that Guignol, um, yeah, that's what it is. Guignol has has quite a few of those, yeah. But anyway, this one is, I think each jump in its kind of individuality is fairly doable. But when you're under tournament pressure, especially late on into a match, some of these are going to be extremely easy to miss. Don't forget about the cross screen jumps too. What's a jump map without cross screen one one jumps? Absolutely, keep your eyes on those ones. Where did the one millionth point go? That's a double S and a map with no spinners. We've got some, some Osmania gimmicks coming into this one. You know, we don't question those kind of things around here. We just let it slide, pretend well, it What if someone happened. gets a million in the, tw in, the, in the match and someone else gets triple nine? That's six nines, huh? Well then... What if a map is decided by back. one point because someone didn't get the one nil? Well, it sucks to be them, I guess. Unlucky. <laughs> Maple notes for this one have instructed us to skip the intro since it's around one minute long. So uh, maybe we can get to the skipping that, or maybe we can just enjoy this very soothing introduction of Regal Theatre's La Salle Feed, an artist that I'm pretty familiar with, but not this particular uh, particular song. Regal Theatre do a lot of very interesting kind of uh, Celtic dance um, and like Oriental styled um, pieces. Lots of emphasis on flutes and pipes and uh, that kind of thing which is very cool uh, this one is a collaborative difficulty between uh, Yumino Himiko or Examination and our two map selectors Ascendance and FD Fluorite this is the short version I put in air quotes because it's still four minutes and 20 seconds long the long version is five and a half minutes I think so I'm not sure what exactly they've cut out from this one to create the short version short version with a one minute intro oh boy Yes. So uh, this one, as we saw in the AK and Q map earlier, does feature some BPM changes, but they're a little bit more noticeable in this one. We have a BPM, uh, almost a BPM halving section, varying between 87 and 142 throughout this difficulty, which is going to be very difficult to adapt to with hidden now. Not a hugely high BPM overall, but quite a lot of one-fourth usage means that it does, in some senses, play like a faster map than it actually is. Yeah, a lot of these one-fourth hyper dashes, you can see, they turn into very strong one-fourth dashes in the opposite direction. You can easily catch out some people who are not too experienced with their hidden timing. So just to recap over this one, since it's obviously a long pick. It's going to be a slightly smaller circle size than we're used to, with 4.5 in the hidden pool this time, and an approach rate of 8.8. .8. So, whilst we haven't got the AR7 picks yet, we're back in with those uh, niggling odd approach rates that people might not be accustomed to playing with hidden. And a drain time, as you said, of about three and a half minutes once the intro time has been cut out. Spacing on this one is going to be the difficulty for uh, players trying to read, as well as, as you said, those 1-4 hyper dashes that are combined with quick direction changes, uh, coupled with the slightly lower approach rate. Carrying the theme in this map will seems to be throw wiggles in there, because it seems like a lot of maps have had quite a bit of wiggles in here, haven't there? Right is in the uh, chat giving us instructions on whose parts are whose. Oh gosh, I 
couldn't if you're a, if, if you're if you're a, a, a mappers player uh, and you you like picking out individual styles in your kind of selections for play, then it might be appealing to you to to notice the kind of difference in sections between the varying parts. I have a feeling that last one was sentences part. Yes, Actually, you no, are correct. One is, I this think one this one is fluorite's part. I'm I'm being told. Oh. Let's see. I saw the doubles and I was like, a sentence did that in cycle hit. I remember, and then he was very proud of it. I think. And then Spec got all the credit. Yeah. Another miss there, yeah. Gotta get our curse and tating on point. Oh, see, there we go. Hey, We're it. yeah, the map, the map <laughs> is finished. We can affect the outcome of the replays, guys. We have ascended. We can now cursinate wherever and whenever we like, even through time. We're just that good at the game in commentary. Well, you might be good at the game. I'm only good at commentary, I'm afraid. Oh no, you're good at the game. <laughs> now play yourself. I don't think I'll be good at many of the maps in this pool. Although this one is one that I've test played before. Uh, not with Hidden, but is quite fun. But I'm a massive uh, Steven fanboy, so this one does appeal to me. Uh, Ribbon Room Mint Tears. This is uh, not quite as ancient a map as you might be expecting. Uh, dating back to early 2014 or late 2013. A CS of 4, an approach rate of 9, BPM of 188, and a drain time of 1 minute and 50 seconds. And for anyone who is even remotely familiar with uh, Steven's mapping, this one is all about dashes combined with hyper dashes, edge jumps galore, and uh, obviously difficulty reading this at AR9 is quite high, I would say. Yeah, usually on AR9 maps, it's not too hard to read some of these patterns. And this one is quite a bit more difficult than most maps, like you said. I'm kind of interested to see if there's any of those signature one-fourth Steven stream patterns that you usually have in his maps. As you can see, we're already three quarters of the way through this one, so this is quite a short map. In some senses, similar combo-wise to True Eyes, in that it's very difficult to make a silly mistake and miss, and it's really difficult to build that combo back up and secure a good score for your team. And yep, as you were saying, there's a few of those wiggling one-quarter hyper dash and uh, regular dash streams that are common in Steven's mapping from this era. You see them in maps like um, Did You See That Shadow as well. Yep, there was another one right there if you missed it. One of my favorite patterns that not many people ever actually use anymore. Kind of makes me sad, you know. Wish more people would use those. Right, I know what I'm putting in my next map then, just for you. <laughs> I don't do it anywhere near as good a job, but... Uh... Hidden 3, the final hidden pick is our uh, remaining selection, which you're on seeing now. Uh, Doku Ringo to Cinderella, mapped by Luz. Fairy tale? Question mark. Difficulty. Uh, this is 200 to 215 BPM, and is, as you can probably tell from the uh, song as it's already chimed in, is mapped in one third rhythm for the most part. So feels even faster than it may appear. Circle size of 4.2, an approach rate of 9.2, so no extremely low AR hidden in this pool, and a drain time of three and a half minutes. It's actually quite surprising that we went from having AR7, AR8, and AR8.5, or no, actually AR9, and then we went to 8.8, 8.8, 9, and 9.2. What a big difference. Yeah, this is very difficult map in an entirely different way. This is far more similar to Pizza Plaza, at least from the previous pool, except obviously with far less consistent spacing and um, obviously the introduction of more edgier jumps, whereas Pizza Plaza was fairly kind of consistent between its usages of walks, dash, and hyper dash. This reminds me a they little said bit of... It's a small rest for AR8 hidden, but it'll be back on later rounds. That sounds ominous. Oh, no. Oh no. This kind of reminds me of um, last year's final hidden map pool of Climatic Cry a little bit. A little bit less difficult, of course, because that was the final map pool. But a lot of these one fourth dashes that are really far reminds me of it. I think once again, this is more about length and consistency than anything else. 
some fairly tricky edge jumps combined with hyper dashes that will make um, holding that combo quite important. That's potentially a spin trap, I think. That spinner comes back in a little faster than you would maybe expect. And there's a dense stream part that comes immediately after it. I need to study that stream pattern again to try and work out if the kind of optimum path through the spinner ends up on the left where the next notes are. But it would not be surprising to see a spinner bait like in a difficulty at this, uh, at this stage. Far one for these dashes. <laughs> nice little combo rebuilding section there for if you missed in the previous part. But I think even the calm part here with some of these spacings could easily be kind of a nervous miss opportunity. Oh, yeah. And it builds back up very fast. There was one little note that it went from being a hyper dash three times in a row to the last time not being a hyper dash. Ooh, that's and evil. Instead of just being a far dash, I saw that. I'm like, oh, that's gonna be somebody's gonna miss there. Shit on that one. Yep. Oh my, that stream. That was a buzz slider that looked kind of wide. I'm not sure I would be able to stack that first try. That'll Somebody's take some gonna practice miss that for too. perfect positioning. Someone is definitely going to miss that, I'm sure. So many nerves are going to get to you and you're just going to misplace that by just a little bit. I wonder if it's actually possible that somebody could fail that buzz slider. The and spinner at the end was quite long, end. and but the HP drain is 7, so potentially quite difficult yeah. to recover from that one. Hmm. But anyway, that's going to do it for our uh, hidden pool. Hard Rock is next on the menu. Uh, a Crowley map, Amatsuki, How to Sekai Seifuku, the loneliness difficulty. Circle size of 5.33 after the addition of Hard Rock, so not much smaller in terms of fruit size than a lot of common circle size 4 maps. An approach rate obviously of 10 at this stage, and a drain time of around about 3 minutes and 10 seconds. For some reason, this background looks super familiar. I feel like we've had this background on another CWC map in the past. I'm not sure I can uh, answer you on that one. I am the kind of the statistician of the, the room, but I'm not sure I can quite pull out that many maps from the deepest, darkest depths of my memory to answer that question. Right. What you're supposed uh, to do is you're supposed to go into one of your old maps, change the background real quick, and say, ha, ah, it was this one. <laughs> I knew it all along. <laughs> So this one is from uh, late 2017, so it's one of Crowley's earlier maps. Uh, and I think although the star rating is not kind of hugely high at 5, this is one of those maps where it's a lot more difficult than that maybe indicates. Um, a lot of triplets that get converted to, to hard rock have very odd spacing, as I'm sure you're picking out already, being a very prominent hard rock player yourself, Chicken Bible. Yeah, I can see in the chat, people are going with me. This background looks like a little bit like Goose House. There's also that one map by Fee Darling. I'm looking at it right now. It looks a little bit like it. Different angle. Inspir inspiration. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how many kind of pure memorization patterns there are in this one. That was something that we saw a lot of in the colors from the previous pool, especially in the beginning. There were so many patterns that were kind of hyper dash into edge jump or vice versa that players would have to really concentrate for. And you can see a few of those creeping in here as well. But obviously this pick is twice the length. Yeah, this pick kind of just seems like Oh, did you like colors? Hey, here, we'll give you one that's super buffed up. Have longer, colors too, except harder and longer. Yeah, quite literally. Based on my experience from colors, it's 
gonna be um, one of those maps where if you have a lot of hard R players on your team, people who can comfortably read AR-10, then it shouldn't be too much of a problem for you to read some of these jumps. But if you have players who are just playing hard rock because most of the maps are easy up until this point with hard rock, for the most part, if you're a good player, you know, relatively strong player, yeah, but weaker with hard rock. That's where hard rock stops ones. being a fun time for you, I think, yeah. at this stage. Some of those streamed um, like triples across the screen, some of them had hyper dashes and some of them did not. Some of them had like where one of the notes was a hyper dash and the other one wasn't. That looks pretty difficult. Yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a catching you off guard type moment. Oh wow. So uh Jinfeet Maria from Garnadelia Days short version, a very famous specific from uh a Forgotten Era almost is our second Hard Rock pick and our second specific. This one dating back to uh, mid-2014 and is a map that almost anyone who's been playing the game for a considerable period of time will have tried. Maybe not with Hard Rock, but definitely once or twice. Uh, no mod at the very least, so they should be familiar with. This is an older style uh, Minato Yukina or CLSW, obviously as he was known at the time, creation with a very high BPM of 198. Mercifully TV size, so only one and a half minutes, but circle size of 5.2 and an approach rate of 10. And some of the hyper dash jumps in this one are frankly huge. Yeah, definitely, like you said, the hyper dashes in this are very huge, especially the beginning where you can get a lot of just random misses that you're like, oh, I missed there. And then coming into this key eye part is so many just little wiggles you have to get right into strong, strong hyper dashes. You know, people are going to say, why only have one CLSW 2014 map when you can have two? Mm -hmm. This is for all of you people. Some of these cross-screen patterns look so difficult. Especially at this, uh, this elevated approach rate. Yeah. Another good thing about this map is though, that a lot of the people in this tournament have played this map pretty much several times. At least I know I have. I've played it probably about 100 times myself at least. So I have it quite down. I'm sure many other people on the teams, especially teams with older players, have it down as well. Well, if specifics with Hard Rock aren't your speed and you like reading little tricky patterns and balancing uh, one quarter streams like flashes in the uh, previous round we've just seen, then maybe our Hard Rock 3 is for you. Uh, VY1 Cyber Thunder Cider. I think this has definitely been featured in uh, World Cup uh, map pools before. Maybe not this particular version of it, but I'm sure this song has been in an OWC or potentially a TWC. Um, so one quarter stream consistency and as we know, Hard Rock does tend to uh, play some little tricks on those streams. Turning them into strange shapes and giving them some very awkward flow. You know, I've actually never heard this version of the song before. I've heard like three others, but not this one. Slightly slower BPM of 145, but compensated for by almost constant one-quarter streaming for a lot of the more intense sections. Again, circle size of 5.2 and an approach rate of 10. Two and a half minutes in length. And uh, lots of high spacing combined with that slightly slower BPM mean that when there isn't a lot on screen at once, it's going to take a lot of reading pra practice to work out exactly where you need to position yourself for the next notes. You know, I got a perfect comparison for this map to another map that was on another pool from last year. It's a CS4 version of Cosmos from the Hard Rock pool of last year's finals. That's exactly what it looks like. I need to check whether Cosmos was actually also mapped by uh, Tutu Haha, the mapper of this map, because I know he's a very big uh, fan of Vocaloid mapping. I'll Not have sure. to check that one out at a later date. That one was a Val map. Oh, okay. So about the same error, I think, right? Yeah. I'm sure they have some, some guest difficulties on each other's sets from that time. Um, I do see there's those, both those names pop up quite a lot because I'm quite a fan of uh, vowels, converts, and this kind of style. Not with hard rock because I can't read that for noise, but our players in the quarterfinals will have to manage that if they wish to uh, compete on this one.
mercifully as we've seen in some of the other hard rock picks uh, earlier on from the combat selections. This one does feature a reasonable number of breaks. So although it is very reading and micro movement as well as like large spacing intensive, there are ample places to take a little bit of a rest, refocus yourself. But as we've seen also with things like Ghost Rule, where after a spinner and a long break, there's that one note all the way on the right hand side in the group stages that caught out so many people. I imagine that the same could be said for some patterns here. Yeah, just a lot of the kind of far one fourth dashes that are in this, especially during the streams. Oh, I have a feeling somebody's gonna think that last vocal is the end of the map, but then it goes on for like another 10 notes. Hopefully everyone's practicing at this stage to remember that match. Hopefully. So just one mod bracket to go. Double time, we have three maps on offer to you now. The first of these is actually a very recently ranked map. Uh, Calafina's Heavenly Blue, mapped by Nelly. Obviously the Gloria difficulty, this is just a single difficulty uh, approval length map. So we're into the very long double time picks now. Three and a half minutes even with the addition of double time. This one's going to be CS4. An approach rate of 8.8 .8 with double time, which is taking us up to 10.2. So we're really getting into the speedy boys now. And an average BPM uh, with DT of 236. This is actually quite a big step up from last four, I think. Considering... I'm not much of a double time player, but I saw this and gulped a little bit. This looks very much more difficult than stuff that was in the previous pool. Yeah, I could just about keep a, keep a combo on some of the maps in the previous pool. This one looks painfully difficult on reading, on jumping, on kind of consistency. It's so much longer as well. This is one of those maps that you try to, if you're a top player, like in the top 100 or so, and you say, I want to learn DT. This is one of those maps that even top 100 players say, all right, I want to try to learn this and try to get good at DT, and maybe get a PP score in DT. That's how kind of difficult this is. I don't think we could say that any of these maps, except for maybe Days even, was like a map that you could go for PP on. And even then, Days is still really hard. Shows you the massive elevation in difficulty between pools this year, and also compared to previous years. I mean, I know that the last World Cup I played in was 2016, which is obviously a long time ago. And we didn't see like AR10 plus in the double time pool until the finals map pool. And now we're seeing it in quarterfinals. Yeah. And it's on map sets that are like a minute longer than the maps that were in that pool. It's like obviously, it's, it's been a very gradual increase over that time, but players are getting better. And so the map pool is getting much harder to compensate. You know, it makes me think, what are we going to have in the later rounds? Oh, I dread, Lord. I, I, part of me dreads to think, and then the other part of me thinks, hey, I'm not going to be playing these maps anyway, so right on. Go nuts. We're going to get Agoetis with double time in the grand finals map pool. Well, one year that will be in group, group stage double time, I have no doubt. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be long gone by that time, I hope. Oh, I'm missing the last notes before that spinner, too. Yeah, I might be completely kind of ignorant of uh, like the ability to read this, but I'm not seeing anything that looks kind of grossly like difficulty spike-esque as long as you can consistently read this high approach rate for a long period of time. There's some burstier sections with those kind of chained hyper dashes as you see a lot in modern maps. But for the most part, like jumps look reasonable, just everything is just turned up to 11 on the speed factor. Yeah, it's kind of a uh, thing that you see with a lot of Noli maps that flow really, really well. It's kind of reminiscent of like some spectator maps even, how well they flow. You can see a lot of these patterns, even though it's at air 8.8 .8 with double time, it's still not too, too hard, but it's still really hard, of course, to read. And the easier flow makes it a little bit more simple. If 8.8 .8 double time is a little bit too speedy for you, you can try 8.5. The whole 0.2, um, which obviously this is 10.0 with double time, that make a, may, may make the world of difference for you. This is uh, Haremu's Den Kishiki Karen Ongaku Shudan Endless Ripples, and hopefully I didn't entirely butcher that. Again, this is 180 to 240 BPM with double time, so 
a little bit slower than the previous pick uh, for the most part. Circle size of 4.5, so a little bit smaller on that front. And a drain time of 1 minute and 55 seconds with double time. I don't even remember the last time that we had something that was like CS 4.5 in a map pool for CWC and DT. It's been quite a while actually. Obviously DT gives your catcher that extra fluidity uh, in terms of like the speedier motion. So you work kind of a little bit more comfortably with larger circle sizes because small overshooting and undershooting is punished less. In a map like this, even that 0.5 difference in circle size can make a huge difference as to whether you overshoot that slider tail or not. Yeah, we can see FD Floor saying in the chat, I cannot DT with CS 4.5 or higher. Most people fall off very, very hard at about 4.2, 4.3. After that, it becomes exponentially difficult to play DT on that AR. I think and also an added difficulty feature of this is that since the BPM is lower and the uh, rhythm density is also quite a bit low, we see mostly kind of one half patterns here and only a few one quarter jumps thrown in. But reading is going to be difficult for this one. You can see sometimes there's only a singular object on the screen at any one time, which is making it very difficult for players to position their catcher for upcoming jumps. People are definitely I think you should expect this. a lot of kind of random, I air quote, misses here that you would never see if this didn't have like double time added. Yeah, I agree. So our third and final double time pick is uh, Nevir's Yasudare Best of My Love, a colorful path of inspiration. Uh, this is a long uh, standard convert at three minutes and 32 seconds with the addition of double time. A BPM of 180 with double time, so it's the slowest map in the pool uh, for double time and is very much more focused on jumping rather than streaming. And before we discuss this one a little, let me just say, obviously after this one, the tiebreaker is coming up and we've missed this the first couple of weeks. Make sure to get your tiebreaker predictions in the chat, guys. We wanna see what you think will be the quarterfinal tiebreaker. Just a hint, it's a good one, by the way. As Ooh. with all the maps. That's, that, 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 that's not much of a hint. Uh, I think I just gave it away though. Uh, well, anyway, let's, let's, let's quickly change topic back to this one. So we're seeing a lovely kind of combination of both one half jumps and one quarter jumps in this one. And there's very little respite kind of anywhere, really. Lots of rapid kind of one half dashing back and forth. The streams are constructed of a lot of these wiggling or vertical slider patterns that you have to tap dash with double time and a lot of the jumps have a lot of uh, like higher spacing than you would maybe expect what do we see some image material halcyon long version you know at this There's point a few with suggestions. The Increasing difficulties. I wouldn't even be surprised at an image material tiebreaker coming. Image in, like, material and quarterfinals. Oh yeah, madness. But not unheard of, I suppose. We had a couple of. What did we have? An Eleven star map last year, or was that the year before? Uh, we had the Imperial the Circus before. Dead Decadence last uh, 2017. I can't remember exactly what we had last year. Yeah, I don't remember last year either, actually. Huh. Time to do some research. Yep. Statsman is on the case. CWC 2018. For some reason, I think it's black or white, but I'm not sure. Oh, it actually was. <laughs> you are correct. Final showdown. I thought that was Dave's spoiling that's with one. the coolest, coolest long version is the tiebreaker. Now, that's a spoiler if I ever saw one. Depth coming in with away. Declaration of XXX. Very recently ranked map. It would fit the CLSW theme that we had this map pool, except not 2014. So would they put three three Minato Yukina maps in the same map pool though? I don't know. That is a question we'll have to find out in just about one minute after this. Yes. Map Last minute predictions going on.
<laughs> Olive guessing D for the Delta. Which one? There's so many of those map sets now. I think there's three of them, actually. I would love a big black tiebreaker. So three and a half minutes of uh, the doublest of times down and only one tiebreaker map remains. We didn't see any tiebreakers in the round of 16. Will we see one in the quarterfinals? More featured artist hype. Your tiebreaker for the quarterfinals is Sinnoh's Angel Voices by Virtual Self, the Ghost difficulty. This is a map set that I am pretty familiar with. I have a Rain uh, guest difficulty on this one. But this is the overdose. This is a very interesting pick. And as we saw with uh, Dorchidas and uh, one of the uh, Sino map sets that was selected for the Nomad pool, I forget exactly which one it was. Uh, was it Nomad 1 or 2? Um, yeah, the World Vanquisher, the Nomad 2 selection. This is going to feature a massive amount of really high slider velocity sliders. A lot of uh, kick slider patterns that are very weirdly combined together and also some uh, more traditional, or I say traditional, some more ancient mapping techniques of edge dashes combined back to back. And a lot of them are also screen dashes with like one one spacing between them. A little bit of thing to note too is that this is a little bit longer than the tiebreakers we've gotten this year so far. I believe the last one was about five and a half minutes. I don't remember it correctly. Yeah, we had four minutes and a half, uh, yeah, four minutes and 30 seconds, five minutes 30, and this one is just over six minutes in length. This one is a circle size one. of 4, an approach rate of 9.2, and a BPM of 166. And these are some of the uh, edge jumps oh I was boy. talking about. These sliders are, they don't look that difficult when they're hit properly, but the slider velocity is just so obnoxiously long that it means you have to really catch the ends and tails on the edge of your plate and hold dash all the way to the edge, or you'll make a lot of misses in that section. At least the droplets don't seem that bad on those sliders. It could be a lot worse if the droplets were just a little bit too slow or too fast. Yeah, thankfully with the slider velocity being so high, only like one or two droplets are really generated on some of these. Again, we have a nice kind of composition between more intense sections and slower sections where players can rest and recover. Always important on a tiebreaker that's challenging uh, consistency and stamina, especially a longer one uh, as this one is. And yeah, we got some, uh, some info out in the chat from uh, Eagle who's been giving us information on a lot of the uh, map sets thus far, especially if they come from uh, Rhythm and Dojin game circles. Virtual Self is an alias of Porter Robinson, who is a name that a lot of us players will be very familiar with. And as we said, he's a featured artist uh, via this Virtual Self moniker, and you can check out more of his tracks and maybe even give some of them uh, a map yourself if you're feeling brave from the featured artist listing. We're halfway through this pick and it's been kind of quite tricky with some of those high slider velocity sections. The last kind of quarter of the map where we get into a little breakdown uh, section is where it gets really quite tricky though. And you can see we're slowly but surely building our way back up in terms of intensity now with a bit more density, a bit more dash distance. And here we get back into some of these long sliders again. I feel like there's an extra added hyper dash on some of these patterns too compared to the last time. Seeing consistency is a significant focus of this map set as well. A lot of patterns are kind of used and then repeated in varying ways with higher or lower slider velocity, different directions, and also different combinations in and out of certain patterns. This is definitely a map set that if you struggle with any one kind of element in terms of like strong dashing, long dashing, or kind of wiggling, this is going to be a very difficult pick for you to be consistent on. And here we come into the bass drop, which is signified by the bass drop vocals. 
Oh yeah. And Just you can see ramping up really ramping up here. Yeah, I was about to say, this kind of seems a little easier than last pool's tiebreaker, but then that little section came in, I'm like, oh, I guess I just got proven wrong. Yeah, the slide of velocity does get fairly insane on some of these sections. And although it doesn't look it because the approach rate of 9.2, you can see some really dense patterns here, combined again with the massive slide of velocity. You know, I'm having to take a double take on some of these patterns. I saw that big stream on the right side, I'm like, whoa. Yeah, They're a little bit spicy, huh? Dashes. Yeah, I'm like... Sinnoh is oh. definitely a mapper that likes to test the boundaries of uh, what can fit into the ranked section in recent months, in the, maybe the last 12 months, I suppose. And I don't think this map is any real exception. We do get a very calm section here in between the kind of the first base drop section, and then there's going to be a very intense but also very brief kind of final section which could see some fail potential and also could also uh, if there's no fails necessarily could decide the swing of a match here's your final drop And almost as soon as it begins, it is done. Oh, Angel shoot, Voices, man. Ghost, your tiebreaker for the uh, 2019 Oscatch World Cup quarterfinals. And there we have it. That rounds out our quarterfinal pool. Hopefully you have enjoyed, or at least your eyes have maybe lit up at some potential picks and uh, bans for you and your opponents going into next week's matches. Don't forget that no teams from this week's round of 16 matches have yet been eliminated. All the losing teams will face one another in the loser's bracket next week, whereas all the winning teams, the victorious teams in this week's round of 16 will have a chance to stay on top and uh, give themselves that clearest run to the grand final. I think that's going to pretty much do it from us, unless you have any kind of final words on the map pool or kind of the, I just want to, Give any thoughts on uh, on this week's um, round of 16 Chicken Bible? We get to go through the bracket here in just a second, so that's very helpful. Thank you very much. What are you most looking forward to next week? Looking at the uh, looking at the winners bracket here. Obviously, USA versus France is going to be uh, lighting your eyes up, working out um, how you're going to strategize against them, and a potential matchup against Korea or Taiwan in the following weeks. You guys had a great run through the tournament last year, uh, beating out China in that quarterfinal match to go through the uh, through the winners bracket. Meanwhile, on the losers bracket, the teams that have been defeated but are not out: Sweden versus Brazil, two unseeded teams uh, that will be battling to remain in the tournament. My boys, the Brits, are uh, got a little bit of an uphill struggle to survive against Hong Kong, an excellent team uh, who did very strongly against China in this week's matches, taking them to 6-3. An old rivalry we've seen in multiple World Cups before, the Netherlands versus Germany in the loser's bracket. And everything rounded out by Poland and Mexico, two very strong hidden hard rock teams on the bottom side of that bracket. That Poland-Mexican match, match is going to be probably one of my favorite loser matches. I think you've seen what damage really that uh, Mexico could inflict against you, so... Oh, yes. Hopefully looking for, <laughs> uh, for them yeah. to... So, yeah, that's going to round up everything. Uh, banners will be in the store soon. I hope if you wish to support your favorite teams and also, obviously, just support World Cups in general, we greatly appreciate it. Uh, on the topic of supporting, thank you ever so much to everyone who subscribed and donated whether via kind of gifted subs or Twitch Prime. Your donations keep the OS tournament scene running and the World Cup scene in particular. So mwah, much love to you. Um, but yeah, I think that will cover us for this weekend. Do stay tuned to the OS Live Twitch channel and obviously to our Twitter as well. So you can get notifications of when we go live and you won't miss out on any of the action or the showcases, any kind of hype packages we put out. 
is all there. So, yeah, see you next week in the quarterfinals for more furious fruit catching action. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Have a wonderful evening, night, or maybe morning if you're just about waking up. And we'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much to you and to Chicken Bible, to all of our fellow commentators. We'll see you next weekend.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 2019 Us Catch World Cup. Dolan here, joined by Incandescence. Hello, everyone. Well, we're down to the loser's bracket to start this weekend off here in the quarterfinals. It's going to be the United Kingdom taking on Hong Kong in our first loser bracket match of the weekend. Somebody's going home. We finally get these rosters on screen. So Hong Kong, the low seed from the group of death. Touch me, Latif Osama, Sugetsu, Kyoka, Sakanez, AJ Styles, love that name, and Time Series. For the UK, it's Olib, Embom, With Lotus, Matt H, fellow caster JB Hyperion, and Fab Ninja for the Brits this year, making it through to the round of 16. But facing elimination here against a very good Hong Kong team. And also, we have banners now, by the way. We can plug those now. Ah, uh, yes, but no one will be able to plug stuff any more than Janitor. <laughs> no, yeah, he, he did an excellent job during the Taiko World Cup of, of plugging those, <laughs> those banners. It's it's phenomenal how how amazing and just quick witted he was, but I uh, I guess at some point I'll try to pull a janitor and advertise them. We'll see. You never know. You never know when we're just gonna throw in a banner plug. Be ready, chat. But the UK, I think I think they're aware that they're kind of the underdogs here. They're gonna be facing really an uphill battle, probably throughout the duration of this match, just considering that how good this Hong Kong team is. Um, they took three points off of China, so yeah. Yeah, I was That's... about to say, considering Hong Kong's performance last week and against China, I'm sure that the UK knows how tough of a battle this is going to be, but it also just depends, because this is a completely different map pool after all, so it, the the the, the playing field is changed, but there is still that in the back of the mind. Ah, oh, crap. JBH is gaming right now. <laughs> Look at that. The relax easy. Have you ever seen that epic mod combo? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Singularity, thank you for subscribing. And then you got M Bomb down here on the easy flashlight. And you just got Hong Kong, you know, flexing casually. Latifa Sama. Oh, I know what you did. I, I already started caster cursing. It's just the warm up. Story. Yeah, I was about to say, come on, you're ruining everything already, Dolan. Already. <laughs> the match was over before it began. Now, this is a really rough match for the UK. Um, they've they've actually done pretty well considering the opponents they've had to face, but. Uh, unfortunately for them, the bracket just kind of worked out this way where they, they have to play Hong Kong. So, it really is just unfortunate. But they still do have good players. I mean, they have Matt H this year, an insane double-time player. They've actually got most of their core. Um, I believe the only player that they're missing is actually Sorcerer from their usual um, player base. Also, Withered Lotus is now playing Dodge at the Beat. Ah, uh, yes. Well, he's not doing a very good job. Okay, I think he gave up. <laughs> I, th I think he gave up on Dodge the Beat. That's not something you don't see every day, folks. Yeah, but definitely I'm going to be keeping my eyes on Latifa Sama for this match. That man has wrecked an entire country's World Cup dream before. Uh, I've seen him do it in World Cups past, so 
The man's definitely capable of some nutty stuff, and they've got players like Time Series and Touch Me, and just Hong Kong are just a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous team. Just across the board. I'm still just mesmerized by JBH's relaxed, easy gameplay here. Yeah, he's not doing too bad, but I don't know how anyone can read that AR. Oof. Thing is, that's actually kind of readable, but it's just insane that he's playing that with relax. So he's using his mouse for all of that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm gonna guess this is Hong Kong's warm up. But Latifah Simon coming up with some combo here at the end of it. And there it goes. Dude, what is the curse? That's the sec that is literally the second time within one map. <laughs> it's the second time at first one player. Hong Kong actually like building some combo here on some of these. I mean, they're not playing with any goofy mods like the UK are, but it's actually kind of crazy. <laughs> they're trying to like assert their dominance here pre-match. I think M-Bomb's dead. Yeah, Flashlight uh, killed him, I think. <laughs> yeah, look, it looks like he's dead. Uh... So, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why he died. He typed, he typed his, uh, does anyone here love anime? That's, that's clearly why he died. I have nothing to say about that. <laughs> I mean, it's right there in the chat. Can we censor that, please? Oh, wait, what is this? What is this? Is this like the UK anthem? Is this the national anthem? Oh my goodness. Someone actually did it. I was waiting for one country to map their, their like national anthem. This is what all the World Cups need to be. Every country needs to map their national anthem and just Play that as warm-ups. <laughs> I know I saw the Brazil team do theirs in 2017, Taiko, I think it was. And I don't remember if it was their actual anthem or if it was a funky remix. Oh my goodness. The UK trying to get fired up here. Oh my goodness. This is going to be beautiful. Oh my god, this background. Oh my, <laughs> oh my goodness. JBH and MBOM going with the ridiculous three mod plays. Touch me is thrown on relax. You don't even have to move. Where is Matt H's catcher? What? He's just moved it off to the side. He's he's playing dodge the beat. <laughs> this is beautiful. It, they've mapped the entirety of the national anthem, so you can just listen to it and not actually have to play it. Problem is. It's crashing the client. There's too many, too many fruits going on here. Oh god, we can't save the, qu the queen. Oh, 
Yes. Should the UK lose this match and be eliminated from the tournament, we will forever remember moments like this. Oh my goodness. Holy. Look at, look at it. It's going to like so. Look at Matt's screen. Matt's screen is so crazy. It was going to like slow motion. Lativa Sama actually finding a miss. He's consistently just wiggling this out. It seems he's trying to add a challenge to this map. He's adding some spice to it, yeah. That's what, that's yeah. what I'm getting. Look at those quick left rights. Ooh. Ooh. How... Watch there be like... I I'm waiting for the one note that's gonna be like not centered. Is it gonna be a hyper dash is the question. <laughs> Could be, could be. Oh my goodness, the mod advantage. <laughs> Look at JBH and M-Bomb scores. I think Matt H just, Matt H just died already. But I don't think it even matters. <laughs> I literally think M Bomb and JBH are gonna build up enough score advantage due to the mods. It touched me as no score because he's playing with Relax. Imagine putting on Relax to only find out that the map doesn't deviate from the center of the screen, except for right there. <laughs> you Look called at that. it. I knew it. I knew it. They were gonna change it up at the end. You thought they were AFK? Nah. Hong Kong just got outplayed, my guy. Back to the regularly regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> yeah, back to our regularly scheduled program. But here we go. Rolls coming out. And not a good roll for the Brits. Hey, that's a solid 13. That's a 38 from Touch Me. So Hong Kong will win the roll. So now Hong Kong will choose first or second. So last time I I cast it over a Hong Kong match, I tried to I tried to like what's it called? Predict. I tried to predict where they're gonna put their ban, and that wasn't the China's uh, strengths. So I want to say they're gonna ban double time because that's what UK has a strong double time uh, team. But I don't know if they're gonna do that because <laughs> last week. They played into all of the the other team's strengths, so I don't know if that's gonna happen this week. Yeah, this is actually kind of really interesting because it's kind of really hard to tell what the UK are gonna be super good on here in this pool. I think Hong Kong's just gonna really ban something that they don't like, which I mean they could play everything, and then the UK. Honestly, I, I think the UK are just going to try to play the maps that they know they're good at here. And so Hong Kong electing to pick first here. So the UK will have the first ban. Speaking of things that start with ban, there you, you should go. buy a banner in the Oz Catch store and pimp out your profile for $2.50 as the UK will ban 
Uh, Amatsuki from the Hard Rock Pool. The Crowley map. Yeah, I think Hard Rock's a pretty safe ban from, from the UK here. I could definitely see Hong Kong banning literally like anything other than Hard Rock, honestly. I, I think Hidden is going to be a more probable choice here. But they also could ban Double Time just because Matt H is such a big threat on the UK. Yeah, I was about to say I'm really gonna I'm really thinking that they're gonna ban Double Time, but I'm just very unsure. The the problem with the UK, especially on Double Time, is that you have Matt H, right? But like, you can't exactly just carry all the time just by yourself as one player. So it's really going to depend on the other players for the UK. But I could see the Hong Kong betting like a specific double time map just because they're scared of Mad H. Yeah, perhaps they'll ban the, the double time pick that they performed the worst on when they practiced the pool, so... Hong Kong taking quite a while with this ban. Could be a tough choice. I'm trying to write some new rules in, but looks like the FD Floor map is going to get the ban from the Hidden Pool. So... Lasilfied getting the ban. <laughs> Matt saying, good choice, thank you. That says a lot right there. And Hong Kong can go straight into days. Quite the popular song on this game. You can see M Bomb's quite excited. Shout out to Fab for not showing up, so I have to play the HR picks. Oh, he does it twice. Oh no, Matt hates me. Yeah. Is JB appearing gonna play Hard Rock? Oh what are you talking goodness. about? You played the UK <laughs> warm-up. You should be oh, fully yeah, warmed up, right. as Bob says. Nothing warms me up quite like a UK warm-up. Oh, man. Well, here we go on to Days, the Hard Rock pick. This is from Hong Kong. And the UK obviously going to be a little hurt here without Fab Ninja. That may really hurt their chances. At least on these hard rock picks. That's probably why the UK decided to ban hard rock. Withered Lotus with an early miss as well as M Bomb here to start for the UK. Matt the only FC. And Hong Kong starting off with the triple SS's. So I guess Kyoko's gonna also throw on hidden with hard rock. Touch me and M-Bomb are gonna find misses on right now. Yeah, M-Bomb will find a second one as well. Uh, interesting miss from Touch Me. He's not the player I expected to miss on the Hong Kong side. With the Lotus though, he's also gonna miss. Yet again, Matt H still holding Latifa and Kyoka though miss. And that means no 200 combo on the side of Hong Kong. 
So Matt, actually, oh, he drops it though. And now touch me up to 200, so Hong Kong's gonna really start to bank off of it. And m bomb oh, failed. Oh, m failing, yeah. Yeah, oh, this is not good. You can definitely see where the absence of Fat Ninja is really hurting this team. This map, though, proving to be a bit of a challenge for everyone playing right now. Definitely seeing a huge challenge for the UK team right now. Yeah, Hong Kong even struggling a bit with it, but touch me and Kyoka now over 200. Latifa recovering. The UK just can't seem to hold any combo, and it's really unfortunate. I don't know that M bombs recovered yet. I, I don't think it actually matters. <laughs> Unfortunately, he does not recover. And that is a massive win for Hong Kong to start this one. That was a really good pick on the Hong Kong side. Yeah, it just it just really sucks because you know they didn't have Fab Ninja there, and I mean even if they didn't did have Fab Ninja, I don't think it would have been enough there. Uh, but fortunately for the UK, there's only one more Hard Rock pick, and that's Cyber Thunder Cider, and they basically know that Hong Kong are literally guaranteed to pick it on their next pick. Because uh, even if Hong Kong take this break point and then get that Hard Rock pick, that's going to give the UK their second ban, and they want to get all those Hard Rocks in. But the UK going to go for some Unconquered, no mod. So we do see JB Hep here and coming in for Withered Lotus. And that's going to be our only substitution here. So Latifa, Kyoka, and Touch Me for Hong Kong, and JBH, Mbom, and Matt for the British. UK looking to uh, shatter some pickums here and take a point on this no mod pick. Yeah, the pressure's definitely on to not let Hong Kong get the break point so early in the match. Yeah, the UK want to try to hold out as long as they can here. Tournament life on the line. And into Unconquered we go. It's like Hong Kong with the slight advantage on the spinner. M Bomb's gonna find a miss coming into the next section as well as JBH. That's gonna give a big advantage to Hong Kong. And this is a relatively short map, so as long as Hong Kong can hang on for at least a little bit longer, it should be able to put this one away. Matt H found a miss a few seconds ago. JBH finding another one. Let's see Vasama finding one of his own. Yeah, but Kyoka and Touch Me still holding full combos here. And M Bomb just now getting to 200 to negate one of them. Latifa Sama misses again though, and Kyoka misses again, and now the UK have a combo advantage. Something could be on here. JBH the only one yet to recover, but he's getting there. And the UK actually are narrowing it. JBH is gonna find yet another miss though. It's gonna really slow things up. But Matt H and M Bomb hanging on here. And the UK still actually have a combo match. JBH with a big drop, though. And as Latifa and Kyoka now are up to 200, now the advantage is back with Hong Kong. The UK are gonna need to see some misses from Hong Kong here at the end. But it doesn't look like they're gonna provide any. Yeah, there's not enough time as JBH finds another miss for the United Ooh, Kingdom to M-bomb at the end. the score advantage there. And unfortunate, actually, JBH just finding, I think, a couple too, just a few too many misses here. And, and Hong Kong going to take the break point. I think the UK were actually kind of in that match a little bit, though. There certainly was an opportunity for the UK there. An interesting pick here from Hong Kong. They're not going to Cyber Thunderside. They're actually going straight into Heavenly Blue in double time.
This is a strategy that we've seen Hong Kong do before, and that's play right into uh, something that could be considered an advantage on the opposing side. And it worked out for them once with China. It didn't work out a few other times with China. So whether or not it's going to work against the United Kingdom in double time is is yet to be seen, and we're about to find out. Yeah, well, again, when you leave double time unbanned against the UK, you know, you kind of have to test and see how good is Matt playing today? <laughs> is, is he on today? You know, because if Hong Kong are able to get a point on double time, that's going to inflict a huge mental blow to the UK. So this is actually a far more important point than you think. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, the only the only silver lining I could see to uh, the UK losing this point is that they would get their second ban, but uh, that would really put a dent in the the charisma on the team for sure. Yeah, I definitely think that that's that would inflict a pretty big mental blow to the UK. The only consolation for the UK would be that they do get that ban and they could ban that hard rock immediately if they really want to. So folks, Matt H, the double time specialist for the UK, will go to work to try to keep his country in an M-bomb, the first miss. Trading miss is coming from Withered and Kyoka, but Matt H also missing. Latifah Sama, the only FC remaining. Hong Kong with the lead. No touch me, did not find a miss. So it's two FCs to one as M-bomb drops yet again. M-Bomb really struggling here. He's failing. Right as both UK players make it to 200 combo, M-Bomb still dropping consistently. Kyoko will finally trade it though. Whether to M-Bomb finding a double miss there on the UK side. Yeah, that's, that's really rough for the UK, and unfortunately m -Bomb just not able to play. Fab Ninja not here is really hurting this British team, but m -Bomb finally getting some combo and some consistency here towards the end. But, oh, it's not going to matter. He will drop again, unfortunate. Matt, though, really coming through with a nice play here. There is still a good amount of the map left to go, but Matt H and M Bomb finding more misses. The UK is really struggling with this pick. They have a huge uh, obstacle to overcome if they want even chance of taking this pick. They really have to depend on Hong Kong uh, yeah, look messing at up. Sama and touch me. They both are holding on to basically almost near SS's at this point. Only a few drop of misses a piece. And this is why Hong Kong is so scary. And Latifah Sama will give up. That full combo, trading with, with the Lotus there. But you still have Touch Me, you still have Kyoka. The UK just are not finding any misses. There's, there really isn't a chance for the UK to get back into this, unfortunately. Because M-Bomb and Withered are struggling so much. And even Matt with a miss there. Yeah, with the score gap reaching about 500,000 points, it's going to be near impossible for the United Kingdom to uh, to get back in this. Yeah, they, they're going to need a fail, honestly, from Hong Kong. And touch me still on the FC. Yoka has done a really good job of recovering from earlier. Now at a thousand combo. Withered and M-Bomb finding more misses at the end of the map here. Yeah, that's 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 a wrap, Chief. That's gonna do it. Hong Kong pulling together three million plus score. Holy, it's a 700k point win for Hong Kong. Dominance asserted, ladies and gentlemen.
And so now the UK will get their second ban, the comeback ban. So now do they ban a hard rock or do they ban double time? Like, oh yeah, also, they're also missing their Captain Olive. That's also someone they're missing. So the UK, unfortunately, are just really crippled here. They're down to four people. Yeah, so what we see is really what we're getting. The only person we have on the side for the UK to sub is JBH, who seems to be coming out for no mod. We're gonna see if we're about to see him for this no mod pick. Yeah. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. Also, their second ban was used on Endless Ripples DT. JPH will come in for Matt H. Hong Kong sticking to their core three players on the side there. So yeah, there it is. The DT map getting the ban from the UK. Okay, gonna try to play some more Nomad here against them. So JBH back in the lobby for this Nomad pick. Withered Lotus, M Bomb, and JBH gonna go at it. Same three players for Hong Kong. And Touch Me apparently is going to start ahead of everyone else. He says, no, I'm going. I'm not waiting for you, people. You guys aren't cool. Waiting isn't fun. He's going to have to wait for the scores to catch up here. But M-Bomb with an early miss. And Kyoka actually going to trade it. M-Bomb finding a second miss as well. So a slight advantage for Hong Kong. Oh, but JBH finding his Wither also finding a miss on the UK side. No FCs left on the UK side already. Yeah, versus two FCs on the Hong Kong side. Kyoka the only miss. M Bomb has reached the 200 gap. And Wither Lotus is almost there. JBH is all the way down at 70, 80. Yeah, JBH has a lot of work to do to rebuild that combo and get back in it, but the UK down here really early, not completely out of it yet, but they've got to recover, get some combo, and wait for that Hong Kong miss and capitalize off it. That's all they can do. And now they're in position. Hong Kong showing an incredible amount of consistency though. Uh, as just as I say that, he gets he's gonna find a miss in his own. And yeah, M Bomb and Kyoka and JBH all gonna be finding misses. That's two for the UK. Kyoka again though. Touch me, Touch me finding a miss. JBH, let's see. So withered. Everyone reset. finding misses. Yeah, combos have been reset halfway through. M Bomb actually, I think, has the high combo of 98. But it's well over 100,000. In favor of Hong Kong at this point. At this point in time, Latifah Sama with another miss. M Bomb also finding a miss again. Yeah. Latifah finding another miss. Kyoka and Touch Me though rebuilding those combos with her Lotus, trying to stop them with JBH. It's imperative that these combos get up to 200 as fast as they can. Everyone now at the 200 gap except for M Bomb and Latifa. Hong Kong still does have a pretty significant score advantage though as we head into the last one fourth of the map. Yeah, last quarter of the map. The UK really just kind of hoping for a complete meltdown here on the Hong Kong side because they're all in position. They have the 200 combos. They're waiting to capitalize on misses, but a double miss from the UK from Wither Lotus and JBI Perry and really going to put a damper on things. Hong Kong 
looking really comfortable on this as Wither Lotus will trade misses with Kyoka. And Bomb with another one as well. Latifa and Touch Me have built their combos back up. Oh! Multiple players missing, but it's not going to do enough to matter. And that's Hong Kong taking a 4 nothing lead. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I um, think we're going to be getting a switch in casters here in mid-match. Unfortunately, our beloved incandescence has to depart. I have to go work at Walmart. I'm sorry. Sad After face. that amazing point. However, we will be subbed by the also American Chicken Bible. So don't worry, kids and people. There's an awesome kid. I'm we calling everyone there. kids, and everyone's older than me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, Chicken Bible's gonna be the replacement caster here, coming in for Incandescence. Well, Incandescence, hope you have the best of times at, at work. I will not, but I thank everyone in the chat for saying thank you. It was fun casting with you for a little bit, Dolan. Thank you for subbing it for me, Chicken Bible. I will see you all later. Have a great day. Later. Well, all right, Andrew, so the UK down 4-0 here. Hong Kong going back to double time with best of my love, the last DT left. So, I mean... It's looking pretty dire for the UK. It's looking pretty mugga as for the UK, considering that they don't have Fab yeah. Ninja, they don't have Olive. Two of their... Two big key players on their roster. Shout out to Fab Ninja for oversleeping. It happens to the best of us. True. I thought but, I would oversleep. But even still, Hong Kong have been playing pretty well. Yeah, Hong, Hong Kong have been doing really well on, especially that DT map earlier. Yeah, I mean, they've been showing misses, but also an incredible consistency. Yeah, M-Bomb in particular struggled heavily on that last DT pick, so I really wonder how he's going to do here. This one isn't as punishing as the last one, so maybe he won't be as not practiced on this one, I could say. So maybe he'll be able to put up a little bit of a better performance on this. Well, he's going to throw on Hidden, actually. He'll be the only one to do so, everybody else in the lobby. Sticking with the regular double time. You know, no one. I have an interesting thought. What if we kissed under those trees right there? That'd be beautiful, what? wouldn't it? What? 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 Why would you kiss <laughs> this up? Why you not? Know, I see Crowley in the chat. A triple miss from the UK to start, alright. Um, oh no, that's not looking good. And still, all FCs for Hong Kong here opening up this start of this map. Matt H with a second miss. And so Hong Kong once again, starting off with a commanding lead. But Mbom not struggling as much as he was on the previous DT pick. So the U uh, Hong Kong know that they're gonna be a little bit more careful here. Yeah, even with those 3 only misses from the side of the UK, they're still really pretty decent in keeping combos, at least for now. Yeah, they were all at the start really early, so the triple miss actually wasn't punished that badly. M-Bomb is going to find another miss here, though. Along with Matt H. Withered you know, still hanging say, on. Withered has been doing pretty well. I think not many people expected him to be kind of like the star player of the UK today. And yeah, Withered has been actually been that. performing quite well here on quarterfinals map pool. Yeah, usually when you see Q UK, you just think of, oh, Matt H, Fab Ninja, right? But Withered has been showing up on every single map, I think. So, at least the ones that he's been playing. Yeah, he's actually coming through here with a higher score than Matt right now. He is going to find a miss. Right, he's his teammate. 
Yeah, Hong Kong is, act is just playing out of their minds. I mean... Latifah Sama and Touch Me, along with Sugetsu Kyoka. I mean, the same three players have played the entire match so far. Hong Kong is a finals week team. Yeah, definitely. They took Korea to, I think, 6-3 was? It was China. Exactly. They, they took China oh, yeah. to 6-3 last week. Yeah. Yeah, this is a Hong Kong team that took three points off of China. The UK will continue to struggle, but Kyoga gonna find the first miss for Hong Kong. At the very... Well, not the very end, more like on the last third, actually. There's still quite a bit of map left. Yeah, that song is long. You think it's over, but then it keeps going and going and going. <laughs> but it just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. I mean, it is well over 400,000 points in favor of Hong Kong right now. About 300,000. But it's going to be about 400,000 in a minute. Yeah, about 350. What's your predictions for the final gap? I'm gonna guess 427k. I'll go... 416. Let's see if we can get the closest prediction here. For 16k. Playing games on the side. You know, I think both of us are going to be pretty close, actually. It's going to be pretty close. It's 439. Ah. Uh, 439, so you got it closer. We have a Hong Kong coming in with... The point here, 5 nil. the SS from Touch Me, the FC from Latifa. I mean, the the consistency from this Hong Kong roster is just crazy. You know, and then you think the fact that a and Flybot isn't playing this year, just how much better could these guys be? Yeah, these guys as well. would be ridiculous if they had AFB this year. Because I believe right now their weak point is hidden, right? And a and Flybot is a hidden one trick, pretty much. So that would pretty much fill up their gap of the weak spot. Yeah, but the UK are going to go for World Vanquisher here. This is potentially their last pick if they don't win. Backs against the wall. The UK cannot let up a single po point through or they will be out of the World Cup. An unfortunate circumstance is that, yeah, again, we're just not getting to see the full potential that the UK can play to here. Hey, at least they had a team this year. That is yep. one thing they can be proud of. Yeah, they did have a team this year, and they did make it out of group stage. And just kind of unfortunate for the bracket and how it came out. Maybe if they were able to get one of the the unseeds in Brazil or Sweden, things could have been a little different for them. But they had the draw of facing Hong Kong in the loser's bracket first round. And I think there are some positive notes even for the UK to take out of this, even if this is a 6-0 sweep. Like you said, Wither Lotus stepped up pretty big, even today in this match, and has played really a little better than most people probably would have expected him to. Definitely overperforming in my book, at least. I didn't know actually he was capable of doing this well on these maps in this kind of circumstances. So that's a big plus for them. Yeah, definitely. Will we see any substitutions? I don't think we will. Yeah, if I remember correctly, JB Hyperion does not like playing this map from my personal talks with him. So does I believe not this will like be the lineup. <laughs> I believe this will be the lineup for the UK here. Yeah. And here we go. MP start in the chat. Well, guys. For the UK, it's all on the line. This is it. Hong Kong looking to advance further in this tournament. Hong Kong looking for the guaranteed top 12. The UK needs something, anything, or it is over. And once again, it's gonna be the same three for both teams.
on the UK's no mod pick world vanisher with the Lotus with the first miss right before we get to the 200 combo mark yeah so it won't be as punishing as some oh, of these but M bombs miss is gonna really hurt yeah that one's gonna hurt a bit more than where the Lotus is one UK still not out of it just yet we do have time but not if Hong Kong don't miss. M-Bomb struggling yet again. With it has gotten back up to 200 combo. And has found his rhythm. And it's a slight lead here for Hong Kong opening up here. After one third of the way through, M-Bomb's got to recover. But Hong Kong are relentless here with the triple SS at the moment. Latifa Sama, Touch Me, and Kyoka all holding the SS's. Yeah, here's where the map starts to really ramp up in a little bit of difficulty. So it's going to be even harder for the UK to pull a combat, come back here. Oh, right, as M Bomb did get to 200. With the Lotus and Touch Me are going to trade misses. So is Matt H as well. But oh, Matt H also quarters. missed. And Latifa Sama still with the SS, Kyoka still with the FC. And Embalm and Withered Lotus gonna find misses. And Mad H trying to do everything he can for his country, for his team. But unfortunately, it looks like this is how the UK bid for the World Cup will end this year. Hong Kong putting in absolutely insane performances. Latifa Sama with the SS, Kyoka with the FC, and that's going to do it. 6 nothing Hong Kong, and the UK will finish the 2019 World Cup in the top 16. But that will be all for the UK this year. But well played by Hong Kong there, Chicken Bible. Insane yeah. consistency. That was really, really well played from Hong Kong. Even though UK, they did fall a little bit shorter than we expected them to come in. Hong Kong, they did prove themselves that, hey, we still did really well here. We deserve this win. Yeah, again, Hong Kong making it out of that group of death. Then getting paired up against China, taking China. A little bit of a trip. The 6-3 loss for Hong Kong there. They rebound with the 6-0 sweep over the UK. And they are through to the second round of the loser's bracket into the semifinals weekend. Let's get a quick breakdown of the matches this weekend. So our first of eight matches in the books, Hong Kong over UK. We'll have Netherlands, Germany coming up in about 40 minutes. Finland, Chile, Poland, Mexico, Sweden, Brazil. And we'll wrap up today with the big one, United States and France, in about seven hours from now. And then we'll have two matches on Sunday, and that will be your quarterfinals. Feels like it's all going to go by so fast. I know, we're already in quarterfinals. Wow, surprising. And starting next week, we'll also have uh, two matches a week, I believe, from teams in the loose bracket as well. Yeah, we'll have... We have a lot of action in the semifinals week in the losers bracket specifically. As next week we'll narrow the field down to our six finalists for finals week. Well, I believe we're going to take a little bit of a break until we get to our Netherlands Germany match in about 38 minutes. So if you haven't, make yourself some CWC food, buy yourself a banner to support your favorite team. And uh, we'll see you in about 40 minutes. Sounds about good. Well, Chicken Bible, I appreciate the substitution coming in quick. But gotta help, we'll out the boys. gotta help out the boys. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys for the next match in about 40 minutes. We'll catch you later.
Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the Oscatch World Cup 2019 edition quarter final stage. I am JB Hyperion, joined by the fabulous Doland. I hope you uh, weren't too put out by my shocking performance in that previous match, Doland, but are ready for some more great games coming up today. Oh, I am always ready for some great games, man. And we've got a battle between two countries that have a lot of history between each other. Especially in the past few World Cups. We've got the Netherlands taking on Germany. Um, gonna be an interesting match. Net match. Netherlands are the former European champions of 2017. And Germany looking to avenge themselves from that unfortunate exit they had last year in the World Cup. Yeah, European champions, an unofficial title granted to them by virtue of them making their furthest kind of process through the tournament, I suppose. Although Germany definitely got the better of them in last year's World Cup, sweeping them 5-0 in the similar stage of the tournament, I think. Germany have uh, been uh, podium places twice in the past in the earlier, more formative days of Oscatch. I think they took second in 2013 and then a bronze in 2014 or maybe the other way around. So it's been a while since they've been on uh, anywhere near the top step, but uh, looking to regain some of that form from their uh, their more formative days. Hopefully going to start with this matchup against the Netherlands. Yeah, also big roster change on the Dutch side from last year and this year. We've got Wesley Sarden returning, uh, but now you have Master Forcer, Woodpump, Chatty, and Kev Kev. You're missing Bads and uh, Cello from the Nose Anycore. Two big names not on the team this year. But the Germans also have seen some pretty significant change to their roster too. Yeah, Germany are lacking Sosaki, they have no Note Kuroi, they have no Tenchi Chan. So definitely a lot of massive names missing from the uh, the German roster compared to what we've seen in previous World Cups. And some of those players have been in almost every World Cup since the kind of the tournament's inception. So oh. very strange to see them missing, but uh, it's Dutch warm-up time. Oh, oh. Back with the this classic... Verschillende, what is this, art, artisten, CWC Petje 4. This is your favorite part of uh, any World Cup. Oh, it's it's one of the most enjoyable parts. The Dutch warm-ups are always a treat. So as we kind of uh, filter through our two warm-ups, Welcome everyone in chat. It's lovely to see you again. Hopefully you uh, kept yourself busy during the break, got some food, or had a had a rest break. Yeah, enjoyed the wonderful weather. In. At least at least here it's fabulous outside. You've tuned back in to see the epitome of the Oscatch World Cup. This is our pride. The Dutch warm-ups. Apparently this is a song from a Dutch commercial. They have some good commercials over there. <laughs> I, I love the Heineken commercials. They're so funny. So looks like we've got some Netherlands fans in the chat. Some Genoshi gang supporting Germany. Always <laughs> great to see. These two countries do have a, have a have nice fan bases. Oh, definitely very well supported as far as oh, yeah. uh, Catch World Cup goes. Definitely some of the more vocal fans. Oh yeah, definitely. We've got Netherlands against Genoshi Gang here. Oh my goodness, the stack on that fruit. <laughs> some pretty wacky slide of velocity going on right now. Oh, and the helixing as well, that's really cool. Some interesting mapping here. It's Domme Jongens in the start, are you kidding me? <laughs> I love this song. They actually put that song in their warm-up. Oh, 
Oh my goodness. I personally turned up my uh, game volume <laughs> just for this. Yeah. Oh yeah. And there you have it, folks. The Dutch CWC warm-up. Always a treat, as you said. Oh, yes. Well, let's see how the Genoshi gang will respond. Although I could listen to this again. <laughs> I haven't seen that before, but I'm sure that eventually someone will. Just like, yeah, we'll play that same warm up again. <laughs> Dutchland oh, versus Deutschland. <laughs> yup. So much support for both teams in the chat. That's great to see. Keep it up, guys. Also, by the way, guys, don't forget, if you want to support your teams even more, you can now buy banners available in the Oz Catch store for $2.50. They look pretty cool in your profile. They are very beautiful, I have to admit. So you can show your support. It'll last the duration of the tournament. I might buy a commiseration banner for myself now that UK have been eliminated. A commiseration banner. <laughs> Goodness. Netherlands saying that Germany should pick last year's Dutch CWC one <laughs> We are still waiting to hear what the Dutch warm-up is. There we go, Vinci has laid it on us. We'll wait and find out what this is. Yeah, finally getting the German warm-up here. Oh, Road to the Legend. Sounds like the Germans going for something more intense. Yeah, a little interesting style shift from their warm-up against uh, Taiwan last week where they picked uh, Magyu's hurting for a very hurtful pain. Uh, maybe they've got some kind of practice strategy going on here. Wesley saying no meme. So I'm actually really kind of curious to see how these this match is going to unfold, considering that these rosters are so much different than what I'm used to for these two teams. Uh, definitely, yeah. There's a, a lot of shift from what we've seen in previous years, but when you look at both rosters, you don't think like that one chance has hugely suffered over the other yes they've lost some of their key players but the players that are stepping up and replacing them are still excellent players in their own right yeah definitely just we're now getting to see the full depth of these countries now in a way it's kind of this is kind of like a battle for the number two spot in europe and so France, you have France. definitely yeah Stamp yeah. their authority as the, one of the top European sides so far this tournament. They look yeah. mightily dangerous, as we'll 
see against the uh, United States a little later today. Yeah, you got the Netherlands who've made recent moves in the past few years in terms of rankings. And then you've got the Germans who have historically been on the podium twice. So, really is going to be an interesting match. Lots of role predictions coming out in the chat. We don't even need to remind you guys anymore. You're already hot on that one. Great to see. Everybody loves it now. Got to predict the roles. I don't even try because I'm always horribly wrong. Yeah, this is definitely a more serious warm-up, and you can tell, like, Vinci and Indrioku just getting in the zone. Wesley's actually looking really good, too. A little early cursinating on Wesley there, but... Oh, you're, yeah, you're, tuning, right. you're tuning yourself in. That's good yeah. to see. <laughs> you know, a person I'm really excited to watch in this World Cup, though, is Chatty. I've known of him for quite a while. And I believe this is his first World Cup. So it'll be interesting to see how he performs here. Broken arrow. Damn, this is crazy. I've never seen high-level catch gameplay. Well, if you hang around, you're in for a treat. Yeah, we're currently absolutely. in the uh, quarterfinal stage, so 16, well, minus one, who's already been eliminated, teams of our 32 competitors remain, and we have some amazing matches coming up later today. Yeah, you're definitely going to want to check out some of those matches. I'm really looking forward to Poland versus Mexico and USA France. I think Poland versus Mexico hinges on whether Lechu makes himself available for Poland. He's been unavailable for the last couple of scrims and matches, and Poland have looked not weak, but yeah. definitely lacking. Uh, Mexico looked very strong uh, participating in that Wesley and Inryoku getting all of that. I did just catch that. That looked pretty difficult, I must say. Inryoku's well, still though. going. Oh man, he looks dangerous right now. Haven't seen CWC in a while, is bad still a thing. Like, this is his first tournament where he's not participating for the Netherlands. I think that's correct, Oland? I'm yeah, not sure whether he's correct. just uh, elected Bad's not to in... play or whether he's busy. Yeah, Bads in any court could not play due to work. So, unfortunately they had, you know, work in real life, so. Yeah, we can't all uh, dedicate our lives to fruit catching for all eternity, unfortunately. I've only just been able to. This World Cup falls in the summer. Yeah. And for some people, they choose to work during that summer, so. But the Dutch team is absolutely crippled without it. I mean, that that, that team with Bads and Anacor is so good. Well, they can't focus too much on that, though, because they don't have them right now. They've only got to work yeah. with who they have. Yeah. But I think this is also a great. Uh, this is going to be good in terms, I think, of a building stage for the Netherlands because this is going to encourage a lot of their depth to step up, which overall is going to probably boost the player base in the Netherlands for catch. So it really is nice to see some of this talent that we just haven't gotten to see for the past few years come out onto the world stage. Yeah, Inryoku pushing that 99% right about now. Great performance from him on this warm-up. Definitely a, a serious pick from Germany, as you said. No messing around. They want to win this because they know that they have a tough challenge ahead of them. Yeah, definitely. So Inryoku coming in with an S rank. That's pretty ridiculous. I'm not going to lie. Literally one full percent higher than Wesley in terms of accuracy. So warm-ups out of the way. We're going to be getting to our rolls and bands.
Vinci picking a 53, fairly middle of the road. Not too bad, not too good either, though. Lando Ryoku, apparently. His score His so play good. was so good, we had to see it twice, yeah. We had to see it again. It's okay, we haven't missed anything. Waiting for the Wesley roll. What? Have you not seen that one before? No. Oh, painfully close. Somebody guessed 46. Tomato sauce bottling is disconnecting, I think. Uh oh. Somebody was one off of a roll guess in the chat. Congratulations. You have god tier luck. If you want to pick a profile banner to support, we'll all bandwagon with you because you could buy a lottery this ticket. One. <laughs> Vinci looking like Germany want to ban first. So yeah. they don't want anything to do with, so they're going to get rid of that, and we'll find out what that is in just a second. Yeah, actually, it's really kind of interesting how these like mod spreads are going to be for both these teams, considering how different they are now. It's probably not going to be what we traditionally thought, and La Silfida getting the ban from the Hidden Pool. Yeah, another ban for uh, La Silfida. We saw Hong Kong ban it in the previous match against the United Kingdom. We're looking like a very unpopular, uh, tricky, long hidden selection. And uh, and the same two bands from your match, JBH. With, yeah, exactly. Uh, Hong Kong the, in, in the opposite order. So uh, Wesley in the Netherlands banning How to Sakai Seifuku, the uh, the long kind of edge jump filled hard rock pick, and they're gonna pick uh, Wawaka's Reversible Doll, a map that we didn't see in the previous match from the Nomad Pool. Minato Yukina Classic. Chatty very happy with that ban. Yes. There's always a little bit of a morale boost when the opposition team bans something that either you were going to ban or you just didn't want to play at all. Yeah, absolutely. So reverse doll is what's going to be played here first from the Netherlands. An interesting choice. Uh, it, it's interesting how a lot of teams have been electing to pick second in some of these matches. Yeah, there's a lot of strategy behind waiting to maybe see what you think your opponents are more confident on before you opt to pick your own strategy. There's always a, a risk of if you pick first and lose because you underestimated the strength of your opponent or you overestimated their weakness, then you're one down and they get to pick next and then it's 2-0 and you're thinking, well, we're really in trouble here. Yeah, it kind of will immediately put that pressure on. So looks like we're getting set. So for the Dutch, it will be Wesley, Chatty, and Woodpam. And for the Germans, Vinci007 in Ryoku and Marv Molo. Okay, all players loading into the game and syncing up. It's time for match number two, Netherlands versus Germany in this Oscatch 2019 World Cup quarterfinal stage. Yep, loser bracket match. Loser is gone. So it's all on the line here. It would be really nice if we could get a match. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would be great, man. Uh, I, would love I, was that. Like, I was like, all right, we, we hyped it up. <laughs> and it's going to be good. It's going to be good when it when happens. It <laughs> Whenever it's, it's going to work. <laughs> I don't know when it's going to happen, but when it does, it's going to be good. Here we go. There we go. Who has the consistency to win out on this one in um, Berlin? I'm confused at the scores right now because apparently Woodpamp has 500,000 points for some reason. Are they gonna are they gonna try and refresh that yeah, one? He just had a bonus 500k. <laughs> yeah, that's really illegal. Gonna, gonna get a little panic button clickaroo here. Gonna try to restore some normalcy here. Oh wow, a double panic button. Man. 
Enrioku, though, is just happy to be playing catch the beat. He's carrying this for Germany right now. Look at this. 240,000 to nothing. Look, who can stop this man? No one can even stand to Enrioku. Oh, and even he has succumbed to the... Oh, no, no, we're good. No, wait, no, he can't be stopped. There we go. Oh, here we go. He does miss, though. So as we finally catch up, it looks like Wesley and Enrioku did find misses at about the same time. Wesley with another miss. Woodpap will miss, so now the advantage is in favor of Germany. They have two combos over 200. The Dutch only have one. But Marmelo, I think that was an actual mid. It might have been Klein. Yeah, Marmelo with the drop there. Chatty, the only four combo remaining, but it is matched by uh, Vinci's. Oh, no, Vinci has that four combo as well. The, uh, we're, we're getting scores flickering around all over the place as the players are trying to sync up their clients. Yeah. So the only FC, I think, is actually with Vinci right now. A miss from Air Europe, would have been Chatty. Yeah, Marmelo has the 700 combo, the double S, so he must still be pulled that full combo. Yeah, he's got an SS hook down there, so. As clients finally returning to normal, Germany actually, with two FCs, Wesley now above 200. But Germany yeah. are kind of pulling away here. Yeah, There's Germany still time. building a big lead right now. Yeah, There's still time on the clock, but the Dutch really can't afford to make any more big mistakes here. All those combos have built back up. They need to see a miss from Germany if they want, or several misses from Germany if they want to way back oh, into that's not Wesley. What it is. Wesley got caught out pretty big there. And again, a second time. Yeah, but nobody else missing. Actually, I'm really surprised there. But Woodpamp will drop in Germany. Oh, wow. Woodpamp missing that entire stream section. Yeah, he got pretty... Just a little bit out of tempo there. He went a little early, and he just missed everything. That's exactly what happens if you go just a bit early on those. That's exactly how, what happens in this map, because it's quite long, and a lot of the patterns repeat, but in slightly different ways. You get into a comfortable position, and you try and play something the way that you oh, played Oh, and that's pattern, a double fail for the work. Dutch. Yeah, massive amount of drops there from both Chatty and Bud Pump. Wesley dropping at, as well. Look at this German roster. Vitsy with that one miss very early on. Marv Malo with the double S looking super imposing right now. It's a strong opening statement from Germany here. Break point. And that's going to be a one nothing Germany. Yeah, awesome start from Germany. Exactly what they needed. Marv Malo with the SS. Coming in hot. I'm not quite sure how Marv Mallow didn't get a million points there. Yeah, on, on the MP the it S. says he did get a million points. Okay. I mean, we Obviously did have... there were a lot of sync issues at the beginning of this one, so we don't need to read too much into the minute details, but I think we don't need the MP link to tell us that Germany were the victors on that one. A fairly crushing victory at the end of the day to the tune of 340,000 points. That's a big one. Just a little bit, yeah. A bit disheartening for the Netherlands. Yeah, and of Germany course, they now. have to pick against Germany. And Germany's pick now. Yeah, the Netherlands have got to play against Germany's pick here. We'll see where they go. We know Germany really is probably going to be strong in that. Really, anything hidden or hard rock related. Germany ignored everything from hidden against Taiwan until the last map. And then it didn't pan out too well for them. And... A lot of people were crying for them, like, why aren't you playing Hidden Germany? And it just never materialized. So maybe they're not feeling as confident on Hidden as they traditionally felt. They picked double time twice against Taiwan and lost by tiniest of margins in both instances. Do they think that Netherlands are maybe a little weaker and double time is a bit more safe this time? I don't know, especially with this Dutch team. I really don't have enough information to really kind of tell you that, but I would assume so. Being that you you don't have a player like Annie Core on their team anymore, uh, at least this year, he was definitely a big double time threat in the Netherlands. So I mean, it's definitely possible. The thing is, actually, I could probably see Germany going for. I could see Germany going for DT or maybe another hard rock. 
course, they have just won a fairly crushing victory on no mod, so maybe they just stick with the no mod pool. Maybe. And they will. World Vanquisher, their next pick. Another very streamy selection. Yup. A lot of stream picks featuring in this pool. Unconquered also, and Axiom Crisis in a very similar vein. Yeah, this is definitely... I love watching this map. It's it's quite a visually entertaining map. There's a lot going on here. Uh, but to play... I don't know. <laughs> Uh, we played this in a uh, practice multi-lobby last night, and I got 700 combo, the best I've ever done on the map, and then I failed the ending, which is why I wasn't, oh, no. thrown, in. I wasn't thrown in for the, the UK's pick on this today. It has a quite tricky ending, which requires good timing. Actually going to be getting no substitutions on either side. People predicting a 6-0 Germany sweep. Come on, guys. We're only one game in. Don't give up complete hope yet. Root for the Netherlands, and maybe they will come back with a vengeance. Anything is possible. But this is Germany's pick on the Nomad World Vanquisher. And Woodpamp will find the very early miss here, right before we get to 200 combo. If anyone from Germany misses now, we will see a very slight advantage heading back to the Netherlands once everyone reaches 200 combo. But no issues yet. Everyone's still holding the list. Well, that's a oh, massive trouble drop from the Netherlands. A the from and Chatty, now there's zero FCs on the Dutch side, but Woodpamp is back not, up to 200. I'm not quite sure what's happening to Marth, Mallo. Uh, um, he we seems may... to have completely kind of desynced from the, the game entirely. If Obviously, they're isn't... not restarting, so I'm assuming that he is still... It still says SS. It wasn't registering drops. It's like his catcher doesn't even exist. It's not doing like any miss animations. His accuracy is not decreasing. I have no idea what's happening to Mark. I've right never now, but... seen anything like that before. But, I mean, the match is still going, so I'm assuming he could still be in the lobby. Just maybe a client issue. Yeah, the client has just not synced up to him very well. Chatty drops a second time. Still a double S from Inryoku and uh, Vinci at this point, though. Yeah, and we have Vinci no idea. Find it and Inryoku will drop as well, but a double miss from Wesley and Woodpump as well. No combos on side of Netherlands really to take advantage of this one. Yeah, Chatty trying to get that combo up to take advantage. Which is going to really help a little bit, but they won't have that advantage for that long. Right now, it all depends on whether Marv Mallow has performed on this map at all. Because at yeah, the moment, it which... says Netherlands are winning, but Marv Mallow could be half a million points higher than what his current score suggests. So we really don't know at this point. Yeah. And Wesley will what? find yet another miss here coming into yeah. the... Those wicked jumps that will catch Woodpamp out as well. Really imp impressed by the play from Chatty here. Irioku and Vinci still trying to hold the best they can. Vinci does break at the very end, but the MP link shows that Germany take it 2 0. Despite what you may see on the screen, um. Obviously a scoring error here on the client's part. Yeah, Marv Mallow scored 986,000 points, so that's a pretty solid performance from him. Yeah, Marv Mallow, excellent job from him. So we're going to have to so, fix that scoreboard for you. Yeah, interestingly, with two fairly convincing Nomad losses, Netherlands are going to stick with Nomad, but this time they're going to move into the convert pool with uh, Akiyama Yuni's Chino Iro Wakiro. The Hollow Wings convert, which has large circles but some very tricky balancing and wiggling. And looks like we're going to see Master Forcer and Genoshi come in.
Genoshi gang in the house. Genoshi gang, rise up! Porion going to be coming back in for Germany also. Interesting to see if this Dutch team can kind of find their footing here. Looks like both teams have settled on their rosters, which is waiting for the players to ready up. And here we go. So the Netherlands looking to get back into this one. With this convert. Early drops from Genoshi and then Chatty as well. A second drop from Chatty also. Gonna give Germany an early advantage. This it is happens. one of those maps where if any one or two players can build a significant combo, they can really run away with it. Yeah, Genoshi the whole map is find the miss. And Marmelo. Yeah, the whole map so is kind of consistently tricky. Genoshi yeah. gonna find another drop, just Porion holding on to that combo. Netherlands gonna be taking the advantage back with this one. Yeah, they got three combos over 200, so now they're fully capitalizing off these misses and now actually building a significant lead here. Yeah, if they can build a decent lead, they give themselves so much more of a buffer towards the end of the map. Which will ease off the pressure. Germany are doing well to build those combos back up, but they're still not at full, uh, full score yet. Yeah, Genoshi now almost at the 200 mark. And there he goes. So now yeah, this section of the map, this section of the map, not too difficult until we get into. But Genoshi does drop there, missing on that double, just really misreading that one. Yeah, that was a really unorthodox miss there, and the Netherlands going to be able to actually fully capitalize it. Marmelo is stopped. Wesley, Wesley did with find a drop. Miss. Yeah, a little bit of client desync here, so Marmelo is going to catch up. Let's all wait for him, guys. Hold on. Oh, he did find a miss as well, though. Well, Double drop from Forza. Master Forcer and Genoshi. Genoshi and Wesley dropping Master Forcer oh, and Porion. a triple drop from the Netherlands. The Netherlands. Porion holding on is going to be bringing that combo back and he knows it. He is the carry for Germany now. Netherlands have got no large combos on their side. Their advantage is only yeah. 60,000. Yeah, but the good news for the Netherlands is, is that only one player actually has a combo over 200, so they're not going to lose that much of their lead as long as they can recover the combos quickly. But Master Forcer is going to find another miss alongside Genoshi, and he'll miss yet again. That lead is shrinking and shrinking right now. Wesley and Chatty are trying to get up there to stop the bleeding. Orion and Marvmelo are there pouring on the heat. And now they are... Finally at that 200 combo. Jeremy still closing though because Genoshi over Master Forcer in terms of the combo. It's getting that gap really can close. Only be about 10 to 20,000 right now. It's any miss oh, here. Mar and Mar Mala with the drop. Master Forcer is just getting up to 200 combo. This is the perfect time for Netherlands to capitalize. Yeah, that that was literally the most unfortunate timing for Germany there. Now the Netherlands. Oh, Marmela will miss Wesley too. Master Forcer as well. And Porion, Porion has dropped. It's There's chatty. no combos left for Germany. Chatty, chatty carrying for the Netherlands. Chatty holding on. And that may be just what guarantees Netherlands the win here, but he does miss. The ending is failable. Let's Mark see Mala with a few drops. On. Porion getting low. Master Forcer with a few drops, but they just about hold it's on. Chatty dropping right the at the end. The Netherlands. 40,000 points, the difference. On the board, that's that's about two misses right there. That's really close. And Wesley coming through with 900,000. Poria with 942k.
Yeah, Porion's combo was ridiculous throughout that, but he just couldn't hold on under that pressure towards the very end. Everyone on Netherlands stepping up at crucial points to ensure that as a team, they pulled through. Great performance by them. Yeah, the Netherlands were right place, right time to catch a few of those German misses and rip the Genoshi gang, man. But <laughs> Wesley saying, I have seen the ending. Is it a tiebreaker hype? <laughs> tiebreaker hype. Our referee Penn has been dying to see a tiebreaker. <laughs> People now changing their predictions to 6-1, I see. Oh, it's a little bit late for that, boys and girls. A little bit, yeah, the 6-0 predictions have been shattered. No sweeps here. So this is great news for Netherlands. Yeah, honestly, this is that was actually a fairly convincing win there from the Netherlands. They looked really dominant throughout that, that map, even though they stumbled at times. Yeah. A loss really? there on three Nomad picks would have really made them feel less confident to pick any of the remaining Nomads. I assume that whilst they don't feel like Germany are weak at Nomad, they really don't feel confident playing in any mod brackets right now. So having Nomad still be a viable option for them is a huge benefit later on in this match. Oh, yeah, I agree with people discussing in chat. These are very difficult for quarterfinals compared to what we've seen in previous years. Mm -hmm. Like, these are these are top level players that have excellent, amazing tournament experience. Yeah, and the and fact that they are struggling to kind of keep up on some of them just does show how difficult these picks are. Heavenly Blue is going to be the pick from Germany here on DT. But as I said previously, like DT was not a favorable. Uh, selection for Germany in their match against Taiwan. Picking it twice and losing twice, and then Taiwan even picking it against them in the third and final uh, selection in the round of 16. Hopefully they're feeling a little bit more confident, either in their own performance or in Netherlands. Maybe lesser ability to perform well on double time. Yeah. But uh, th the big thing for the Netherlands about taking that point is now, even if Germany do take this point here, the Netherlands will get their second ban and then a pick right after. So even if they drop this point, they're still going to have a significant shot of staying in the match. Wesley declaring that he is a DT god. Well, he can prove it then. We Put do your see money hidden. where your mouth is. Yeah. We do see him coming up from Porion, Inryoku, and Chatty. All right, hit DT God. Let's see it. Oh, nice early miss there, DT God. Great start. Yeah, this is a very interesting pick for quarterfinals. Like, in terms of flow and like spacing it's not hugely difficult but at AR 8.8 with double time that goes to about 10.2 I think and because of your catcher speed is increased with double time it's very easy to just over dash slider ends and stamina is such a drain on a long pick like this with an approach rate that high yeah chatty finding some early misses as well as Wesley it's gonna give the advantage to Germany Chatty and Wesley really struggling here. Woodpap actually is going to follow up with a miss right after here. You were about to say how well he was doing. But I was literally about to right say time. how well he was doing the second I thought it. But Germany holding on to triple FCs at the moment. Two of them SSs. I just really got you got a feel for the Dutch knowing that they have a few players not here and knowing that the roster's not quite at full power. But Germany playing super well. Yeah, they don't look like they have any difficulties right here. Just the two droplet misses, one on Inriku and one on Namir and Porion still holding that double S. Coming to about one third distance right now. And uh, they don't know how far ahead they are as Inriku does see the first drop, but they're going to be fairly, fairly confident that Netherlands could not keep up with this, and they would be right. Chatty doing well to be holding a 350 combo right now, but Budpamp and Wesley in particular really starting to struggle. 
Yeah, definitely. That's really interesting for Chad, considering that he started off struggling so bad as he does find a miss here. But he was able to rally together and get some combo, but unfortunately, the damage has already been done for the Netherlands. Yeah, Germany have a monumental lead right now. Inryoku building that combo back up as Porion and Namorian both hit 1,000. Netherlands are not playing badly by any means, but they're just really struggling to hold on to any kind of significant combo. Yeah, and Namorian and Porion absolutely playing just out of their minds right now with the FCs. Porion's still on the SS. That is insane. And we should remind you, yeah, the Netherlands in no way are a bad team. In 2017, they were the number one European country. Last year still finished very impressive in the World Cup, top 12. But Germany are also quite a good team with a lot of experience. And despite the fact that they have a lot of players in their team that we're not used to seeing in the World Cup, Germany has that much depth in their CTB like player base. Namiren finally seeing that drop, unfortunately, but Porion still holding strong, still on the double S coming into the final kind of 100 combo right now. Nothing really on the side of Netherlands that can answer anything Germany have put out here. Man, Absolute dude. dominance from Germany. Do not sleep on this German team. This is a terrifying team to have in the loser's bracket. This is the Germany DT roster that we wanted to see last week that unfortunately was just a little bit lacking against Taiwan. They look to be back at their best with that one. Porion, SS, hidden double time quarterfinals, too easy for him. Yeah, check him out. He's, he's not bad at the game. And so a 3-1 German lead. Now the Dutch will get a second ban and then they will have their pick. Considering what they've just seen, I can't imagine that this ban will not be a double time selection. Wesley what? saying that actually went better than expected. <laughs> Woodpamp setting a new personal best on that map, so that's pretty impressive for him. Personal goals, it's not always about winning. We are going to wait and see what Netherlands' uh, second ban will be, though. Yeah, because Netherlands have some thinking to do because they have not only a second ban, but their pick afterwards as well. So this is their opportunity to take two picks off the board. Obviously, one as a, a ban and one as something that they feel much more confident with to try and secure a second point. I feel like this actually might be kind of the most important point of the match here for the Netherlands, considering that if they are not able to gain any momentum off of this, Germany are just probably going to steamroll. As we expected, that will be yeah. a second uh, dub ban, DT2 from the Netherlands banning uh, Endless Ripples. A yeah. wise decision. And we'd like to thank Lazy Cockroach for the sub with Twitch Prime. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Enjoy your new Oslive uh, badge and all your cool emotes. Use them with pride. Thank you. And then we also have to think about the pick for the Netherlands too. Well, their victory was on Nomad and they are going to stick with Nomad. This time going for Unconquered. Yeah, so banning Nomad, Endless one. Ripples and going for Unconquered. I think this is a wise decision from the Netherlands. It's one of the safer uh, Nomad picks. It's yeah. quite similar to um, World of Anquisher that we saw earlier, which they performed respectably on. Yeah, and I think that this is going to be... This is just more important for the Netherlands to score a point here. And just given the situation of where they have a pick and a ban, and they really need a point to have something to show for that. I mean, otherwise the morale is just not going to be there, so I feel like this is actually a really good pick. An easier no mod, they just need something that they can win on. Yeah, Puffbuck is right in chat also, that uh, if you're looking to root for the Netherlands, you need to cheer them on right now. This is a loser's bracket encounter, so the uh, victor stays alive, the loser has to wait until next year, unfortunately, if they want to compete on the World Cup stage again. So do share your love, your support, your undying uh, gratitude to these players. Get some hype going in the chat. Yeah, please cheer on your country. So it's Chatty, Wesley, and Woodpamp against Vinci and Ryoku and Marv Malo. I think the Netherlands know this is a pretty important point for them. And I think the Every Germans know that it's a pretty important point for them. Point for the be important here now, yeah. 
Yeah. But especially given the fact that they've just used their comeback ban and they also have a pig. Woodpan with, wood with the first miss. early miss, yeah. Just uh, undershooting slightly on that last hyper before the break. Not fatal though. As it's just now getting 200, and your Yoku is just now going to find a miss actually, so. Nellen's going to be coming right back in on the scoreline and actually taking a little bit of a lead as long as combos recover. Everyone hitting that little anti-flowing repeat slider section nicely. This is such an intense song. This Vincy is absolutely with the miss. Vincy with the drop though. Netherlands to the lead. Halfway through. Oh, Wesley gets caught out there, but so does Inri Yoku. Chatty and Wood Pamp is gonna fall. Chatty still holding. Mar Malo and Vinci on the recovery. It's gonna be a slight advantage for Germany here coming back. Yeah, the combos are slightly larger on the side of Germany here. They are gonna eke out that advantage. And this is oh, not a particularly long map. Wood Pamp gonna miss again. And Irioka is gonna trade it. We need to see a miss from Marv or Vinci right now. If yeah, the Dutch need a miss. Victory. Chatty's gonna drop it. And unfortunately, the Netherlands just could not hold on. Is that... That can't be... That can't be real. Wait a minute. We're waiting for Vinci to resync. I think. Marv Mallow dropped behind a little bit as well. Yeah, no, it was just client, client issues. That's going to be very close all the same. Just 18,000 18, points. 18,000 points! But Germany take it. Yeah, someone get the uh, get the wrench out and hit the hit the client a little bit. Get it get it working. Give it a slap around. This is not cool. But yeah, that will be another victory for Germany. Very unfortunate for the Netherlands. They're now taking a four one lead, and once again, it is their pick. Just two points left before they can secure uh, match victory. Netherlands have a long barrel to stare down if they want to come out of this hole. Yeah, the client is really not happy today. That's a very close match though, 18k points, but that's a pretty big blow to the Netherlands considering they just used a ban and a pick. And if Netherlands want to take points on anything other than Nomad, well, they might have to soon because they are running out of selections. Just Axiom Crisis and Interlude left in that pool. Germany, you have to imagine, will be looking at that third double time pick considering their dominant victory on Heavenly Blue and the uh, Netherlands ban of Endless Ripples. Yeah, but one thing that you have to notice is that these teams have been avoiding Hidden and Hard Rock. And that... We saw it in the match against Taiwan. Both teams avoided Hidden for as long as humanly possible. Yeah. For whatever reason. So... Whether or not, you know, a team is confident in no matter double time, they're running out of picks and they're going to have to confront that hidden hard rock pool. They don't have to worry about that right now, though, because it is Germany's pick. And they're taking their sweet time as well, deciding what's going to be next on the menu. It's it's honestly kind of a hard one. Because the worst thing you could do at this point is let the Netherlands get a point here and get momentum. Germany simply want to get the point and put all the pressure on Netherlands at match point on the Netherlands pick. It's exactly what they're trying to do. So it's really important for them to pick a map that they think they can get a point on here. Yeah, any victory for Germany now puts all following map games as a must win for Netherlands, which is a massive pressure when the loser goes home in this setting. And it will be DT3, the selection best of my love from Germany. No real surprise there. Compared to yeah. what we've seen in previous pools, this is the more kind of conventional, like more normal double time pick, if anything, because we don't see any of the, the massive, like elevated approach rates that are on the other picks in this pool. Yeah. So this is going to be, I think, slightly more doable for the Netherlands than the last DT pick, but. If they struggle even remotely close to the amount they did in their last DT pick, Germany's going to walk this. Yeah, the approach rate is not the kind of saving grace that this map may have you believe. Only AR8, so 9.67 with double time. 
that there's a lot of very difficult uh, hyper dashes combined with strong dashes that go on for like five or six notes in a row. And uh, also, like again, similar to what we saw with Heavenly Blue, it's very easy to over dash slider ends because you're just trying to keep up with the uh, the movement from one section to the next. Yep. So we see in Ryoku, Porion, and Chatty throw on hidden. And here we go. Good song, though. Very good song, yeah. I'm quite a big fan of Yesterday Ray's music. Oh, trade coming in from Woodpep and Inryoku. Yeah, Inryoku missing just like one or two notes before the pump there. Gonna be very little to choose between the two teams. So far, everyone else doing relatively well here. But here we go with the second drop, though. Right before the key eye. Yeah, just as everyone was getting to 200 combo, that's unfortunate, and it's going to give Netherlands a slight advantage. But this is definitely an endurance pick that is uh, not something that's going to be won and lost instantly, but another Ooh. drop from Inryoku and Woodpump as well. Yeah, but the Dutch still have that slight. It had the slight advantage, but now it's actually a slight German advantage due to the timing of the misses from Inryoku and Woodpump. But double miss from Germany, and Chatty's gonna fall as well. And now it's Wesley alone with 400 combo. Yeah, another drop there from Chatty. A very strange double miss from Porion and Namirin at the same time there, though. So no full combos left on the side of Germany. Wesley, this sole kind of full combo left with their 500 combo approaching as Porion drops again. Inryoku just building up to 200 combo, as does Lukam. Netherlands still holding the advantage ever so slightly on this one. Yeah, but this map is far from over. Netherlands can see it, they have the lead now. 50,000 points there, the tune of their lead just in a, at the moment. Chatty almost at that 200 combo mark. Orion has a long way to go before he is uh, to the same. Yeah, the Dutch really gonna grow that score lead. Approaching the halfway mark now and uh, like coming into a karma section as everyone's looking fairly safe. Another key is building up very soon though. You can see those oh, edges, the edges. Wesley, Woodpump, and Inryoku both drop. Yeah, and Wesley as well. That's actually going to be an advantage for Germany. Chatty able to hold on. Woodpamp missing once again. Namirin versus Chatty right now. Inryoku In again, though. Yeah, he's having a tough time as Wesley drops again. Like, Netherlands had a healthy advantage, but it is getting smaller and smaller. It's it's because Porion and Amarin just are outclassing Chatty. Both Woodpep and Wesley are struggling. Chatty will drop that combo, and Germany's going to take it over. Yeah, we, a mistrade from Woodpep and Inryoku there as well, but Namirin looks very strong now. Porion has recovered from that early miss as well. And just no real combos available on the side of the Netherlands. The Dutch had lead the start. Oh, wait! What the heck happened there? That was a huge Orion drop from Inryoku and Porion. What the heck? And the Dutch are back in it! Chatty with a miss. Wesley over 200 though. He's gonna negate Namirin. Porion and Ch oh, Wesley dropped. Woodpets dropped just as he got to 200. The Dutch might be giving it right back and they will. No combos left. It's Namirin carrying this one. The only decent combo left in the match. Approaching 800, over 800 now. He Namirin drops, with a miss. It, he's, He's done the work. There's not enough the time for him to recover Wood now. Is building a combo. But he's getting it. I'm wrong. It's, Woodpamp I'm wrong. is building a combo. Woodpamp is going to steal it back. Wow. Woodpamp says Netherlands. no, sir. I wrote Netherlands off in the worst way there, though. I did not think there was enough time, but that was so much closer than I gave it credit for. Netherlands sneaking that one. Wow. Woodpamp with the quick recovery at the end is going to be enough for the Dutch to take a second point. And this is what Germany were trying to avoid. Now they've let the Netherlands in the door. Breakpoint, momentum. This is the best chance the Dutch are going to have to get back into this match. And once again, as we saw with uh, No Mod 5, the Hollow Wings map, 
Some great performances on the side of Germany from Namir and Emporion in particular, but Netherlands, overall, a better, more consistent team performance. All of their players performing at a sensible level, everyone kind of not panicking, not cracking under pressure, and a second pickup point for the Netherlands. They have yeah, won on a double time. They have yeah. forced Germany to win another two games. Yeah, and now we've limited it down to two Nomads, two Hiddens, and two Hard Rocks. And the Netherlands are picking AR5 Hidden. Unfortunately, there isn't any AR5 Hidden. What but the... if there was, I would have considered it for uh, our match against Hong Kong, because that's pretty cool. They're going to stick with no mod. Netherlands deciding they want to exhaust this mod pool entirely. They want nothing to do with hard rock or hidden until it's forced upon them. They're going to be going with Axiom Crisis. Yeah, the Netherlands really need to take this point now and capitalize off the momentum that they've been given. That was a big point. But it could still be over like that if Germany take this break point and then match point. I think this is the first appearance of uh, this pick so far in the uh, quarterfinals. We didn't see it in the previous match. Yeah, no, this is the second match of the weekend. So this map getting its first play of the weekend. So now we wait. Master Force are going to be stepping back in for the Netherlands. And here we go on Axiom Crisis. The Netherlands looking for more. A chance that they've earned. Apparently this song has a length of no minutes and no seconds. That's pretty impressive. Apparently that's the length of every song. I've only just noticed it. So if it's been like that the whole time, then um, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, it's been like that. <laughs> oh, okay. But here we go. We'll see if the Netherlands can capitalize off of this chance. Or will the Germans Hold steady and be strong and send it to match point. Yeah, fairly sane first 200 combo here and then it quickly works up into uh, some hyper dashing anti-flow. Orion missing on his first wiggles. Vinci, Vinci dropping as well. Double missing miss. on that one sixth hyper dash. Double miss for Germany, as you said. Yeah, double miss for the Germans and now the Dutch Taking command and control, and there's still three way F seeing this. We'll see if the slowing down section at the end of this Kiai catches anyone out. It's a very tricky one quarter and one sixth transition. As the BPM changes, Wesley gonna drop. Yeah, an excellent As recovery Poryon. by Vinci and Porion. Yeah. But Porion is gonna drop along with Master Forcer, so they're gonna trade. It's Shaddy against Marmelo. And Chatty's down! Master Marmolo. Force are dropping as well. No combos two, for the Netherlands. Yeah, two combos on the side of Germany, both Marv, Malo with the SS and Vinci with the 300 combo. This lead is shrinking agonizingly slow in the calm section, but it's gonna go over to Germany very slowly, inexorably at this point. This is heartbreaking for the Netherlands. Oh, Marmelo with a miss! Hold on! We're not done yet. Porion gets to 200. Wesley's there. The Dutch have combos. They're trying to fight the Germans off here, and they may be able to do it. And just when you thought the Germans were going to take it, the miss from Marmelo and the quick recovery of the Dutch have Chatty pulled another missing. one back. Chatty missing right at the end, but that's not going to be an issue. Netherlands taking a third point. Hold on. Hold Rip on. All of the pickums.
This is getting interesting now. Marv Mallow almost getting that double S, but just the one drop, which uh, swung it over to Netherlands that final time, giving them a lifeline. 4-3 Germany. Man, wow. that's got to be so tilting as Germany. You have, the, you have the points. The past two maps, you've had it. At the very end, stolen. And now Germany have the pick. There's one Nomad left. And then there's Hidden Hard Rock. So either Germany get rid of the fourth, uh, the sixth and final Nomad pick, or they're forced to pick into Hard Rock or Hidden. Something that they have been reluctant to go to so far. Yeah. You have to imagine that Netherlands will be wanting to pick that sixth Nomad since they've picked four of the five Nomad uh, to date. This is excellent from the Netherlands. They're going to force Germany into taking a gamble when the scoreline is poised so delicately at four to three. Germany once again taking their time to decide, more so maybe this time than they have in previous selections. Yeah, the Netherlands have kind of really rattled them here. Because, I mean, you've, you've had two teams that have been just avoiding Hidden and Hard Rock. And now all of a sudden there's one Nomad, two Hidden, two Hard Rock, and it's kind of like, hmm. Now what? This is why you got to practice everything in the pool, because the, 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 the thing that you don't expect to have to play, that you don't expect will get tested, always comes up. That one lesson that you uh, decided not to revise will always come up on the exam. <laughs> and Germany are finding that out now. Do they go with Hidden or Hard Rock? Or do they go with No Mod, something that they'll be more confident in, but they know that Netherlands will also be very confident in. They yeah, have the, no safe selections here. Yeah, the Netherlands have really kind of taken that no mod space and just owned it. They've really stepped up and... Not every no mod pick has come off the Netherlands, but they've proven Cyber to Germany that... Thunder Cider is the wow. pick from Germany. They're going... Oh my bad, wait, no wait, a ban. My bad, I forgot, they get a second ban. Duh. Netherlands at three points. Oh, but they say it's the pick. Well, I mean, they get to choose both, so I don't suppose it matters yeah. which they pick or ban first. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. As long as they get them both done. So that's the pick. You have to imagine they'll be banning the last no mod. It would unless make they sense. Feel, unless they feel super confident on it. Or they just really want nothing to do with one of the other three picks. I mean, yeah, those are all brilliant uses here, but... I mean, I feel like at this point, you may just, might as well just ban that Nomad if you're Germany and force the Netherlands to beat you on Hidden and Hard Rock. Well, Germany have also been avoiding Hidden and Hard Rock, so maybe they don't feel that confident on them either. True. Still waiting for Germany's uh, comeback ban here. First you pan your second map, then Wesley can end you. Pen laying <laughs> down the law. Good ref. Good ref. Respect the ref, man. And yeah, they will ban No Mod 6, uh, Loki's interlude. Sensible decision, considering the uh, success, or rather, the reliance Netherlands have had on No Mod thus far. So it's well, a hidden and hard rock party for our remaining two, maybe as many as four uh, picks after this one. You can witness my amazing HR skills, says Wesley. That sounds like the kind of thing I would say. My amazing ability to miss 100 times in a map that has 100 notes. <laughs> Germany didn't so, sweep, no. Far uh, from it, Bobber. I love that. Um... <laughs> 
That is the sound of a man whose pickums have been obliterated. Dude, I think many people's pickums have been obliterated. I was predicting 6-2, so I was happy when Netherlands got the second point, but... I can't be mad, like, uh, Netherlands getting a third point, because this is just an excellent game. Yeah, I mean, I had it at 6-1. I did not expect the Netherlands... I didn't expect their depth to step up as much as they have. Like, Woodpamp, Chatty have really been overplaying today. Like, super well. So... Let's see if they can keep it up. They deserve it. The triple hidden hard rock from Germany. Chatty will also go with hidden hard rock. Wesleyan Woodpamp electing not to add on the hidden. And here we go. How will these teams fare on Hard Rock? Miss is coming in from Chatty and Ryoku. Wesley will follow it up. Germany will lead. Oh, wow, everybody misses. misses that. that is a Dude. horrible spacing. Dude. Oh, it's Another triple, triple, triple miss from Netherlands, from Netherlands, though. Not good news for them. Wow. Okay. Chatty and Ryoka are going to trade misses once again. And Namorin and Porion really pouring it on here. Porion really pouring it on. Porion pouring one. it on. Wesley with a miss. Porion Namirin. dropping right before the break as well, though. Yeah, Namorin's the only one above 200. Inryoku seeing another drop there. Yeah, Chatty yeah. following suit though. Woodpump as well. Netherlands really struggling to build a combo here as Namirin drops. Germany don't have much combo anyway either. Yeah, but they, but they built up in lead. Yeah, because they have built up slowly and building up that advantage. The Netherlands have just not been able to gain combo. Namirin with a miss here, but now the Netherlands have a few hundred combos and they do drop two of them there. Woodpump the third will fall, so there they go. Two 200 combos for Germany. And this, this one might be a wrap pretty soon. Yeah, only halfway through, but already a massive lead being pulled out for Germany. They're not, like, by any means getting massive combos themselves, but they're always ensuring that at least one person is at that maximum score cap. And now all three of their players will be as Namirin hits 200 combo. Shaddy finally getting up to 200. The Netherlands needs some 200s here, but a triple miss! Namirun will drop as well. Inryoku's down. Porion, the only combo really left. Yeah, one quarter of the map to go, and the players can see. Like, Germany can see. Look at their advantage. It's like 500,000 points right now. It's going to take a, a miracle for Netherlands to come back into this one. It really will require a fail at this point, because... Netherlands do not have any kind of combos to take advantage, even if Germany do miss. And Porion does have that 500 combo. Yeah, it's it's over unless we see a fail from Germany. This point is going to the German side. We do see a drop from Porion, Namirin as well. Woodpump dropping a few times. Wesley, Chatty getting up to 200 combo, but it's nowhere near enough. Inryoku doing the same. But that is a comfortable victory for Germany. That is they a, have a safety monster net. win. Nearly 500,000 points. That is such a brutal map, and you see why it was avoided for so long. And that is going to do it there. 5-3, Germany lead, match point. The Netherlands now need three in a row, or their World Cup journey is over. They've come back twice already. Can they do it a third time? They won one game, and then they won two games in a row. So three games in a row right now. Two and then the tiebreaker. Holy. Unfortunately, now they have to play another hard rock map if they want to do that. Unless we do double hidden. And they're going to start off with hidden. Docoringo to Cinderella's uh, going to be the uh, next pick from the Netherlands. Sticking in the convert pool, this time moving to Hiddens, however. 
Netherlands are definitely one of the better convert teams out there. And one of their points they got was on that no mod convert earlier. Oh, Chatty's sounding like he's already giving up the ghost turn. Hopefully that's not the case, because they're still in this one. Only 5-3 to Germany at the moment, so match point secured, but they got to get over the line. We've already seen Germany falter just a little bit a couple of times now. Ooh, some mind games here from the Netherlands. Wesley saying he expects Genoshi to FC. Genoshi gang! Here we go. Potential final game from this match between the Netherlands and Germany in the uh, 2019 quarterfinals of the Oscatch World Cup. Netherlands, Germany, show your support. Hype in the chat, guys. The loser goes home. So if you want to see Netherlands or Germany stick around into next week's semi-final stage, get cheering. Well said. And here we go. Wesley with the early miss here from the Netherlands. Give a slight advantage to the German side. Thankfully for Wesley though, it was a really early miss. Yeah, definitely more of an endurance tester this one. Especially considering the map is quite long and with high BPM uh, and mapped in one third rhythm, the combo is pretty high. So there's definitely chances for people to get back. Mark Mallow and Wesley with the double drop. Yeah, so Jeremy will retain that slight advantage. Oh, but Chatty's miss is really going to set them back. Genoshi and Vorion looking quite comfortable. Yeah, two full combos to one now for Germany. Master Forcer trying to hold on for the Dutch squad. Approaching that 500 combo now. Score advantage still eking out in Germany's favor as Wesley and Marfamalo trade drops again. Marvello misses again. And still, the Netherlands are, have not been able to capitalize off of these German misses. Because the Germans are finding misses. They're giving them chances. The Netherlands just need to put themselves in a position where they can take a lead here. And Wesley going right back to work on the recovery. And Porion will trade with Wesley. Also, Chatty will drop. Not good news for the Dutch. It's still Genoshi and Marmelo with the 200 combos. Marmelo just got his combo up to 200 in time for the Germans. Yeah, Master Force are still holding on to that uh, FC for the Netherlands, but unfortunately it's not quite enough. Germany still eking out that combo. A chatty and Marfamalo trade misses once again. Yeah, the Dutch just cannot seem to capitalize off any misses. Master Forcer will trade with Marmelo. Wesley, everybody's missed except Genoshi. Genoshi, the only relevant combo. Oh. And once again, he's the only player to hold through that uh, that hyper chain section. Still on a double S. Marv Mallow with quite a few drops there towards the end. Coming very close to failing, but he will have plenty of time to recover. Unfortunately for the Dutch, this is looking like a potential curtain call here. They really need to capitalize off a German miss soon or their journey in this World Cup is over. But Germany looking so calm, cool, and collected right now, heading into the final section here. Unless there's a meltdown from the German side, the Netherlands will be sent home. Oh, unfortunate for Genoshi, just overbalancing on that uh, little statue. Oh, screen no. He's done, he's done the hard work, though. He's yeah, Genoshi... kept his team in a great position, and they will be taking this final point and the match. And that is going to do it. 6-3 the final. The Germans got a little more than they bargained for, but they get the win.
and they move on. The Netherlands will finish top 16. A good match for them to end on, I believe. We saw a lot of good things from them. Not a bad way to exit. Yeah, big props to the Netherlands for coming back twice and giving us an excellently uh, riveting game that could either have easily have gone either way. Germany just about holding their nerve in that one, though, managing to pull through 6-3 in that match for the victory. As you said, they will continue to uh, next week's semi-final stage, keeping their dreams in the loser's bracket alive. Unfortunately, Netherlands will be the second team today to make their World Cup exit after the United Kingdom in the first match today. Big props to them, uh, so uh, we'll see them again next year, but congratulations to Germany. And there you have it. The Germans moving on in the loser's bracket. And that is going to do it for this block, I believe. Coming up next on the schedule is going to be Finland, Finland. versus Chile. Yeah. Yeah, our first winner's bracket encounter. So that coming up, our first actual winner's bracket quarterfinal, and that could be... That's the makings of a potentially an epic match there. You've got Finland just squeaking in on the top seed this year, debuting as a top seed versus Chile, one of the lower ends of the top seed, but a veteran squad, the defending bronze medalists. Coming up in 13 minutes. You don't want to miss it. Go take your bathroom breaks now. But yeah, we'll allow you to listen to some uh, wonderful tunes for the uh, next 10 minutes or so. And uh, then we'll be back. So yeah, uh, don't go anywhere, but if you do have to, Please come back. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye-bye.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the quarterfinal stage of 2019 OS Catch World Cup. Finland versus Chile is next up. I am JB Hyperion, joined this time by Chicken Bible. How are you doing, friend? Hello, hello. I'm doing just fine. We're having our second cast of the day. Gonna be getting. Pull yep. Pulling big duty. Oh, yeah. Still got more to come from both of us, even, too. Anyways, mm -hmm. this match. You've got, you've got playing later this evening. Oh yeah, so you had yours earlier. Too much. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm done playing wise for this year's cup, so Sadly. I can focus on I focus on all the other teams. Hey, you also got the mapping World Cup, so that's good for you. Yeah. Still say participating in one at least. Anyways, Keep getting into the busy. teams. We got on the side of Finland. We got Fugan Taco, Yuri, Osmi, Percy, Nikolai, and Noksu 15. And then from Chile, we have Lion QTXZ, Eldenal, Nico, Nachoel, Arisiel, and Lechuguin. This is a winner's bracket encounter, so even if these teams, one of these teams loses, they will not be eliminated just yet. They will go down to the loser bracket and have a chance to fight for their survival in next week's semi final stage. But for the winner, potential slots in the top kind of four to six beckon if they can secure a victory here. Yeah, it's going to be actually pretty important this match because both teams, I believe, can win this match. Finland, although not quite as strong as Chile, I would say, they have the potential to be able to beat Chile on a quarterfinals map pool. Yeah, teams at this skill level still do have kind of very close links at this kind of difficulty. Uh, they've not been quite drawn out to the point where the best teams rise all the way to the top yet. So this could be a close one. I think Chile probably have a slight advantage in double time. Finland should be able to compete very uh, capably in hard rock and hidden for the most part though. Yeah, I agree. And I think Nomad might go the way of Finland. I'm not sure. Yuri is, as we all know, an old player, very experienced on a lot of different types of Nomad stuff. Awesome, he plays so many maps. He has so many hidden hard arc number one, so he'll be able to keep up on those. Is this the warm up that I think it is, JP Hyperion? This is a conflagration, a, a little known uh, catch map that not many people have heard of. Wow, I wonder when the last time that anyone played this map was. Let me just swing up and bomb real quick. He's gonna be happy. His maps are finally in CWC. <laughs> That's brutal, man. How could you do that to the man? Ooh, it's okay. He knows I love him. Forgotten Taco playing the uh, hidden flashlight. Relax. I actually have three hidden on the side of Chile, except El Nino taking easy as well. Uh, I think that's a That's sudden death combo. from line rather than a hidden. Oh yeah, you're right. I wonder who would, why he would take that. Just backing himself to FC it, maybe. Yeah. Meanwhile, Forgotten Taco is inducing a mini seizure from his uh, teleporting relax hidden flashlight catcher. Oh god. Eldenal with the easy hidden is doing a stellar job of maintaining single digit combo. Funnily enough, the only person who has FC still is aligned with his sudden death. He didn't go for the perfect though, so... Yeah. Low skill. <laughs> <laughs> Needs Not to try harder next time. True. Next time he has to put on the perfect and hard rock. Everyone falling around him, but he's still holding on to that full combo. He has dropped a little bit of accuracy. Oh, I heard a fail sound. There's a fail from uh, Awesome E, which has killed all of our audio because he was the catcher that our audio was coming from. And Line, just casually kind of FCing with the sudden death. Backing himself not to miss and not missing. 
Not even SS though. Forgotten like Taco. 9, Forgotten Taco with the three combo. 14% Beautiful. act. Beautiful. And we're not quite sure what anyone whatever anyone else scored. Now that's a warm up for the ages. Oh yeah. Okay. This has to be Chili's warm up, mapped by uh, Lion himself. Lion advertising his own Twitch channel in the uh, in the the, the the multi room. That's a bit cheeky. I'm surprised not many people actually stream their own matches. It's only very few do, I believe. Something that many people would consider doing if they had the uh, computer power to run the Tawny client and their own kind of streaming client at the same time. Yeah. I know that if I have like anything more than Discord open at the same time as I'm trying to play seriously, oh, yeah. my computer likes to seize up. I just get scared that if I have anything else open, it's just gonna lag and it's just yeah. gonna miss. And you're just like, oh, why did I have that open? It's that little kind of two minute period before the map where you're like, right, let's close down all the non-essential programs. Yeah, it's like, all right, time to deafen on Discord, close the <laughs> awesome live stream. Oh, this seems to be like a mega compilation of just a bunch of stuff. A whole lot of stuff. If the warm up is this chaotic, I want to know what the actual map is like. Not sure if I should be scared or excited, to be honest. Well, there's no escaping from it, so uh, let's just uh, enjoy the True. ride. Oh boy, 260 BPM. Oh no. Okay. Just casual star rating of 12. Okay. Oh, just a few little screen jumps. Casually making an appearance. Yeah, actually everybody hitting them too, surprisingly. Well, there's some interesting songs mashed up into this that I'm being able to pick out one at a time. Well, I know a few of them. A lot of them seem to be older songs. Like, like the 2016 era CTB. tricky to read anything that comes immediately after those. Some big combos coming out the side of Chile right now, as you might expect from their warm-up, I suppose. Arisiel managing to catch all of those snaps, wow. It was far. Almost right teleporting right. different speed right there. misses on. I don't even know what he missed on. Oh, that's why it's 12 stars right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here's the difficulty. Got some role predictions coming out in chat. Good to see. Hopefully we'll be getting into those as soon as possible. Arisiel with the 7 misses, though. Wow. That looked pretty difficult, I have to say. 
You got less misses than the star rating. Okay. See a That's roll. pretty good 72. opening roll. Okay. Yeah, pretty good opening roll. My prediction for the next one is going to be 43. 57. Oh, 57. Not quite, but you got the winner correct. Chile taking this one. They will elect to choose whether they want to pick or ban first. You think we're going to see Lasso fight banned for the third time in a row? It has been uh, pretty high on the menu for uh, for bans so far, and also Hafsakai Sif, who has been banned twice as well, but this time, Chile going to be taking Endless Ripples, the double time pick, off the table. That's an interesting selection. I thought Chile would be quite strong at double time. Maybe they just do not feel like that is something they want to have anything to do with. Yeah, I'm honestly quite surprised at that ban. I would have thought that Chile would be kind of stronger on something like that compared to the longer map of Best of My Love or Heavenly Blue. Finland will be banning La Selfie there. There it is. Three bans out of three for uh, Hidden One. You think we can get all the way up to eight out of eight? That would be a little bit of a, uh, a notice to the map selectors, huh? Just a little bit. But obviously people not wanting anything to do with that one this time around thus far. But a Hatsu Sakai Seifuku appears uh, as a viable pick for the first time, so maybe we'll see that selected somewhere along the way. That's proven to be a very tricky uh, hard rock specific also that players have struggled with. You know, I actually think both of these teams could do really well on that. Because there's those two jumps that are just really far that they turn from hyper dashes into just edge dashes for no apparent reason. But having no mod one picked, Hellblind unconquered, mapped by yeah, Idust. Finland, Finland gonna be starting out with there aren't really any safe picks in the uh, quarterfinal stage right now, but yeah. this is probably one of the, the less risky picks for them. As long as you've practiced this map before, it's pretty yeah. safe. Yeah, some unconventional snapping and stream shapes, but nothing kind of uh, drastically weird. And also not too long, so it's a nice one to settle the nerves with. Just we're waiting for players to ready up and our ref tiger eyes to start this one. I'm quite surprised that somebody like Elden L isn't playing something like this. Elden L being more experienced on more of the orthodox nomad picks. On the side of Finland we have probably their three most known players of Awesome Ifugan, Taco and Yuri. They are initiating a player swap here, and Eldenol, as you suspected, will be coming in. Hey, I did it. You you baited him out of hiding. He was like, oh man, I got called out, now I have to play this one. <laughs> and we're off to the races in uh, match three of the uh, 2019 Oscatch World Cup quarterfinals. Finland versus Chile. Winner's bracket encounter, so loser stays in the tournament, but winner gives themselves a huge chance of making it through to the podium spots. Yep, and whoever wins this match will be playing against the winner of the China and Philippines match, I believe, if I'm correct. So, they're gonna have a hard week ahead of them as well. Well, there are no easy weeks from now on for most of the uh, teams left in the tournament. You're absolutely all right about all that the teams one. this year playing at such a high level compared to previous years. This map starts off relatively calmly, so we shouldn't be seeing too many breaks in the intro, at least from these two teams. It is that first game though, you do see some nerves creep in. Forgotten Taco gonna be the early drop there at about 150 combo, giving Chile the early advantage as everyone else hits that 200 combo mark. Yeah, the big thing to know is that it was before the 200 combo mark, and we see Eldenel giving a break right there. 
But wow, then we have triple a triple break. Yeah, two from uh, Finland, Forgotten Taco, and also me, but Nacho L missing on the side of Chile. And Yuri brings well. his full combo as well, a 300 combo. Oh, so that's not good. No full combos left on the side of Finland. Line QTXZ giving Chile a good advantage right now. Here we come into the hyper dash spam section. Yeah, some All really high slider velocity well. sections here. Awesome, you're gonna see us another drop there though, just as he was getting back up to 200 combo. Line still holding on to that full combo as Eldon and Nacho are building back up as well. Not much It'll left in this hard. map. Everybody hitting these wonky streams fairly well. Even though there's a Nacho break from Nacho at the end. Yeah, it's not going to decide too much though. Chile with a comfortable advantage on that one, taking an opening point. Line settling the nerves perhaps with a great FC. 700 combo for him. Not too shabby performance from any of the other players, but just a slight advantage from that FC going over to the side of Chile. But that was their pick, so Finland can select next. Yeah, I think what Finland is going to come back with, I believe they'll probably try to come back with Hard Rock. Maybe they'll try to pick up that tricky, long, travely map. I forgot what the name was already. Uh, how to Sekai Seifuku? Yes, that one. You Maybe could be forgiven for up. forgetting that one because it's been banned twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think we'll be seeing too much of it, but yeah, you're right. This one is where, this is where it could make an appearance. And Chile saying they pick DT1. Thought it was Finland's pick. Well, they're not arguing about it, so. Yeah. Chile, Chile, Chile decided Chile to pick second, yeah. That's the yeah, thing. Chile elects to ban first. Script Chan is just uh, giving us some misinformation here, yeah. So that's a break point, actually, for yeah. uh, Chile. It's a little surprising then. So this is interesting. Chile banning one double time, but first picking a second. And they also picked the long one too, which Asami and Yuri are both known for being pretty decent on long maps and consistency. But I would say this is probably the most difficult map in the map pool. So. Yeah, it's long, it's high approach rate at 8.8, .8, which I think is about 10.2 with double time. Around it's there. a huge drain on reading and consistency. Yeah, it kind of just sticks out like a sore thumb in the map. It was like, wait, whoa, that's there. Whoa. That's in the quarterfinal you know? pool? Yeah, I yeah. definitely remember maybe... thinking that, that as well when we saw the showcase last weekend. So maybe Chile is kind of thinking, we're just better than you, and we can just beat you on something that's kind of a bit of a harder map in this pool. Well, we'll see if that is the case. Nico coming in uh, for Chile as well as uh, Arisiel as well. Line and Nachoel both dropping out. Finland fielding an unchanged roster for this one. Or this double time strong. This double time squad is really strong from Chile. Both all these players are known for playing above AR 10.3 with double time. Yeah, you look at a lot of the teams left in the tournament and you think they have good hidden players, they have good hard rock players, but there are very few teams that are more known for double time than any other mod, and Chile is definitely one of those teams. Yeah, usually when you have double time members, you only have one or two people who can play AR 10.3 or above AR 9 with double time very comfortably. Saying that Nico is going to be the first drop, Forgotten Taco trading immediately afterwards, but a second drop there from Forgotten Taco, quite a few drops actually as well, is going to give Chile a slight advantage. I actually see a fail from Awesomely right there. 
Yeah, Trade quite a few drops there. Pico. One drop always followed by another. Nico with a drop there as well is going to give that lead just back to Finland, I think. You are correct. Yeah. All of Finland's players holding above 200 combo right now, so despite those early misses, Finland do have the advantage right now. It's a very slender gap though, and it could change with just a single drop. Nico back up to 200 combo now, with the advantage only about 15 to 20,000 points. point out Elden L and Arisio's act, but as soon as I try to point that out, Arisio finds a big drop when he has a full awesome combo. Awesome me missing as well though, so Finland not going to be able to build a huge advantage here. You already find a break as well. That was the last full combo for the side of Finland. And that's going to swing right back to the side of Chile with Elden L still holding on to that full combo. But then Nico misses as soon as you say that, so it's going to be anyone's game now. It's Elden L versus Forgotten Taco as far as combos are concerned here. Nico's finding so many breaks, back and back and back. Stamina really taking its toll on this map. Only yeah. kind of two thirds of the way through, so there's still a lot of combo left, and Nico is starting Can't to struggle. Combo. Not good news for Chile. He hasn't gotten past like 100 and maybe 500 notes. And combo scaling is logarithmic, so when you're at very low combo, you're scoring so much less compared to when you're at like even 100 or 150. So Nico is spending so much time scoring almost nothing per fruit as Elvin and Nico both drop at the start of that break. Fiddle are gonna be running away with this one. Uh, awesome he dro drops, but Yerti and Forgotten Taco still have those great combos. Arisiel, the only one with a combo left on the side of Chile right now. And then you just look at the accuracy on the side of these players. Arisio with 99.8, Elden L with 99.9%. Forgotten Taco and Dirty both with 99.71. Very strong accuracy from all these players. This looks like it's uh, Finland's point to lose right now though. Forgotten Taco putting in an amazing performance after that one early drop. Not being phased by that one at all. But Finland all around a pretty impressive performance. Chile did well but Really, Nico was the deciding factor between the two teams that game. Just struggling so much to build a combo in the last kind of third of the map. And that will be a break point for Finland. Chile feeling yeah. very confident on double time, but Finland definitely game up for the challenge there. Both teams taking break points off of each other. You know, you got the makings of a great game when it starts with two break points. Oh, yeah. Now, you gotta wonder. Finland, they lost on their first Nomad pick. But they won on the double time pick right here. So you gotta wonder, what are they gonna go for? The only disadvantage for Finland is if they're feeling super confident on double time, there's only one DT pick left, because Chile banned yeah. the second. Whereas the Nomad pool is still mostly open aside from that one pick we've already seen. No mod is the worst kind of mod to be at a disadvantage in because there's always that extra kind of availability, there's that greater depth of the pool. I see hollow wings in the chat. Is that going to be... Finland's pick. That'd be a very interesting matchup. Because we have so many great Conver players who are pretty well versed. Okay, I think we're back. Apologies we're back. for the uh, the delay, the uh, the difficulties on stream. It's become a little bit of a little bit of a kind of common theme, but we have to try and fix them as quickly as possible to get back to you. We've been able to hold the stream, hold the players. Tiger Eyes, our ref, has kept them at bay eager to get on with this uh, this third game. It looks like uh, some of the players are just going for a quick water break. Important to stay hydrated, especially when the pressure gets to you. If this goes uh, a few more break points, these players could be sweating. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's good they get the water break early on. Because they're going to need it, honestly. The way that we've seen both these teams play could go either way. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Both teams have looked strong at times and vulnerable at times. Picking up on each other's weaknesses, trying to avoid each other's strengths. You know, while we have this slight little wait, remember that you guys can buy yourself a banner in the OSU store. Support your teams. Get some hype for the teams in the chat as they get into the third pick of the map. And the of map. course, your uh, your banners do help support World Cup tournaments and uh, obviously OSU in general. So if you do love this content and you want to see more of it, then please do so. You can of course also subscribe or cheer. Any uh, any and all contributions are greatly appreciated. Lion saying my stream didn't crash, so come and watch me. <laughs> A little bit cheeky from the uh, Chilean player there. You know, as soon as we sell out, he says, hey, I can sell out too. <laughs> Here we go, though. Game number three in match number three. Finland versus Chile. Both teams have taken one break point each. We actually see Noksu15 subbing in for Forgotten Taco. I believe that's the first change on the side of Finland. You would be correct. Two changes on the side of Chile. Nacho L and uh, Line have come back in in place of Nico and Eldenor. Seems like we have no volume while you wait for Awesomey's client yeah. to fix itself a little bit. It's, yeah, Awesomey, there we go. Awesomey was the uh, the client who we were acquiring sound from, and whilst we wait for him to catch up, we did have a little uh, lack, of, lack of sound there. Once all the players are synced back up, that should be fine. Very amazing technology when you think about it. It is correct. I don't know how I could ever make something like this. <laughs> I know I'd probably be just this in there fumbling, uh, how do I do this? Oh no, it broke again. <laughs> you know. Send help! As we were going off on a little tangent, all players are still holding a full combo, surprisingly. Yeah, a few little about accuracy halfway. drops, but uh, nothing too tragic. Chile with the tiniest of advantages as we come into this break section. There you go. 700 points the difference. They Two know bananas. it's all to play for. Here we get into the trickier part of the map. Lots of hyper chains, far wonky sliders, as typical with a lot of Sino maps. You kind of see them in almost all of his maps nowadays. Yeah, a lot of hold dash sections. You see Which... the first miss coming in from Noksu15. Yeah, oh, also me dropping as well. Nacho dropping on the side of Chile, but it will be two drops to one, giving Chile an advantage. One third of the map still to play for. We've got a little calm section coming up now. The ending of the map is pretty tricky. Probably not failable to players at this level of skill. But it is going to take another drop on the side of Chile if we want to see Finland come back into this one. Otherwise, they could be staring at a second break. Everyone doing well enough to keep their combos. Yeah, one, three 1,000 combos on the board now. The gap has stabilized. Awesome, he drops again, though. Unless we see a huge drop at the end, that's going to be enough to secure the victory for Chile. Oh, Aerisiel almost had that big drop. Aerisiel 
almost uh, bringing nightmares to to fruition there with uh, some low HP some low HP bars, but it will be a second break point for Chile. Line with another FC, just the one droplet miss. Again, very close between the two teams, but unfortunately, Chile uh, just eking out the uh, consistency advantage. Finland uh, maybe got to think of something else because Nomad is just not quite working for them. It's They're not performing bad, but they're expecting a miss or two from Chile, and they're just not coming. Well, not in yeah, Chile, they're proving their consistency. They're proving why they're, you know, that strong team that they've been always, you know, got, I think it was third place last year in the World Cup. They did. That is correct. Yep. Trying to hunt back into that third place again. So Chile currently leading 2-1 with two break points. Finland, the, uh, obviously the second break point. So they'll be looking to break again and keep it level at 2-2 because Chile will pick next. They looked very confident in double time earlier on, but Finland looked more than up to the challenge. So will they take the final double time pick or will they decide to look somewhere else for their potential third point? A little bit of deliberation, uh, the players deciding whether what their next selection is going to be. There are still plenty of Nomad picks available. Three in the Hard Rock pool and uh, two in the Hidden pool after La Silphida was banned, as you can see here. Autisakai Seifuku uh, available for the first time this round after it was banned in the first two matches earlier today. Best of my love still available for double time selection if Chile deciding that they're more confident on that. Finland have plenty of Nomad till still to select from if they wish later on, but after losing on it twice, maybe they're going to be forced to try and tackle something slightly differently. You know what map I really want to see right here? I want to see Mint Tears. I wished I could have played Mint Tears in our match against Hong Kong. Why did you I really like that map. It? I know, I like because it too, surprisingly. we had uh, no Fab Ninja, ah, and yeah. uh, Withered Lotus can't play Hidden, and Matt said that he would die inside if we had to play Hidden, so unfortunately we stuck with no mod. Oh, I feel bad for you. I know you and M-Bomb probably were so excited to play that too. I, d I don't think I'd have done particularly well on it, but it's definitely my style of uh, oh, yeah. like a map that I enjoy playing quite a lot. It's a bit finger-breaking, but very fun. Still waiting for Chile's pick here, though. I'm just relieved I didn't end up having to play Hard Rock because I would have uh, embarrassed myself, I think, frankly. I was waiting for you to go. <laughs> I was like in the chat, I was like, I saw the first Hard Rock pick and I'm like, it's JBH's time to shine! And well, you the, just didn't go in. Hon like, Hong Kong were going to pick Hard Rock first and we were pretty convinced, so Withered basically just said, right, get out and go practice something. <laughs> oh. I was so excited for you to make your Hard Rock debut in the World no. Cup. I can maybe do like some of the group stage hard rock picks like reasonably well, but anything you know, at this difficulty Zach, is just sad for me, I'm afraid. Even Zach played hard rock last year, if you remember that. I think we lost that point though. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, we didn't have a team last year. Everyone forgot to sign up collectively. It was quite embarrassing. It was coming home. But he brought it home a little bit before the World Cup started, unfortunately. <laughs> Yerti with a little bit of banter saying uh, maybe your stream wouldn't lag if you were closed your, your Twitch channel. <laughs> win by default hype. We hope not. We don't like to see any win by defaults. And oh my goodness, it's Mint Tears. Yes. Uh, 
I'm excited. I'm... El Janelle is gonna FT this. That's my. That's where my bet is on right now. That's not a prediction. That's a spoiler. Oh yeah, El Janelle is so good at these kind of maps. Same with Lechiguin. Yep, there he is. This is Straight like the in there. No hesitation. Yeah, this is their bread and butter for the slaying team. All these old maps with hidden. Remember last year we had um, one of the Chilean Wombos was uh, Susumu Hirosawa uh, switched on Lotus. And I think it was Line QDXD who FC'd it with Hidden. What a madman. But yeah, we are going to be seeing Hidden 2. Steven's mint tears for the first time this quarterfinals. Looks like we're going to be starting this one. Game number four. Delay currently with a 2 1 lead. Finland hoping for a second break point to stay in this one. Chile looking to take a uh, advantage at 3-1 on their own pick. And lets you go in waiting to load into the lobby or into the match. I, I don't see him. Nacho, Nacho will the very the early drop. Yeah, cut on one of those little wiggles. Very prominent throughout the whole map, so we're going to be seeing more of those. Yeah, this is quite a difficult map, and you can only get kind of three or four misses, but because the whole map is fairly consistently tricky in terms of combining hyper dashes with strong dashes, if you miss at regular intervals, you're going to end up with very little score, which is going to be extremely punishing. Awesomey with the drop, let you go in with the drop, both before 200 combo. And Nacho well as well. Drop yeah, Nacho right well out. with the second drop there. A second drop from Lechuguin as well. Still, two double S's on the side of Finland, both Forgotten Taco and Yerti. Eldenal, as we predicted, coming to the halfway stage with that double S at 300 combo. Yerti with the drop though. That lead is going to shrink slightly. Yeah, that spot where Yerti misses probably one of the trickier parts of the whole map, I believe. And Forgotten Taco, Taco dropping as well. Eldon will carrying now. He's going to bring that advantage so much back in Chile's favor. Awesomey has just hit 200 combo though. But Lechuguin is about to do the same. Natuel has hit 200. That advantage is shrinking rapidly. And Awesomey drops as well. Eldon no, no, drops. The FC is dead. But Chile have a huge advantage on this one. Little of the map left to play. About a 50,000 point advantage for Chile. So an FC was not to be, but that's a 900k for Eldenal. Great performance from him. And all around, Chile just slightly more consistent than their Finnish counterparts. That's a first secured game uh, selection point. So 3-1 to Chile. They're going to be able to... Finland this is going to be able to come in with the next ban. Comeback ban. New mechanic introduced this year. Yeah, so this is an unfortunate... Uh position for Finland because they want to keep picking Nomad but they've lost twice they banned double time oh no sorry uh, Chile banned the, the the second double time pick but Hard Rock has not been not been featured yet do they want to take Hidden off the board but then again Mint Tears is very different to the other two Hidden picks yeah uh, Silver Sil Sil is gone so they could ban that third Hidden selection but I feel that it's so completely different from Mint Tears that a loss on mint tiers doesn't tell them that they can't beat Chile at Hidden. I think the best ban might be Days, actually. Taking off one of the harder maps in the map pool. Possibly going for one of the more consistency picks in Cyber Thunder Cider. Actually, they're going to be banning Cyber Thunder Cider. Yeah, I so correct, correct pool, but uh, they choose yeah. Hard Rock 3 on Cyber Thunder Cider instead of Days.
Lion definitely not happy with that one, so turns out maybe that was a good selection from Finland. No, I love that song. That's honestly one of my favorite songs in this whole map pool. I listened to the other covers of it many times. Yeah, this was not a cover that I had heard of before uh, yeah, this, uh, this CWC, but it's not too bad, not too bad. I might have to map one of the other covers, because I like the other ones better a little bit, personally. I might have to map them after World Cup's done. Mm. Make it work for yourself. That is true. We also have to do that other map that was in group stage, too. Well, we need to do Inochiwa, yeah. You are, yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward to that one when I get a bit more time. So Finland's pick next, if I'm not mistaken. And they'll be going with Nomad 5, which is the Hollowings convert, I think. Um, yeah, you are correct. Shino Iro Wakira, CS3, but very wiggly. This is one of the maps I was personally excited for to see both these teams match up on. We have Yuri. You're gonna get your wish. Possibly. I've oh, been yeah. uh, blessed with seeing Mint Tears, and now we can both be blessed with seeing some Hollow Wings. A famous catch the beat mapper, of course. Yes, one of the best. You have played the. Uh, is this a Hollow Wings map or a, an Os catch map? There's been plenty of those games and quizzes throughout the years. They're always good fun. You're already saying in the chat. I don't know why we picked this. You picked it to please <laughs> us. Well, thank you very much. You have appeased the commentary team. <laughs> very much so. We are we are very grateful for your humble offering. So we're about to get underway of game five, though. Yeah, the big thing to watch out for in this map is can all these players get past about 500 combo, 550 combo with a full combo? That's where the difficulty really starts to ramp up with a lot of very far wiggles and kind of like edge dash wiggles, too. It's yeah, very there's two, two sections at the end of each kind of key eye that are almost kind of full screen hyper dashing combined with wiggles that can really be punishing. If anyone can get kind of to five or six hundred combo and stay there for any considerable length of time, they'll be running away with this one as Line sees a very early drop. It's actually getting multiple drops early on. I think that was about four or five. That's not the part you want to be missing, especially in this intro. This intro is considered to be much easier than the rest of the map. This is the part where you're supposed to, you know, build up your combo going into the 500 combo part. Yeah, Finland going to be taking a very early advantage with that one. We will see misses from both sides. Wow, though, Line and Eldenol both dropping. That's going to give Finland a huge advantage here, coming into one of the easiest parts of the difficulty. Get right into the wiggly parts coming in. It starts off pretty easy with the wiggles, but then it gets very, very hard, very, very fast. Yeah, they start getting combined with uh, dashes and hyper dashes as well. And there's just a couple of massive slide of velocity sections thrown in for good measure. Everybody's it's doing super well. Very out. strong here, though. Everybody's hitting this. You know, this is the last big one. You see a miss from Gurney, that's yeah, all. The only drop. Oh, and then there's a triple drop. Gotten talk of finishing up right there. We have Nacho L being the only person to come in with a 600 combo after that. Still yeah, holding so a full combo. Good news for Finland, knowing that they have a considerable advantage of about 80,000, but they have no combos remaining. Nacho L, the only person with a decent combo left over. So he's really going to be closing that gap right now. Lion going to be dropping though. That's going to be hampering Chile's efforts at coming back into this one. L no as well, following up. This is the second part of the map where you really want to build a combo before the very end. Usually you can get yourself to about 300 combo if you missed on that 560 part. Finland have over a 100,000 point lead here, all of their players at that 200 combo. Hatcho L with the 800, but unfortunately 
Score V2, meaning that once you're over 200, you're not getting any bonus score. More Here Wiggles coming in now. Can everyone keep their balance? This can very easily turn. You already and Nacho Ano and Lion all finding misses right there. Yeah, there was a double trade there between Yerti and uh, Line, but the drop from Nacho proving the difference maker. Curtsy dropping as well. Only forgotten Taco and Elden L with combos right now. Every time we see a drop, it's counteracted by someone on the opposing team. Huge number of drops towards the end. Only Elden all surviving, but it's not going to be enough. Assuming everyone survived, which I think they did, that is going to be a second point for Finland. They're still in touch. Pretty good pick from Finland, honestly. Mm, yeah, very consistent performance from them. Not a bad Nobody performance from Chile by any means. Like, Nacho with that 900 combo performed really well. But just, like, 500 combos from all players on the Finnish side, which at the beginning of the game is exactly what we said. If you can hold any kind of combo for a decent period of time here, then you're going to be raking in those points because your opponents will miss at some point. Yeah, and then Lion and LNL, they just couldn't find the combos. They couldn't build up over the past like 400 mark. None of them could get over it. It's going to be really punishing when you can't do that on that kind of map. So despite what the uh, bot is saying, I think this is Chile's pick next. Yep. Perhaps they'll opt for the remaining hidden, considering they did pretty well on mint tiers. Or maybe they'll opt to go for hard rock, considering Finland have banned Cyber Thunder Cider from that pool. I'm honestly not sure which picks they could go for. Yeah, there's nothing immediately jumping out as Daze? kind of an obvious selection. If I was them, I would pick Daze, but then, again, Cyber Thunder Cider was banned. Yeah, the remaining Nomad picks probably could go either way for both of these teams, so I think that's a risky pick for Chile, considering they know Finland are probably going to pick it for them anyway. If they feel super confident on Hidden, or that Finland will not perform well on Hidden, then uh, Doku Ringo to Cinderella is a good selection, which is what they go for, actually. They are going to pick out the third and final hidden map. Obviously, they think that Finland are pretty strong on Hard Rock in their own right, so maybe Hard Rock is still a little bit of a risk for them. You see Lion QDXZ subbing out. Bring him back in, let you go in. The US and Chile have like a little thing going on where we say, Oh, let you go in is the Chilean Zach, and then they say that Zach is the American let you go in. <laughs> Both of them very, very well known for playing hidden. Who came first, the Zach or the let you go in? I believe it was Zach, actually. Well, Zach's participating in his eighth catch World Cup. I think he's been in every single... Think. I think he's the only player that's been in every single one. That you are correct on. I know that. I'm not sure, sure if he's been, been around next. in the game for, like, longer than, oh, than Let You Grin. I but know. I know he has been in every single World Cup, which is pretty impressive. I know they're two of the most profound players in the history of catch playing for seems like almost a decade it seems like i don't feel quite so old when uh, i hear that people have been playing this game for a decade oh, yeah. that's nice to know not that quite long yet <laughs> like, only been out how long i don't know maybe eight years it's been I'm not quite sure but people have been here for a long time elden l being another one of his names Yuri as well. See the first break is coming from Awesome and not Noksu 15. Yeah, two early misses on the side of Finland giving Chile an early advantage, but this is quite a long endurancey pick. 
very kind of consistently difficult throughout as Noxu seeing a second drop there. And a third, wow. Noxu just not getting the uh, the feel for this one at all by the, at the moment, it seems. I'm honestly quite surprised that Noxu is playing this. I don't remember him being a hidden player. I would have thought that Forgotten Taco would be playing this. Maybe it's a tactical rest for whatever they're planning to pick next as Eldenol finds the first drop on the side of Chile. And Lechuguin dropping on the side of Chile as well. That is going to bring the advantage very much back towards evens. I think Chile will still have the lead considering Noxu has missed a few times. Gonna be really close. I think it actually might even out. Like right on the dot. Yeah, everyone on Finland at that 200 combo mark now. Noxu has settled his uh, early difficulties, it seems. Got the feel for this one third rhythm. Awesome, you get a drop though, and Noxu as well, just as Finland looked like we're coming back into touch. Lechuguin is poised to take 200 combo and extend the Chilean advantage. Yerti with the double S for Finland, but it's not going to be enough on his own. He's matched by Chilean FC from Nacho L. I'm honestly quite surprised that Nacho L is doing the best on this map for the Chilean side. I would have assumed that Lechuguin and Eldenel would be the two better hidden players. Well, Let's go in, saw a couple drops there, and Nacho L has broken combo also. So Finland have a chance to come back into this one. Yerti, the only FC remaining. That yeah, gap is even. shrinking slowly. And you have a triple miss from Oscar, Nacho L, and Noksu. Yerti yeah, breaks he full finally combo finds and Elden Everyone now there's breaking. no combos left on the side of Finland, but there's no combos left on the side of Chile either with that electric win drop. This key is just training really back. tricky. Noxu missing right at the end of that jump section, unfortunately. Chile know they have the advantage, but it's not as big as they might have hoped it was. Only 50,000 points coming into the last quarter of the map. Awesome, going to be the first person to get back up to 200 combo. I think overall the combo advantage is just slightly in Chile's favor though. This Noxu just below 100 at present. But then Nacho L misses as soon as he gets to 200. That's the worst place to miss. And the gap is shrinking. It's very Will possible. Will there be enough time for Finland? Finland can't have a miss in this section. If they have one more miss, it's almost going to spell out a loss on this map. And Nacho going to drop. I will see me dropping as well, though. Everybody Nacho on the Chilean side There's no combos this. left for Chile. There's nothing left on the side of Chile. It's going to go back They're to the They're bringing Finland it back. Here. It's coming home. Let you go in dropping again. Finland are going to take this one. This is a break wow. point. They're at three all. Wow. That's twice now that Finland have broken a mod bracket pick from Chile. Three apiece. Just the two misses from Yerti. Great performance by him. But all around, Finland just able to keep that consistency just one notch higher. Three Yerti all. Didn't even have, Yerti didn't even miss any droplets either. He hit all those droplets. With some of the kind of the snaps and the hyper dash strength going on there, that is really impressive from him. Yeah, everybody else missed at least three droplets, so. Finland Very seems great. to be Winland. It's three apiece. I see what you did there. And Finland get to pick next. Oh, but Chile have to ban first. Let's not get too excited. Now, Chile have a very interesting position here because there's no hidden picks left. There's only one double time pick left. And one of the double time picks was a win and one of them was a ban for Chile. There's two hard rocks available. No hard rock has been played yet. Unless they feel very uncomfortable with best of my love, I think it suits Chile to ban out a no mod pick here, considering that it has been almost, well, it has been every pick so far for Finland. I think Finland, I don't know. Maybe Chile will ban something like Interlude. 
avoid some of the pixel jumps that can come from it. Because it seems like Elden Ring and Legend, they haven't been on point, and usually those two players are the players that you would want to have playing those kind of old style yeah. bar jump maps. Axiom Crisis is definitely very similar to Unconquered and World Vanquisher in terms of its kind of streamy, short nature, which has favored Chile thus far, even though Finland have picked it. Yep. Interlude is definitely more similar to uh, Chiro no Iro Akiro. They they're, gonna, they're, gonna, they're gonna ban Axiom Crisis, wow. That is the exact that opposite of what I was expecting from Chile. I was kind of expecting a little bit, because Chile, I think they believe that they're better than Finland. Like, they have a higher like potential, I think. They can do the harder maps, and I'd say that Axiom Crisis is one of the easier maps when you look at the rest of the maps. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I agree in a sense. Like, I figure that that is a pick Finland would definitely be going for, considering yeah. it's very similar to stuff they have already picked. But, but it's very similar to stuff they have already picked and yeah. lost on is the crucial difference, I think. I thought yeah. Chile would have felt that Finland are probably going to pick this and we can beat them on that, but obviously yeah. we're not, not, not quite so confident on that one. I don't know what Finland could go here. Maybe they go for How to Sakai and try to catch the Chilean team off guard. Maybe they're saying, hey, we memorized those jumps that happened in the map. They are a very strong hard rock team. I think the yeah. best of my love is definitely not something that Finland want to be tackling here, considering the, the Chilean strength on double time. Not that there are any slouches on that mod, regardless, but I feel like that will probably get picked for them by Chile towards yeah. the end of the match. It's gonna be days. Oh baby. I think Let's this days. one is gonna be very, very close. It's all gonna come down to who misses the least, honestly. Several parts in this map that you just miss flat out, right? It's only about 700 combo too, I believe. Maybe even 600, so it's not too long. Yeah, it's just under 700. Yeah. Which is quite a lot for a, a map of this length only being TV size at one and a half minutes, but this one is going to be fast and furious. We could see lots of misses quite very quickly one after the other that will swing the score. And I think this is a pick that we were all very surprised to even see in this pool, so yeah, hopefully the players are prepared thoroughly for it. I mean, it might make a little bit of sense because, you know, these players have played this map before. It's not their first time playing Days with Hard Rock, you know. All of them have probably played it before at least a couple of times. One of the older maps, known that you catch the beat scene. Usually one of the first maps that you kind of try to go for is like, I want to FC a hard map with Hard Rock. So maybe that's why they put it in there. Who knows. But anyways, it's here. So we're seeing the first clash of hard rock between these two teams, which are traditionally great hard rock players. Believe but it's three apiece. First time, right? I'm surprised that Iriso hasn't been playing any of the double time picks as well. He's really well we've only seen the, uh, the one, obviously, because uh, Chile picked one and banned the other. Yeah. Maybe we'll see uh, the Yasuda Ray map a little later in this match. All right, how many people do you think are going to miss on this intro? This intro is so notorious for catching people off guard. It's surprisingly difficult. My money is on two misses in the first 40 combo. Well, I'll go big or go home. There's going to be three misses. Oh, one of those guys. I see how One of is. these guys, yep. I'm getting I'll just my one up you. Early. <laughs> how about four misses? Everybody's gonna miss. That's seven seven misses. Oh, are we uh, remaking this one? Or did we just never like get into somebody it wasn't ready. This is what I see in the chat. We had an MP abort command thrown in. Panic over. A lot of the chat's saying three or four misses, it seems. Mostly three. Four misses. 
I mean, yeah, this pool is difficult, but these are some exceptionally talented players, so we'll have to see. Five misses? Who's going to be the one survivor in that case? Who's going to carry? I'd put it on either Austin or Yuri in that case. If I had to choose one person to hit it, I'd put Austin or Yuri. I don't know. Eldenal has been looking very strong so far this match and very sure. consistent as well. Not sure. Also had a very good performance as well. Getting We're talking right ourselves down now. Everyone's going to FC the whole map. Right? <laughs> I'd be super shocked. I don't know what I would do if everybody FC. That'd be blowing my mind. Everyone FCs gets the same score and we replay the map. Alright, we <laughs> actually all have to see the intro, so... Arisiel with the first drop of 70 combo, though. Very slender no, nobody was right. Finland. We were all completely wrong. These guys are too good for us. Everyone else Next approaching to the combo with no difficulty. Yep. Next hard part is around 300 combo where there's a few very far away but as you can see some of them happening right here. Then you're gonna yeah, have a vertical part. Yeah. It's a little bit on an easier section. See a vertical part coming in right about here. Very far away. Got and Taco missing there. Wow, yeah. that is surprising. I think that's one of awesome the farthest well. No combos left on the side of Finland. This is a huge advantage for Chile. Eldenel fails, I think. Yeah, Eldenel has failed. And this map is really difficult to recover on. It's about HP 8.5, I think. He needs to get a really good combo. He's almost there. I think he missed right before he got up, but now he's up. Okay, he's fine. See, Nacho still have an FC, though. Very impressive. But he got but caught he, up by the spin trap. Animated. Oh. I think this one's still gonna go to Chile. It might get really close. No, Austin misses at the end, so it's gonna go to Chile. Very close, but unfortunately, Finland just not able to capitalize on those misses from Chile. Nacho L maybe could have seen the FC there, but he got uh, he got greedy with the spinner. The spinner. Still getting over a million points on that one is pretty good. Forgotten Taco doing the same, even though not having a. Uh, particularly kind of impressive combo in terms of like not getting to like six seven hundred but yeah really good performance by all players there on that one like very few misses all across the board but chile will just about be taking this one four to three so that's unfortunate another break point goes the uh, the way of chile there so they get to pick next potentially going to see them to match point if they can take victory on this next one Now do we see that last double time. Hard Rock. Days felt maybe a little close for them to be immediately confident in picking the Amatsuki song. I think all these teams both these teams can just play any of the maps at this point. I believe Chile might have a slight advantage on Reversible Doll, but as far, as far as that, I don't know. I think teams are almost equal on every map, except for that one. Yeah, it's very difficult to pick now. There are no freebies. Um, interestingly, all of these maps that are left are so different from one another. But it is going to be How to Sakai Seifuku, the final Hard Rock pick. Chile deciding, like, hmm, we didn't think you were that hot on Hard Rock, so we're going to push that advantage. Taking that final Hard Rock pick off the table, looking to go to 5-3. If Finland can break here, this game is thrown so wide open. Somebody call Crowley. His map being played been banned in the first two matches, but we are seeing it here for the first time. Chile taking be... a little bit of a gamble, perhaps. Yeah, there's going to be two very, very far jumps that you just feel like they, these should be hyper dashes, you know, but they're very far. I feel like that's going to be the big parts of players miss. If any of you watched last week matches, there was a hard rock map called Colors. This is 
pretty much like that map, except one, it's longer, two, it's harder, three, it has harder jumps. Yeah, you see Yurdy in the chat saying, impossible jump at 380. That's one of the jumps I was talking about. It's almost impossible. I don't know anyone who's hit it yet, consistently. Well, we'll be watching out for that one then. Yep. There he is. He's here. He's in the chat. Crowley's hyping. I'm surprised he's in this. He should be going to bed. It's yeah, isn't it like 2 a.m. for you, dude? I think so. Impressed. <laughs> Now that his map's been picked, he can go to bed. Hmm. He's waiting all he these hours. He sit, sit through this one and see how many lives it claims. Oh boy. And Juicy with the subscription. Thank you very much for the subscription. Please uh, do enjoy your new OS badge and uh, your emotes. Use them well. Very kind of you. Hope you're enjoying the stream. You know, JD, what did you have? Fabulous community. What did you have on your pickums for this match? Six two to Chile. So Finland are uh, outdoing me. I thought that double time would be a lot kind of more dominant for for Chile, and yeah. uh, like the other kind of mods would go kind of fifty fifty. You know, but, that's uh, exactly Finland looking very strong. It's the same prediction I had. Our predictions are kind of fairly similar. Very consistent. We we got the same stats. Uh, obviously, we're working off the same same ideas. Don't but tell uh, me. yeah, sorry. Don't tell me you also predicted 6-0 on Hong Kong over UK. Uh, I wish I could have predicted some more points for us, but yeah, sorry, I didn't have much faith in us taking anything out of that game. Damn. So we've had three of the same predictions so far because we I also had the same prediction as you on the last match too. Six get out! Two. Get out my head, dude. You're in my head, what are you talking Make about? Make your own pickums, dude, stop copying me! <laughs> I know you're sitting outside my window looking in. It's like, what is he picking? Okay, let's go. Joking over, back to serious business. See Lion QDXD opting for the hidden. A little surprising on this map, considering as we said, there was very far jumps, one being at 380, I believe you already said. Early drop there from Awesome, he had about 90 combo. Pretty uncharacteristic, I'd say, considering... Another as well, that's really problematic. I'd say Awesome was probably the most comfortable hit Hard Rock player on this team too. Considering he has so many number ones. I'm also surprised he's not playing with Hidden. Awesome really, really feeling the pressure here. A third miss yeah. now, just struggling to maintain any kind of combo. And you can see he's already 60,000 points down on the rest of the players in this match. That's a huge margin. He's just suffering, spending so much time at that low scoring combo. And another drop, but like only after he got to 100. Awesome, he's really struggling here. You know what time it is, JP Hyperion. It's 380 combo time. Where is it? There it is, everybody! Everyone else misses, but Eldon will take it. That jump is just so brutal. He's given his team a massive advantage with that one. They had a good advantage, obviously, already from the struggles that Awesome he seems to be having, but that has put the game, like, all well out of reach almost, even in the first third. 150,000 points the difference already. This is huge from Chile. And the thing is, you know all these players, they knew the jump was there too. All of them besides Awesome, he had a 380 combo so they could double L to L. He found a random miss. He that was a combo. very strange miss. Like, considering that he hit that 380 combo part as Nacho L drops again. Sometimes you do feel that way though, that when you, 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 when you know something is coming, you put yourself under so much pressure to catch it that, yeah. like, I don't know, it's just very... Nacho L dropping again. 
actually Ultimate might be bringing it back. Was, yeah, he is still doing a good job building his combo back up. Yeti holding a good combo as well. Forgotten Taco with a drop there. Lion's HP is very low. He must have missed quite a few times there, but he's building back nicely. Nacho dropping again. There aren't too many good combos left on the side of Chile. This is going to yeah. be brought back by Finland here. I believe all players just have to see the rest of this map, then it's going to be about equal. But Elden they won't, because Elden Elden drops and Nacho. Taco. Yeah, that's a double drop from Chile. That gap is going to be shrinking rapidly, and Finland, I think, are going to take this one. That's also he dropped right as Finland managed to this take the lead. There's going to be another one of those jumps, though. I believe another one of those same jumps is coming. You already oh, everyone. yeah, he drops, though. No. That's so unfortunate for Finland. There aren't Every many combos is. on the side of Chile to take advantage, apart from Elvenals. Finland needs a miss from Eldeno right about now. Doesn't look forthcoming though. Eldeno has looked complete. one of the best players in this pick. 99.8% accuracy. Was that a fail oh. from Awesome at the end? I don't think it would have made the difference, but... I think so. Just forgetting about that little stream at the end. I hope there's a warning in the description for that map about notes after the last spinner. All right, Crowley. You have two jobs. Fix that one very far edge, edge jump at 380 and put a warning in the description of your map. <laughs> Elden Hill said, told you 380 was easy. What a show off. What a great performance by him. A deserving uh, match point for Chile right now. Finland are able to pick next, so they'll be deciding what their uh, potential final pick can be. They've got to pick, win, and break Chile's final pick if they want to stay, stay in and take this one to a tiebreaker. They are going to be going back to double time, but this time it's Finland picking double time. Wow, interesting from Finland. They're deciding that this is now or never. Do or die situation for them. Yesterday's best of my love is going to be potentially the final selection here. As Finland tries...
Master he misses though. That's the it's best open. person that could have dropped on the side of Finland. Mine missed on the big wasn't though. holding the 200 combo. The gap is down to 25,000, and I think. It's kind of close. Yeah, line with the, the combo drop there as well. If everybody have sees from this point on, then it's going to be a win for Finland, I believe. Actually, will it? It's going to be close. Nacho with the drop. Though. It's going to drops back, two. But Yuri. Oh, it's going to be so close. The advantage is still just in the hands of Chile. Not sure Owen, you're and also gonna be trading back, but that's gonna be more advantage for the Chilean side because they have 200 combos. Awesome with the final misses again, sealing the deal it seems. Great performance by both teams, but that is gonna be a match victory for Chile. Six to three over Finland, but remember this was a winner's bracket encounter, so neither of these teams have yet been eliminated. Chile stay in the top side. Finland drop down to the loser's bracket where they will have a chance to compete next week. They are not out of the tournament yet. They will be facing the loser of the next match, I think, which is between Mexico and Poland, which will be coming up very shortly. Congratulations to the victors, Chile. Commiserations to Finland, who were more than uh, worthy competitors in this one, putting on a great performance and taking them all the way. So that concludes match three of eight in our quarterfinal block. Another three matches coming up today and uh, two tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. You're correct. Next up, very soon, we will have Poland versus Mexico, which is a uh, loser's bracket encounter. As I said, the winner of that match will face Finland next week. Then we'll have Sweden versus Brazil from the loser's bracket. Um, and then a little break towards the later end of the evening where the United States, your boys, Chicken Bible, will take oh, on a fairly scary looking France, I think it has to be said. Yeah, they're going to be very, very powerful. But anyway, we have 10 minutes to spare, so we'll take a short break. Uh, you are more than welcome to do so as well. Everyone in Twitch truck, grab yourself some drinks, some snacks. A little bit of stretch if the sun is shining near you to uh, catch a little bit of fresh air and we will be right back with you.
Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Catch World Cup. Dolan here, joined by Chicken Bible. Hello, hello. I'm back again. Two matches in a row. He's back again. And we've got another match for you. This one, I think, is going to be one of the more sp potentially spicy losers bracket matchups. We've got Poland taking on Mexico, a team that Andrew knows a little bit, a little something about. Just a little bit. A little bit. Poland coming off of a 6-1 loss to France in the round of 16. Mexico coming off of a 6-4 loss to the United States in the round of 16. I think after last performance, there may be a lot of hype around Mexico, and for good reason. But I hope that I hope that it's not like an overhype in a sense that Poland is going to lose by a significant margin. This Polish team is very good. Yeah, I don't think that Poland will lose by a significant margin. I think... They're strong enough to put up a pretty good fight against Mexico. I, I genuinely think this is going to be the closest match of the weekend. I think this is going to be closer than a potential U.S.-France. As a I think, potential. I think this this match could go to tiebreak. In, in all honesty, like either team could re realistically win this. Yeah, I think it honestly depends on whether Poland has all of their players. I believe last week they were missing Letuszek, who is probably yeah, the strongest player on the Poland side. Yeah, big part of that roster. So I mean, even, uh, you even know some of these members on the Polish team because uh, in the CWC scrims we kind of did, you guys got to play against Poland. Oh, yeah. I and they tested that. out players like Rawaj, Jumper, were all a part of that. We've got Cosmic Bobber, Standard Core, Skylia, and Lehu. You know, just strong players. And then the Mexican team, we know a lot about them. Cowboy, Daxaraz, Casho, CX Lucha. Delic. Lot of good players there. You know, I don't see Lechu. Could this be foreshadowing that he's not here for the match? If he's not here for the warm-up? Or are they hiding him? For the sake of a meme? Dude, that'd be great. Comes in on the last match. It's 5-0. to zero. Reverse back, sweep. Lechu. Reverse sweep. We were hiding him all along. Ah. Uh, I think this is a Polish warm-up. I'm just gonna guess. Ah, uh, Polska. I think you are correct. Huh. Nah, this is Mexico's warm-up. Yeah. See, they even said Poland is gone. That's Mexico's warm-up for sure. Yeah, they're taunting. This is a taunt. This is clear BM. Dude, imagine, though, if it actually was the Mexico warm-up. That'd be that, the greatest BM. That would be amazing. I'm really excited to see this match because the hard rock battle between these two teams is going to be intense. Oh, yeah. I actually I mean, don't know which team has the advantage on that. Yeah, because, I mean, you know, Poland's best mod is hard rock. Mexico is very good at hard rock as well. It's going to be a it's going to be a pretty important part of this match. Both I think he's the strongest mod in hard rock, actually. Yeah. I don't think we're going to see double time played a lot. I think Mexico will pick it. Mexico might pick double time once. They have some very good double time players as well as Hard Rock. They kind of mix it to two a little bit. Something I'm pretty interested to see is will hitting get played? Because I don't think these two teams are that much yeah, hitting. That's, that's what I was just thinking about. Because I know Mexico's not that fond of hitting it, and I know Poland doesn't just play a lot of hitting in particular. So we, we just flat out might not see hidden at all this match until late if it gets closed. Yeah, I actually wonder if it will even get banned. Maybe it just won't get banned because both teams think none of us can play it, so why should I ban it, you know? Right. Like, they're not going to pick it even if I ban it. You know, 
know, I see this background and I just see the crab one. Where is Crab Rave? I've been waiting this whole time, Dolan. I want For my Crab, crab Rave. Rave. Yeah. I see the, the crab, just... I don't hear the song. <laughs> it's Monkey S, bro. This man just wants a good Crab Rave meme. Oh my. <laughs> Alright. We're cutting it right here. Oh wait. It's in oh wait. <laughs> We got bamboozled. The remix. Chica speaks Polish. Hmm. Wait, Mexico's losing their own warm up, Andrew? Oh no. Oh no. They just overlaid the Chica beat. <laughs> What have they that, done? Okay, that's a pretty good meme. I'm not gonna lie. I just noticed the Chica in the top left corner, too. Yeah. <laughs> I just noticed that. Wait a second. Isn't this remix with the Nomad Hollowings map? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> This this is a really good warm up. Like honestly, we, we may have to start talking about you know me more up of the year. I think this one's up there. I agree with you on that. If they have a crab wave, I'm definitely putting it up there. They need a crab wave. Or or is the meme just like they have crabs in the background but no crab wave? Oh, that'd be so bad. I would give them negative points for no, that. No, no, but if you think about it, it'd be a great debate. It would, but it would make me mad. <laughs> Beautiful yelling. Ooh. I don't even know what this is anymore. It's going pretty hard, man. I want to hear a Dolan color cover of this. Full MP3. <laughs> no. Aww. No crab rave. That's minus two points from me. <laughs> oh, no. Poland losing points already. Oh, Mexico's warm up. Oh, the flood. It's mapped by Cowboy. Isn't this super long, too? Like, yeah, it's 415. Oh, my goodness. Two long warm ups from both teams. All right, we're going to be here a while. <sighs> Wake me when the warm ups are over. True. And this is a really popular map, though, I know, in Standard as well. See my boy Wan Jay in the chat saying it's a good map. I'll have to believe him. He knows what he's talking about for the most part. Interesting. Looks like we're getting we're gonna see Jumper come on in for a warm up, as well as Rawaj. I'm really looking forward to this match though. Like this, this honestly, if US France wasn't a thing, this would probably be match of the weekend. Oh, yeah, definitely agree with you. Even then, this <laughs> yeah. still might be. 
Yeah, it's, it still might be. Yeah, definitely has potential. Like, if this was the winner's bracket instead of the loser's bracket, it would be so much more important, too. These are some really good teams. See, actually, two hard rocks. One coming in from Mirage and one from Daxalaz. Daxalaz popped to put it on the hidden as well. Six Lucia. Just hidden. No hard rock on. All right, let's see this warm up, Mexico. So if you're just tuning in, you're catching the warm-ups here for Poland and Mexico, Finland and Chile. Our first winner's bracket matchup wrapped up just before this. Chile taking the win 6-3 over the Finns. So Chile are our first team uh, that have clinched a spot in finals week. Guaranteed top six for them. And the winner of this match between Poland and Mexico will face Finland in the second round of the loser's bracket next week. Right now, Casho's still with the SS. Skylia has some pretty good accuracy too. Daxara is still holding a pretty significant hidden hard rock combo. That's, that's a pretty good combo. Hey, he really out there catching these fruits. And, and okay, well, it, it was impressive. <laughs> Bit of a tight wheel section. Oh my goodness. The Casho's here still with the SS. Honestly, the consistency of some of these Mexican players is getting like pretty scary. Yeah, Daxos is one of those players that, although he's not super high in rank, his hard rock skill is like up there with the best players. He has a lot of scores that are just one misses on, like, image of Taylor Hard Rock and some other crazy scores. Even though his rank can only be about 80, I don't know exactly. Okay, Casho finally giving up the SS. However, this is still just warm-ups. These guys are going at it pretty hard. And that looks like it's going to conclude the warm-ups here, coming into our final section. So we're finally going to get to see rolls and bands from these two teams, Poland and Mexico. We expect a fierce battle in hard rock between these two. We expect these teams to shy away from hidden. And Mexico may be the slight advantage on DT here. Yeah. But I think on hard rock and Noma, it's going to be pretty close. Definitely. Hard rock and Noma, I think, are going to be the focus points for the Polish side. Try to sneak a few points on those. Well, all right, that's gonna wrap up the warm ups there. Nice map. Great song. Only 16 misses from Dax Ross. Wow. That's, that's actually incredible. Yeah. With. Hidden Hard Rock, that's pretty insane.
So here we go. Poland is going to be winning this roll 61 to 55. Pretty close roll. Mexico's instantly going to ban Lissophide. What FD match would be? Have to yep. ban that map. Four times in a row now. Yeah, that, that map has not been liked well. It seems like nobody wants to play that. He's just like, get out of here. We don't want to play that. And then look at this. How to Sekai also getting the ban. The Crowley map, which we did get to see play. Um, we did see play last match, but that makes it three of four for now. Every team banning similar maps, it seems. Wow, that was a very first, very fast first pick from Reversible Doll. Inside that's Polish team. Yeah, Poland instantly diving head first here into the Nomad. Now they may be a little bit wary of even Hard Rock because they know Mexico are pretty good at Hard Rock. So they're going to dive right into Nomad. We're going to see Bobber, Darkness, Skylia, and Jumper. always seems to be like a team in catch the beat they always seem to be a team that on paper they're so much they're they're good but they just they don't just, show up they just haven't been able to show up in tournaments and partially that's due to the fact that in the past two world cups round of 16 they were drawn with china which that's kind yeah. of like you know it's still lost and then they were drawn with france this year they've never gotten a lucky position in the bracket like shafted kind of like you switch Poland and Finland on the bracket for round 16 Poland I'm pretty sure could actually stand a chance and yeah. maybe doing some damage to Chile I don't think they'll win that match but I think they would definitely uh, be able to contend in a match like that but unfortunately the bracket is not kind yeah here we are in the loser's bracket, playing versus Mexico. One of the strongest teams in the loser's bracket, along with Hong Kong. And also, the winner of this has to play Finland. Yeah, true. So, on a semifinals map pool, that's not going to be any easier for either of these teams. You know, I have to give the slight advantage on this map to Mexico. I believe they have the stronger players who can do, you know, the more difficult maps like this one. Mexico's no best best World Cup finish was actually in 2017 when they placed 7 to 8 with Netherlands almost making it to finals week. Pretty far run. Yeah, a lot of people actually forget that Mexico made it that far into a World Cup. I for sure did. It's because they've always lost in round of 16 and have had to make the loser bracket run. So far, these teams are dead back. even. Yeah. Look at this. This Go is a dead time. Oh, oh, double miss. Skylia and Cowboy are going to trade. Seems so like Skylia missed a few more notes, though. Yeah, Skylia might have missed an extra note. So Mexico has a minuscule lead. Very easily can be offset with a spinner. Good spinner with two. Yeah, definitely. Jumper with the miss from Poland, though. Mexico will take... Their first advantage of the match. Skylia struggling. That was a bigger drop too. That was about four notes, I think, at least. But she's really not having a good time with this map. Trying to find the footing. You get it slightly off in some of these sections where you have to just hold dash and it's a wrap. But credit to Mexico. Only one miss here from Cowboy. Daxaros Casho. Putting it where Jumper will find another miss. They have double SS's on Dex on Casho. I think, honestly, Mexico are one of the, the teams to look out for this year. I think this year they will equal their... They could potentially equal their best World Cup run this year. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It's all about who they play in the loser's back. I think if we get a Mexico-Hong Kong matchup in the loser's back, that could go either way. It could be oh. really good. Yeah. 
That's super good. I mean, but look at this. What do you do against this? Daxaraz and Casio putting on a clinic, basically. They're just Jumper finds like another miss. Right as he gets to like 270. They're not missing. The thing is, Mexico's is not providing a single chance for Poland to even get in this match. Yeah, they only had one miss, and on a map this hard, it's pretty good. You gotta think, if Mexico play versus any other team besides USA, Korea, or China in the first round of round 16, they probably would have won. Yeah, they, they probably would have. They, they play any team besides like any of the top four countries, I think they actually stand a really good chance of winning that match. Yeah. That's why I think they could be, honestly, like a really good sleeper pick for finals week. Bobber is going to Bobber, fight breaking game. the only full combo on the Poland side. An impressive run from him. He gives up the FC right at the end here. But Jumper's going to miss him. Mexico is going to hang on here. Daxaraz still rocking the SS. Casio still the FC. Cowboy a one miss. A uh, one two miss misses. Mexico. Oh. Three, my bad. Yeah, three. Wow. Three total Very misses from Mexico. Mexico is scary, folks. I don't know if you've paid attention to this team called Mexico, but this is the team that almost beat the U.S. last week. They're just a little good. They're just slightly good. You know, Which I is saw really a lot crazy of because everybody wrote Mexico off the second that they didn't see Panchiwi's name on that list. Yeah. Exactly. You know, even last week, a lot of people were saying, wow, USA must be doing really badly if they only won 6-4 versus Mexico. And yeah. We're just like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> they did really good. <laughs> it wasn't that USA was choking. It was USA's like, oh, hey. These guys are good. <laughs> hey, these, these point differentials are really close. <laughs> Here we see the first picks of the Mexican side. Days. And Mexico diving headfirst into hard rock. So Poland had the work cut out for them, but so did Mexico. I mean, Poland's hard rock is no joke. Yeah, this is a mod that we thought would be very highly contested between the two teams. And also, if Poland is missing Lechuczek, that, then that's just very unfortunate. Seems like it might be that way. Because if Lechu is here, he's definitely playing this. But it doesn't look like it. I wonder what's happened to him if he hasn't played this match or the last one. Yeah. But that's really unfortunate for Poland if he isn't here. Because they could really use him. Dolan, what is your guesses on the amount of misses in the first 40 combo? I guess two, JBI Hyperion gets three in our last match, but there is none. What do you guess on this time? On this, I'm gonna go with... Two. Right, I'm gonna take a hot take and go with four. Ooh. Big risk. Look who is gone, Crab. Oh, so that's why the Polish Wamba had Crab Rave in it. Yeah.
Poland could put out right now. Cosmet, Skylia, and Bobber of Darkness. Some of the best players in Poland. They're taking on Lucha, Daxaraz, and Casio. Cosmet making his first appearance in the match and his first miss. Right before the 200 mark. Yeah, so a miss from Mexico is going to be a little bit more punishing than that single miss from Cosmet. If they find one in anywhere coming up. But Mexico will enjoy the lead at the moment. As Cosmet recovers his combo. Mexican players are playing so consistent. Yeah, they're just very good. They're not going to miss like these really simple patterns, you know, that most people would miss on because of nerves. Daxaraz and Casho with SS's. CX Lucha, the only player without a double S on Mexico, but he's only found about one or two droplet misses. Poland's still hanging tough. Bobber Skyly is still there. Yeah, everyone is doing pretty good. Coming into the hard part now, though. And again, this is where it's going to really matter. If Mexico miss and Poland hold, Poland have a shot at taking the lead. Because of the timing of Cosmos miss. But Skylia will be the next one to miss. It's caught out there. Cosmet again. And Lucha will miss as well. Bobber as well. All of Poland is down. And Daxaraz and Casio stand tall. Wow. Still two FCs on the side of Mexico still. Made it through that incredible difficulty spike. We'll see if they can finish this map off. Already an impressive performance in Mexico. Might be on the verge of closing this one out. I think it's Poland are recovering quite well and quite fast. Yeah, it's not like Poland is doing really bad or anything. It's just that Mexico is just completely shutting them out, not giving them yeah. any chances. Skylia down. Yet again, Bobber will follow suit. Like, look at this. Double FCs from Kasho and Daxmas is going to be, I think. Yeah, Cosmet will complete the cycle. Casio will fall. Daxaraz will fall so right well. before rip the FCs. There goes the curse containing on point today. Oh, man. 3 0 Mexico, but oh. The double FC dream severely ended. And now Mexico lead. Mexico lead 3-0. The pick going over to Mexico as well, too. After Poland get a ban. So Poland have a chance now to, to knock out just anything. And they, they honestly may want to knock out um, a potential either a double time or a hard rock, I would say. I would probably knock out Cyber Thundersider. Pretty good one. It's a pretty hard one. Honestly, Poland may want to try to turn towards hidden. Considering the fact that Mexico is wary of it. Even though Poland's not doesn't specialize in hidden, it's still the mod that Mexico is the most uncomfortable with. So that honestly may be. Uh, maybe Poland's best chance to get a point. We'll have to wait and see. We hope you're doing well, Twitch chat. Reminder, winner of this match will play Finland next week in the loser bracket. The loser is going home. And it looks like they are going to target Sunder, uh, Cyber Thunder Cider. Mexico, honestly, one of the most underrated teams this year. We're definitely going to be keeping our eye on Mexico in the loser's bracket. They're definitely going to be one of the most dangerous teams to play against. 
But they're going to pick DT on the Heavenly Blue. So Mexico, the slight advantage here on double time. It's going to be Cosmet, Rawaj, and Skylia for the poles. Poland just need to need something. Really, you just need anything to try to stop this momentum because Mexico going on three nothing, going on four nothing right now. It's going to be almost impossible for Poland to get back into it if they allow Mexico to get just another point. Is really going to be a huge mental blow. Looking pretty hard for for Poland right now. <laughs> we have a one, guys. Oh yeah, we do. I am here. Oh, That's all baby. I will say. No one's safe from the curses. Oh yes. I mean, I'm here to help Poland this time, right? Let, let's talk about Mexico a little let's, bit. Let's, let's talk about these players. Yeah, I mean, I, I know Mexico a little bit, I have to say. I hosted a catch tournaments before for the Spanish community, like way long time ago, like 2014, 2015. And I recognize some of these players still, like they are big veterans. Daxeros, CX Lucha, those two, like the old gods of, uh, of Mexico. Yeah, they're honestly one of the scariest teams in the tournament right now. I'll admit that I was on the, on the side of thinking that Mexico was a bit weak because they didn't have Ponchi. But man, they have been proving me wrong. <laughs> yeah, they said, all right, let's just... Let's just prove everyone wrong real quick. So on to Heavenly Blue. It's gonna look fairly good for Mexico here, I believe. Although, it's a new mod. We haven't seen this before in this matchup. Also, I honestly don't know how good Poland's DT is this year. Compared to how they played in the past. But so far, they're playing actually... Not too bad, aside from Rawaj's accuracy down to 99. He's still holding combo, despite the low act. Makes it through the div spike as well. All players still holding FCs here too. Is it nice. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> Good job. As soon yeah. as I come back, Man, Dazerox and Cowboy both assessing every single time. What are these guys doing? Rawaj, the uh, only player to miss. He's missed twice. Still everyone else holding FCs. That's kind of impressive, actually. Oh, Cowboy, big drop. He failed. Hey, it worked. Well, hey, it like, worked. I want to do this too. This sounds fun. Yeah, but despite the drop from Cowboy, Mexico still leading. You have Daxaraz on a near SS along with CX Lucha. Those are the same axe, same score, basically. Oh, yeah, but they're equal on combo now. Like, as soon as uh, Cowboy hits the 200 combo cap, this should be quite close. Okay, it's not, but yeah, Raja... 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 Rewash. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that. Yo, the, oh, the guy <laughs> that just missed? Yeah, that. Oh. That, that that as yeah, well. That's who we're talking about. Watch this. I mean, have the game understood guy? the way I pronounced the name because he missed. Have you I seen guess. this guy named Daxaraz here? Like the guy oh, who's God. on the 99.87. No, I would I never. Full combo. He's Daxaraz. He can't miss. I think the problem is that you're pronouncing it wrong. Probably like it's oh. Daxaraz. Da oh, Daxaraz. I mean, I always pronounce it like Daxaraz, and I never got. We never oh, said it. Got about you, Cosmic. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, oh. Skylia! Skylia held on with Skylia Cowboy. Cowboy. Skylia yeah. Cowboy are the only two to actually make it through that. Rawaj with another miss. He takes that match to actually if Cowboy Cowboy to lose had, Oh, if Cowboy dropped, Poland would have had something. Still like, quite far away, though. Yeah. This play by Skylia, though, is insane. 
dude, she's she's really good at this game. Wait. Cowboy. That's a miss from Cowboy. Oh no, that one miss from Bullet. Oh no. That's gonna be very difficult. That's that's an F, that's Chief. Good. That's it. But what a play from Skylia. <laughs> But it's going to be Mexico going up 4 nothing. Skylia will get the FC. Man. Look at that miscount. The only Zero. miscount I'm seeing is Wawash. 17 misses us quite a bit. Yeah. Combine all the Mexican misses us even less than 17. So that's a bit of a rough point for the side of Poland on that pick. Yeah, unfortunate really, but man, I mean, Dax Raz and, and Cowboy kind of really held it, and even CX Lucia, they kind of held it down for so long that they kind of built up just a yeah. lead and they just went with Poland it. not able to flip it, despite the uh, FC from Skylia. And that's going to make it 4 nothing. Oh, we're going to this one. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite maps in the map. Hollow Wings. This is hidden, right? No, wait. No, wait. There's no nope, mod. No mod. No mod. Yes, yeah, no mod. Why? Why do I think it was hidden? Super hard for hidden. I think there's only yeah. three FCs on hidden. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, this is a no mod convert. I think Lexi, Rampage, and I think that's the only two hidden FCs. I know Xgon has a hidden hard rock, I believe, or a hard rock. I'm not sure. You know, fun, fun fact about this map. Back when Xgon was still active, he had six S ranks, right? This was one of the S ranks that he could not overdo because it was just that hard to FC or SS with hidden hard rock. Wow. And you fun know what Xgon can't do it. That's hard. Even though, of course, it's with hard rock or hidden hard rock, you know, still very hard. Skyly's saying we need to win. There's still crazy bus left to be played as a warm up. <laughs> Poland's like, we can't lose. We've got warm ups left to play. But my warm ups. That is unfortunate. Well, all right, Poland, get that reverse sweep on so we can see it next week. Hey, there's still one more map that Mexico can win without winning the whole match. Not a reverse sweep just yet. Nah, let's just do it now. Yeah. 6-4 Poland. Script has been leaked. Script has been leaked. <laughs> But it's going to be Jumper, Skyla, and Bobber for the Polish, and Daxeros, Cowboy, and Casio for Mexico. Jumper early miss. You know, I'm just thinking to myself, there's no way that the Mexican team can even be consistent on this pick, too. Being consistent on this is so hard to do. Not even the top teams like Korea or China or USA can be very consistent on this map reliably, so... If I see even one FC, I'm gonna be surprised. Yeah, there's another miss from Bobber there. So Jumper and Bobber finding some early trouble for Poland, but so far, awful combos for Mexico. And as I say that, Casho will find a miss. Look at you, Dawn. We're back. Point today. We're back. But it's still gonna be a Mexican advantage. Two FCs to one. Oh, and there goes the 1FC from Poland. Yeah, I was on a bit of a far jump right there. So Skylia down. It's only Daxaraz and Cowboy remaining in the FC department. And then Mexico pulling away as Casho back up to 200. Here we come into the wiggle part. Probably one of the hardest part of the maps. Oh, they all nailed the first Hitting one. Hitting the first one. 
Casho, Cowboy, Jumper, and Skylia. It's Bobber and Daxaraz who are through. That was a whole lot. Daxaraz Daxaraz again. Misses right there. Bobber is still holding on to that combo. Bobber is actually putting in work. And again, as we've said, this is one of those maps where you build like four or five hundred combo and you are able to hold it for a while. You run away with the score. It is quite possible. But Bobber is going to finally give it up. Daxaraz and Kasha will also miss. Super unfortunate because he had the only combo on this team. That was like the saving grace for them right there. But actually, Poland, I think, still might be in this. They have a slight combo advantage. It all depends on how well they can do on the ending. Yeah, that's that's it's going to come down to the ending. But Poland actually right now have a slight combo advantage. Now everybody back at 200. So Mexico with the lead. Poland now wait for a miss from Mexico. Will any player show it? Here we go into the second difficult part of the map. Daxaros has been finding several misses here, but this is a really hard map. Oh, Jumper, Skylia, Bobber, and Daxaros. Oh. Everybody but Cashew and Cowboy. Mexico still has the combos. Oh, and they double they miss. Now, can I think the gap is a bit too big though. Can any Polish player build combo and pull it back? They have to have a oh, fail. Oh, Skylia was think. building something. It was at 120, but no. And that's going to go to Mexico 5 0. Definitely. Right, now there. the reverse sweep is coming. Now, now the reverse the sweep is nil. on. There we go. Now the reverse sweep is on. Well, their backs, their backs are certainly against the wall here. Now Mexico have the pick here on match point. I don't think, I don't think everyone expected a sweep here or a potential a 5-0 situation with Mexico up. But then again, it's unfortunate because I think most of us thought Leku would be here. Yeah. Big he's such a big part. Board. Yeah, he's such a big part of this team. Even if they had Leku, I think this would still be a very similar match. Quite yeah, honestly. Yeah, I mean, Poland, I think, would have a few points on the board, but it would still be kind of rough. Yeah, I honestly think they'd have... Maybe they'd have one or two points, but Mexico's just been so strong. Endless ripples coming out from Mexico. Cowboy just says, we pick sadness. Skylaya says, you're supposed to pick a map, not describe my life. Oh my goodness. That's pretty brutal, man. Man, that would be a match the chat keeps describing. Chile versus Mexico. That would be a match with these two teams. You know, would we have that if Chile loses next week? I'm not sure. Oh, wait a minute. I actually think that Chile would play versus Hong Kong in that situation. If Hong Kong goes on. Yeah. They would not meet until the loser's semifinal. Until, like, the third, fourth place. If they the were to loser. meet of France USA plays versus Mexico if Mexico wins their next next match after this. So I think Ooh. that's how it would go. I don't want to play versus Mexico again personally. There's so many scary teams this year. Super rough. It's like on one side of the loose bracket you got Mexico, the other side of the loose bracket you got Hong Kong. <laughs> well yeah, but that's on the top six. Like any team on the on the winners bracket already, like Chile, who already made it to top six, will not be facing Mexico until finals weekend. And oh, yeah. for that, Mexico has to reach the finals weekend. So they could definitely. Do I think it. 
I think a Chile versus Mexico scenario is kind of unlikely, but yeah. it could happen in top four. I think it's the earliest point it can happen. Well, Cowboy and Skyly are going to trade misses here on this op on this DT pick here in the intro. Slight advantage for Mexico. These drops on this map are just so brutal. Ooh, CX Lucha gets caught out there as well as there Cowboy. And here's a chance for Poland to get on the board. Cosmet will find a miss though. Bobber Darkness is the only FC for Poland. Daxara is the only FC for Mexico. They're one v one Point so far. Yeah, this is definitely the closest point so far as we head into the second half of the map. Can Poland hold on? You gotta be thinking on the side of Poland. Just, just give me one point. One point. No sweep. Poland are looking One point? to This is reverse sweep. Oh, oh, Bobber with a big miss here. I don't think they want to reverse sweep anymore, Juan. I'm sorry about that one. Cosmet and Skylia trying to hold on and keep Poland ahead. It's going to get really oh, close. Close. It's going to be getting really close. This ending is super long. I think it's going to Down to the wire. Out. Mexico oh, flip man. it. And Mexico. There's a spinner, I think, right? Is there a spinner? There's, yeah, a, there's spinner a spinner at the end. And Mexico oh. have sent Poland home. 6-0 clean sweep. That was a close one. Wow. So unfortunate. Bobby of Darkness missed at the very end. Same with Skylia. They both missed, both missed right at the end. Oh, that was about 4,000 points. But unfortunately for Poland, that is how they will exit the World Cup. At least they put up a fight on their last point. Mexico are through. And they will face Finland, the only confirmed matchup that we now know of next week. Mexico will play Finland in the loser's bracket. Well played, all teams. Poland are going to go home. The third team to be eliminated this weekend alongside the United Kingdom and the Netherlands. Man, that matchup for next week, though, is going to be super great. And I don't think Finland like anything that they just saw. They don't... Oh, yeah. Mexico are looking absolutely terrifying. Any team that can 6-0 Poland on a quarterfinals map pool is pretty decent. <laughs> That's Just... scary. So there's the bracket getting a good look at it. As it's slowly going to fill up by the end of this weekend. But that is going to do it for now. Coming up next is going to be another Losers Bracket encounter. Our final one of the weekend. It is going to be Sweden against Brazil. The two unseeds remaining in the tournament will do battle. And unfortunately, one of them's got to go home. But that means we'll have an unseed in the top 12, Andrew. That's, I think, is that a first, actually? That, I think that might be. It's very surprising. Yeah, these are the two unseeds. And then after that, it's the big one of the day. USA, France. So you don't want to miss the next two matches coming up. Very interesting. And then we'll have Philippines, China, and Korea, Taiwan tomorrow. That's going to do it for now. We're going to go for about 30 minutes. Go ahead. Take a break. Get a drink. Get a snack. Tell a friend what's going on. You know. And we'll be back. Well, at least somebody else will be. I won't be casting it. Oh, I won't be either, I don't think. Well, anyway, we thank you for watching. Chicken Bible, as always, lovely casting with you. You too, Nolan. It's always a pleasure. A pleasure. All right, guys. Well, we will catch you all on the next match in 35 minutes. Sweden against Brazil. Battle of the Unseeds. We'll see you next time.
Something makes me feel numb. I just want to find someone. Feeling lost and out of place. Empty eyes look upon my face. Nowhere to go, nowhere to run. I just want
Let's go to see the stars and the moon I fly far into space as long as I am with you The light in my bright eyes when you're near The fluttering I feel in my chest when you are here I can't explain this kind of love It pulls me to you, I want it, I can't get enough So share this precious light with me Just take my hand and let's enjoy the things that we'll see
Well, hello, everybody. Wakey, wakey. It's time for some more Oscatch World Cup. Dolan here, joined by Elux. Sweden and Brazil, Battle of the Unseeds. You ready, Jay? Oh, you know, man, I was born ready for this. So we've got the two unseeds that advanced from the group stage, Sweden and Brazil, going head-to-head -head in the loser's bracket. And this will mean that for the first time ever, I think, uh, in Catch World Cup history, we're going to have an unseed place in the top 12. I think that's correct. I do believe you are correct on that, Golan. Question is, will it be Sweden or Brazil? So Sweden, Satomi, Dadapada, Yukitero Romano, Austin, Aceon, Coco, Sunshine, Brazil, Panic, Super Choke, Taishi, Predominator, Ex Nando, and Overdose. These are two veteran teams, and I think that really kind of explains why these were the two unseeds that advanced. These teams have been around quite a while. Veteran players, just not exactly farmers, but really solid tournament players. Definitely these captains know each other quite well and have been the longtime captains for their countries. So, Jay, what, do you, what are your thoughts when you see Sweden and Brazil playing against each other? Oh, man. Both teams are really, really amazing at what they do. I mean, we've seen how dominant Sweden has been in the group stages, and a round of 16 match was nothing to shrug off as well. Yeah, so looking at these pre the previous results for these teams, Finland, uh, Sweden lost to Finland 6-3, and Brazil lost to Chile 6-1. Those are the round of 16 results for these teams. And now it's win or go home. Unfortunately, we gotta say bye to one of them. But on the pick'em challenge, it is 61% in favor of Sweden. So the people favoring Sweden, but not by too much. Brazil still definitely has picks in this pool. But on a harder map pool, I don't really know which team is gonna stand out because I don't think that they have really like complete three-man lineups for everything. So it just may be who struggles less, literally. Now, Dolan, you're going to be a little mad at me on this, but I completely forgot to fill in my pick -em for this week. Oh, no. Completely forgot. And I was really? actually starting to move up on the leaderboards as well. I think I was at around i i was at least top 50 i was coming back from that last place that i was in but now, now there is no hope for me to win you given up i have given up i've thrown in the towel he, he's throwing the towel on the pickums where were you on the pickums leader i want to find you now uh after oh, there you were you were 57 yeah, after groups, I was dead last because <laughs> I predicted way too many upsets for my own good. Then I climbed back up to 57. Ah, uh, the pick'em challenges. Yeah, I was hoping to get a. I was hoping to get a cheeky win on group stages by predicting mass amounts of upsets, but uh, like usual, never happens. Well, these two teams are the two teams that probably have wrecked the most amount of pickums in the tournament, being that they are the two unseeds to advance from group stage. So Dolan, what are your thoughts on this? Who do you think's gonna win? As much as I love Brazil, I don't envy their position here against Sweden. I think Sweden are just a slightly better team. I don't think Sweden's gonna have an easy time dealing with Brazil, but I think that the score could, I think the score could honestly range anywhere between like a 6-2 to like a 6-4. I think actually either team does have a realistic shot of winning, but I would favor Sweden. Yeah, I'm more on the side of Sweden myself right now. As much as I would love to see Brazil win it, especially Hanek since AXS, but I just do not see it being an easy challenge for them. 
Yeah, no, I just think I think Brazil has far more in, uh, far more consistency issues than Sweden does. I think that's really we're at the point of the tournament where the map on the map pools where it's going to make a difference. You're playing hard map pools like this, and you're going to get torn apart if you're not consistent on them. Um, and unfortunately, I just don't think that bodes well for a team like Brazil. But I mean, for them though, they are facing another unseed, so that's why I say it's not over before the match started because Sweden also has a few problems too in their game. But I think that, I just think Sweden has more experience and doesn't suffer from those issues as much as Brazil does. Watch, we say all this now and Brazil is gonna win 6-0. Brazil like 6-0 Sweden. No, forget 6-0. They also play the tiebreaker in 7-0 them. Oh man. But chat, you gotta root for your team. Sweden, Brazil, let them know who you're rooting for. If you really love your team so much and you want to look awesome, consider buying a banner from the Oz store. $2.50. You can rep your favorite team on your profile. It looks schmexy and it stays for the duration of the tournament. Oh, thank you for the reminder on that, Dolan. I'm actually going to go buy my U.S. one right now. Ah, just in time for U.S. France later tonight. But here we go. So on another warm up here. We see Hannock throwing on the hidden. This man's insane. So, both teams starting up pretty well here with some early misses on this warm up. But oh man, oh man. Yuki Teru, though, hold on. Yuki Teru held combo for quite a while there. I finally ends up missing. Again, these are two teams that have been around the World Cup since it's been around. I mean, these players, these teams uh, have not seen significant like roster changes in a good long time. Oh, we see Hannick popping off there with the hidden S and he misses. Good job to see you're warming up that curse. Hey, you know, the players are warming up. We got to warm up, too. Yep. I mean, but you look at Hannah right now. He's actually, the hidden is pretty good. And, oh! <laughs> All right, we're both warmed up. Sorry, Hannah. It came at your expense. But it's just a warm-up, man. No hard feelings. Yeah. Besides... Ooh, that's actually rough. <laughs> Only see two types of warm-ups in CWC. Memes and try-hard warm-ups. We got AC on her right now. Finding triple digits. Yeah, you got your memes and your tryhards, man. But these maps do get you warmed up, man. It's it's a lot of activity on on the hands. But warm ups are gonna conclude. We're done here. Yep, you thought the players were actually gonna play the map pool? No, it was just a contest of the warm up. It's over. It's game over. All right, go home. Stream's over. We're going to get to roles and bands. So get your role predictions out in the chat. 
as we get a look at this map pool. So, again, I mean, the thing about Sweden and Brazil, though, is, like, aside from Brazil, like, Brazil, they do kind of lean towards hidden. I think Sweden kind of leaned a little more towards Hard Rock than other mods. 46 for Hanek and 35 for Satomi. So Brazil's going to take the win on the roll. Hey, no matter what, at the end of the day, if Brazil loses, they can still say they won the roll. Who's the real they, winner? They won huh? the roll. That's all that matters. I got a higher number than you. Beat that. So, all right, Sweden are going to be banning first. And they're going with the hidden one ban, the FD Fluorite. Map that's been banned every single match. And will Brazil follow suit with Hard Rock 1? That is the question. Will the Crowley map also get the ban? I think Brazil kind of have to. Where does Brazil go? I mean, they could go double time. But I don't think it would make that much sense considering just some of these hardware maps. Like, you gotta either ban, like, Hyper 2 Sekai or Cyber Thunder Sider. You can't just leave both of them sitting in the pool. No, if I was so, I would go for a hard rock map as well. And Cyber Thunder Sider, try saying that five times fast. Cyber, oh yeah, that's a tongue twister. That's definitely a tongue twister. Brazil taking some time here. Yukatero calling, stalling. He's yeah. Calling them out. Uh, but they really need to come through with their ban here, like. Vote ban, press F6 <laughs> for <it>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're going for a DT ban. They're banning sadness. They banned the depression. Brazil bans the depression. Suicide rates drop to zero percent. That would be nice. So what would you pick if you were Brazil right now, Dolan? Uh, hidden. 100% <laughs> hidden. If I'm Brazil, I'm jumping into that hidden pool. There we there go. There we go. Yeah. Especially the way that we've seen Sweden play the hidden pool so far. Well, it, I don't think it's so much as Sweden are bad. It's more that Brazil are just good. So, Dogaringo to Cinderella. Yep, Satomi figuring it was gonna be HD. <laughs> oh, I don't know God. what he's doing. Oh, God, Satomi, you're gonna make me feel bad for you now. <laughs> I believe Aceon is also formerly known as Damn Easy. So it looks like we're all set to go here on this opening pick, on this opening hidden map. The Battle of the Unseeds, Jay. The best of the rest. Battle of the Unseeds. The, not the heavyweight battle, but the, uh, the felterweight bout. Yeah, the flyweight. 
you know, the the match that you watch before the huge match. You know, the the, the co-main event. <laughs> but here we go. So Doku Ringo to Cinderella. And Taishi, Taishi with the early with miss. The early miss. Yeah, so Sweden off to the races here. But oh, that's really weird for Hanek to miss. I was about to point out how strong he normally is on this mod, but an unusual early miss from Hanek here on Hidden. And maybe he was reading your mind and just felt that curse coming as we see a miss coming from Aceon. Aceon for Dominator. Bra All Brazil's players are down. And two FCs for Sweden in the form of Yukitera and Satomi. So. Looking pretty good as Taishi just now gets up to 200 and Hanek is racing behind him frank uh, just frantic to try to get up there to stop the bleeding. But Sweden are resting pretty comfortable here. Question is how comfortable are Satomi and Yukitera Mano? AC on with another miss though. Gonna leave an opening for Brazil as all their combos are above 200. But Hanek oh, uh, will drop it. Taishi's Taishi down. Right after. So what was once an advantage for Brazil turns into an instant advantage for Sweden. Satomi and Yukitera practiced. Oh, Satomi! Satomi. Never mind. Yukitera, never mind. Aceon, okay. Triple miss for Sweden. That's cool. For Dominator, the only one with above a 200 combo as we see Hanek just now reaching to it. Yeah, Brazil definitely going to come back in on the score line now. Trying to flip it. Triple, triple miss from Brazil! Brazil! No Brazil! way! Tommy with a miss! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh, Yukitero with a miss right after the spinner there. And we're still just over halfway through. A little more than a third of the map left. And Brazil's still very much in this. And Aceon and with another miss. Predominator and Yukitero are going to trade right after that. And Brazil, Brazil are now... Another chance. Taishi heading his down Satomi! Just holding on. with this left and right! Every Brazil keeps narrowing the gap, and then they just give up more points. It's Satomi, the captain for Sweden, keeping the minute. Brazil taking five steps forward and ten steps back right now. It's not more like ten steps back. It's, it's more like five steps forward and five steps back. They keep going back and forth to like the same scenario, and they may only get one more chance. That's if Satomi does miss. Because he's above 200 predominant and Yukitera are gonna offset here. Aceon recovering as well. The Brazilian players gotta get their combos up and be ready for a potential miss, because this is still winnable for Brazil. Very close here at the end. Will we see anything? Oh, Yukitero and Taishi gonna train misses. Satomi still holding on strong though. Yes, Sweden may have this. They gotta hold to the end. Wow. And Sweden are gonna hold on. Ho oh. ho. What a first map. What wow. a first map. That was pretty close. That was pretty close. What was that, 10,000? Well, that's a break point for Sweden. Man, that, that one triple miss is what really killed Brazil. It was 11K. That is an insanely close difference. So now where does Sweden go? Well, they can go literally anywhere they want. I 
I'm probably gonna say I want to say either Nomad or Hard Rock. Yeah, I'm definitely with you there on that Hard Rock pick. I think if you're Sweden, you're definitely capitalized on that. Satomi in the chat, stuttering, saying he loves Hidden. Yeah. And they're going for Nomad 3. Reversible Doll. Personally, one of my favorite Nomad maps so far in this tournament. Yeah, it's definitely a really popular one, too. This has been played a lot. I don't think it's been played every single match. I think one match so far it's been excluded. But it's definitely been played a lot. Well, I mean, it's Wowaka. The man was a genius. Oh, yeah. So, it doesn't look like we're actually going to get any substitutions. Everyone's content with their current rosters. So, here we go. So, Sweden looking to open with a 2-0 lead here off the break point from Brazil. And it was unfortunate for Brazil. Every time they kept getting combo, they were great. Hopefully they can pick it back up and hold and be consistent on this map. Yeah, Mar might be a tad bit out of sync here. No, it's fine, I think. With the way, no misses at all in the first 200, so really setting up pretty dangerous here. Everybody above that 200 combo now. Nobody's even missed a droplet. And these are the unseeds on a quarterfinals map pool. Who's gonna blink first? Sweden or Brazil? Wait and find out. This map's almost already a quarter over. And no misses. I am really surprised. Oh, ACI is done. the first one. He's caught out there. Just got a little too impatient with that hyper dash. That's the first miss for Sweden. Brazil to the lead. But the fact that we've only had one miss and we're almost halfway through. What a run! And Predominator is the first miss for Brazil. Yukikaru missing as well! Yeah, he's gonna trade it, and that's big for Brazil, because they're gonna see that now in the break. See that Taishi and Hanek are still holding fine. Aceon did just get the 200 combo, so... Really fortunate for Sweden that Yukikaru's miss happened when it did. But still, the advantage for Brazil is there. It's now both Predominator and Yukiteru back up to that 200. Everyone's there. So now Brazil have banked some points. They've got the lead. Final third coming. Panic, the only one holding on to that double S right now. We got FC. Oh, oh, double. Predominator and Taishi no. double S for Brazil. And it's going to instantly flip it over to Sweden. Because they've all got over 200 combo. Hanek's trying to hold them back, but he can't. He needs help. Another miss from Predominator. He's gonna yep. set them back even further. And Sweden, the consistency is coming through. Satomi, though, is gonna be the one to find the miss. And Brazil are still alive. The Brazil are gonna need more help. Satomi with another miss. Big drop in the HP bar. 
The score getting close, it's narrowing. Brazil trying to hunt Sweden down. You can see it from easy on it from Dominator. Double miss from Sweden, a miss from Predominator. Brazil Not back in front. Taishi and Hanek now running away with it. Aceon again, Sweden's down, and this time it's gonna be Brazil on top of Sweden. Sweden just collapsing. And at it's the a end double there. S from Hanek. The SS from Hanek and Brazil hang in there and take it back. So break point for break point. We're tied at one. These, this has already been close. These first two rounds were very close. It's still amazing that these two teams are on seed teams. Yeah. I, I still can't believe it. Yeah, that's that's right, Twitch chat. For those of you just tuning in, these are two teams that are unseeded. Not top seed, not high seed, not low seed. These were two unseeded teams. And Hanek is just SS in quarterfinals. An SS in quarterfinals from a player on an unseeded team. That's ridiculous. Speaking of panic, he's going with that hidden two pick mint tears. Yeah, well now like the thing is now because of the comeback ban and the way it kind of is is implemented in this match, you kind of now are forced. If you think that there's a map that you know that you guys have a clear advantage on, you are forced to pick that as like your first and second pick. Because you cannot let the other team, you can't get to three points and let the other team ban out one of those maps. So it kind of is forcing you to play your strengths early. And so Sweden, we're able to avoid danger on the last hidden pick, but will they be able to avoid it on Mint Tears, the pick from Brazil, the last <laughs> hidden? Yucatero, HD Chan, be gentle, please. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my. Once again, no substitutions. And here we go. All right, Brazil now have a chance to get a point on Hidden. It would do them a lot of good in the morale department. But on to Mint Tears, it's no ordinary Hidden map. You have to be patient. Found, finding an early miss, same with Yucatero. Yucatero almost failing. Yeah, the HP bar on this is real finicky, but his accuracy is tanked big time. For Dominator will miss as well. Sion had an early one. Satomi missed now. All players for Sweden have dropped an FC. Sion still at the 140. But you have Taishi and Hanek on the Brazilian side doing absolutely just insane work right now. Anik being that first one to hit that 200 combo mark, still holding a double S. Predominator, Taishi and Aceon will trade, but Predominator also missed, so it's just Hanek. And now he's being negated by Yuki Teru, and Satomi's got some combos, so Sweden are actually pulling it back, but Aceon's miss is not going to help them. Oh, neither is that from Yuki Teru. And now the advantage is with Brazil. Satomi missing. Brazil really starting to pull away here. Hanek saying, oh, don't worry, guys. I'll throw you on my back for this map as well right now. Yeah, Hanek pulling in the hard carry here with the SS. And everyone else is just struggling. Taishi's actually doing fairly well, but other than Taishi and Hanek, everyone else is struggling to an extent. Predominator just needs to make sure he passes the map. Oh no, Predominator. Oh, uh, pre Predominator, please. Don't do this to us. <laughs> Stop it. Double miss from Taishi Predominator at the end, but Brazil are gonna take it. They lead 2-1. Hanek back-to-back SSs.
two in a row. He didn't SS the first map, but getting two back-to-back SSs on a quarterfinals map pool. Um, by the way, guys, this is an unseeded team. Unseeded team, by the way. Uh, unseeded, unseeded, unseeded team. <laughs> Hannick Gang. Whole lot of gang stuff going on right now. Oh, whole gang. lot of gang stuff. Oh, what's that? What do we do in the Hannah gang? Oh, well, we catch fruit. We don't miss. That's we what don't even we do. have to look. Yeah, what What does your gang do, huh? Just hang out in alleys? <laughs> Get out of here. Gang. Catching fruit with the hidden mod on. Whole lot of gang stuff. But now Sweden have to respond. You gotta wonder. I wonder if Hard Rock's gonna be played this match. Yeah, you would think that Sweden would go with the Hard Rock pick on this go. Yeah, I don't know if we're trying to save it or. Satomi says HD's gone. Now we can have fun. All right, it's Sweden. Hello, Satomi, and we get a pick. Satomi, please report to the principal's office so you can pick your map. Satomi, to the <laughs> principal's office. You need to pick your map. If only we had like a loudspeaker like that. That would be hilarious. Well, Yukatero dropping out, and there's the hard. There's the hard rock pick coming there in. There it is. Data pad coming day. in. Yeah, we're gonna switch it up a little bit. Just uh, just you know, gonna grind myself to sleep on this map. I uh. <laughs> Played it, played it the other day, and I won missed on Hard Rock in the middle. You know what the best part about being in the Hannah Gang is? No matter what mod you play, you can always throw on hidden. So. Looks actually like we're gonna see Overdose come in for Predominator on the Hard Rock for Brazil. Just the sub, Datapata coming in for Yukateru. So one sub for each side. Oh, I'm seeing some people typing in Data Gang in the chat. Crap, Data we got a gang, gang war going on. You got a gang, got a gang war gang going war? on right now. Panic Gang versus Data Gang. Oh, look at the Hannock Gang out there with Hidden. Taishi? Oh, oh Taishi. Way to ruin it. You're tearing this family apart. Come on now. You tear <laughs> how, how could you? But Hannock and Overdose is gonna. Go do some gang stuff. Overdose is missing early. Oh, oh, overdose! Come on, man. You're giving the, Data with a miss the there. Gang Satomi as well. That and Satomi also missing. Aceon still holding on for Sweden, but it's two FCs to one. So advantage for Brazil. But 
Hack advantage is heavily in favor of Sweden as Overdose is struggling with his hack. As Hanek will find a miss. He is not going to find his third double S this map. Yeah, and Overdose also missing as well as Taishi. Brazil really struggling, and it's Datapata with the combo. Hanek really struggling right now. Tell me with the miss so AC on as well. Data Pad are really putting in the work and here. Taishi missing. Data finally gives it up after 350 combo, but with how things have turned out, that may be enough to give Sweden the win by itself. Taishi and Overdose were at risk of failing, but they've caught up now. Data Pad and Satomi. You gotta make sure that there are no fails here. Overdose! 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 What are you doing? Oh, no fails for Sweden, it looks like. That's going to go to the Swedes. Tied up at two. Overdose seeing his life flash before his eyes a couple times in that map. It looks like Satomi has to restart his computer really quick as he's playing with 20 MS. Huh. Huh. Yeah, that's not good. So Overdose actually did fail. Did he? He did. Oh, you hate to see it happen. But no Swedish players fail, so... We're tied at two. Especially after we were hyping the Hannah gang up so much. It, uh. They got they got beat by the data gang. Data gang came in with that 400 combo. But now Brazil have the pick. Probably gonna wanna avoid hard rock, but they yes. All the hard rock maps are open. So that's not really looking too good for Brazil. They decided to ban a DT. And Brazil yeah. say no. We're picking hard rock. Hanek, you good there? Uh, They're play. picking Cyber Thunder Cider? Uh, Excuse me? Hanek, you good there, man? <laughs> You, you sure won those fruits that you uh, that you missed and it hit you in the head last match? I I don't I don't know about this pick, Chief. He's clearly knows something we don't. This might be a big yikes for me, man. But if you think about it, this would be the most gang thing ever, dude. Like, imagine how gang this would be if Panic picks Hard Rock and Brazil just wins hard rock. Like you realize how whole gang that would be? Whole be a whole lot of gang, gang stuff going on there. Alright. But th this could easily backfire. But if Brazil do manage to actually win this pick, then that's just legendary. They're trying to, after being utterly decimated on the first hard rock pick, they are trying to run it back and dunk on these kids. So I don't know how this is going to go. But an effort is being made. The Dominator coming in for overdose. All right, guys. Rep the Hannock gang. If you in the Hannock gang. Rep the rep the data gang. If you in the data gang. It's a gang war. So we've got you know Hannock 
AC on and predominant. You're doing the typical gang stuff with the hidden. Again, Taishi just tearing the family apart. Come Te on, man. Tearing the family. <laughs> refusing the pro refusing to be a part. But then you've got AC on. You've got AC on doing the exact same thing on the Sweden side by putting on the hidden. Okay, come on, guys. This definitely was not in the script, okay? This is not in the come script. On, so tell me with an early 62, miss. Not 58. Come on, guys. Oh, triple miss from Sweden! And Hanek's the only one I've seen now. Double miss from Brazil. Triple miss from Sweden. Triple and now miss. everyone misses. This map is so brutal. It's just gonna be who survives. AC on with 100 combo. Whole lot of gang stuff going on here. This is about to be a fight. Data with a miss, the doctor is going to trade it back. AC on finding the 200 combo mark first. Oh, man. Hennig and Taishi are right behind. Satomi's there. Hennig's oh, Hennig misses. Miss. And Satomi's there with 200 combo. Sweden now taking the lead here. Taishi, the last line of defense for the Brazilians. Dominator just finding a miss now. He was starting to catch back up. Satomi down, AC on down. Data Patagon in there. Brazil with the advantage now. Satomi missing again. Predominator's down. Taishi and Hanek hanging on. Data Pat is down. Brazil's now got the advantage. The the score flies to the right. Taishi coming up with a 400 combo right now. Brazil. He doesn't need that hidden mod. If Brazil can just hold on for a little bit here and bank some solid points, they could actually do this. Data Pat is struggling. Here comes the Hanek gang! Taishi making up for his lack of a hidden mod by Dominator putting in some missing. work. Sweden actually trying to run it back now because Predominator keeps missing consistently. Hanek Hanek is down! Oh, all Triple Brazil's down. Fun. It's Data Pata. Wait a minute, folks. Not over yet. Here comes Sweden! Data Pata misses right before the spinner. And right before the spinner is gonna miss, and Brazil's gonna hold the lead just barely. Whole lot of gang stuff going on right now. It's actually gonna be Brazil with the slight advantage. Nobody really has any combo, so it's the Hannah gang on top right now. Oh, Panic and Pat Data Pat are missing. They're gonna trade misses. It's oh, it's so even Satomi's down. Predominator's down. Dominator. It's Taishi versus AC on. Oh, Data Pat is down, as well as Predominator and Hanik. It's close, but Brazil have done it. <laughs> Hanik gang, whole lot of gang stuff from Brazil. They get decimated on Hard Rock, and then they say, you know what? Run that back one more time. And they get the clutch win. You kidding me? Can we just take a second to look at Aceon's accuracy, though? 99.77. That was a 12k difference. 12k oh so what this is gonna mean this is huge for brazil so now sweden will get to use their second ban and then they also will have the pick but if sweden take another point brazil will get another ban and then the pick so this map pool is about to be eviscerated so They've actually, they've played Sweden. Sweden are banning Hard Rock now. Can you believe this? So Sweden, they decimate Brazil on Hard Rock 2. Brazil get a clutch win on Hard Rock 3. And then Sweden's like, you know what? We'll just ban the other Hard Rock. That's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out for them. That's huge for Brazil because one of their concerns against Sweden and Hard Rock, they've traded 1-1 on Hard Rock picks. They've traded the Hiddens 
and so they got, won the double time. So you got no mod or double time. No, they didn't win Take the double poison. time. They they won the no mod. Take so your poison. no mod or double time. If you're Sweden, you know you kind of. This is this is really weird. It's, it's come down to a a no mod and double time match. So they're picking no mod two. So that's gonna be World Vanquisher, very popular no mod pick. Oh, is this this is just gonna come down to no mod. Yeah, I don't. Honestly, I don't see either team wanting to go with double time right now. No, I think these teams are just gonna play no mod from here on out. So you never know. Panic Gang might choose double time. Throw on that hidden mod fire. Be like, what's up? A whole lot of gang stuff going on there. A whole lot of gang stuff. So Sweden, on to World Vanquisher. Her Dominator is in. And we see Data Pata coming out of the Data Gang in favor of Yukatero right now. Data pad is no longer in. What's the data gang called now? Uh. Uh. Yukiteru gang? <laughs> uh. Amano gang? I don't know. This this is change. I don't like change. I'm not this used is, to this change. Is, this is not. This is this not is gang a, stuff. This is not norm. This is not gang stuff. AC on gang. <laughs> Everyone's just spamming a player's name and then putting gang after it now. All the gangs. Catch is just gonna turn into nothing but gang wars now. Yeah. But no misses so far on World Vanquisher. A very popular map in the Nomad pool. Yukitero, the only one dropping accuracy, gonna give, as soon as I say that, Satomi as well, gonna give a slight advantage to Brazil right now. Yeah, but don't blink. I don't think that's gonna be the difference maker here. I don't think we're going to see a six-way FC on this, Chief. But so far, everyone's holding pretty steady. A triple SS from the Brazilian side. AC on holding the SS for Sweden. Still, you can tear and Satomi with FCs. With a droplet miss. And it's the slightest of margins in favor of Hannah Gang. AC on with the first miss of the match though. Sweden now trailing. And he was the SS. Just missed time to Yukitero missing as well. And that's two misses Stop for Dominator. Him. Sweden's gonna catch their breath a little bit with that Hard miss. Hennig is down, Taishi's down. Satomi holds! Satomi for Sweden is holding on. And trying to pull this one back. It's going to be a slow recovery. But Sweden is still in this. Predominator missing again. Yukatero missing. Yeah, but Predominator missed several notes. So I still think that actually Sweden may be coming back into this. It's very close. Coming to the end. But Brazil are holding on. You can tear him. He's missing. failed. He failed. And Brazil looks to hold on to a break point here. Oh. 
AC on with a miss, and that's gonna do it. Brazil take a 4 2 lead. Despite an FC from Satomi, Sweden unable to hold on. Wow. What a resilient Brazilian team. So Brazil up four to two over Sweden. I had a feeling this was going to happen, Dolan. As soon as we were talking about Sweden looking like the favorable team before this match, Brazil's, Brazil's just showing us wrong. Yeah, Brazil. Brazil showing some really good consistency on Nomad. I'm not going to lie. That really impressed me. I did not expect that from them. Whole lot of gang stuff. Whole lot of gang stuff going on over in Brazil's side. Are we going to see a double time math in this match? We probably not. We might. <laughs> we might. If Brazil keeps winning on Nomad, Sweden are going to have to go to double time to change something up. No more chat, just gangs. So now Brazil actually a very important pick. Because if they win this, they put intense pressure on Sweden. Really taking their time with this pick. Wanting to get the absolute perfect map so they could potentially make it a 5 2. Honestly, if I were them, I'd probably go with something like Unconquered or Axiom Crisis. Look, those are some excellent maps. Panic Gang just says, Forget you, commentators. Gang stuff, whole lot of gang stuff. We're going double time. Watch it happen. I mean, yeah. That that could happen. Interlude. Okay, so we're going to go with Interlude. We're going to stick with Nomad. Satomi, where are all the HD picks so we can win a point again? Yeah, they did do quite well on that one hit map, but now we're going on to Interlude, the Nomad Convert, I believe. So Brazil looking to stick with Nomad, or they just may keep going Nomad until they, if the score keeps up like this, until they inevitably win, if they they can just do that. Because all that's left is no mod in double time. And I'm not sure either team really wants to jump in to double time. Oh, uh, Data Gang's back. Okay, we're back to normal now. All back to normal. We have returned to normalcy. Well, all right, here we go. On to interlude. Sweden really need a point here to stop the momentum from Brazil and keep themselves in this match. Here we go. Brazil looking to make it 5 2 with this. Client getting synced up, and we're about to get underway. Brazil played absolutely 
just insane here on a quarterfinals map pool for an unseeded team. Let's see if they can keep it up. So, so told me, you good there, man? Early miss, the map, you know, the, the tactical started. miss. It's a tactical miss. He's getting it out of the way now. So he won't miss later. It's a big brain miss. Tell me with the five dimen fifth dimensional chess moves going on right now. But nothing from anybody else. And Satomi now back up to 200. So Brazil with a slight edge. But again, it was a very early miss. So should Brazil Ooh, Predominator find a miss? missing. Yeah, Sweden That's are going to be taking the lead. Sweden. Oh, but Yuki Tear is going to upset it. For Dominator again, Taishi, Taishi down as well. Data and Satomi over 200 against Hanek. Yuki Taro though failed. Yuki Taro failed. For Dominator struggling yet again. And Yuki Taro actually just That's failed bad, all bad. the way. Data with a miss. It's Satomi against Hanek. But Sweden have the lead. And this map is coming to a close, and Sweden are looking quite comfortable. Yuki Taro, Taishi, Predominator. Yeah, that's three misses, but Data and Satomi are holding strong. Satomi, Satomi with a miss, though! Does he fail? We gotta look out for fails. It looks like Sweden may be able to hold on. Hanek, though, trying to run it back. Data with another miss! And it's not enough, Sweden! Barely hold on. Oh my. Hanuk over here with another double S. Hanuk gang repping three double S's. Three right SS's now. for Hanuk on the quarterfinals pool. Brazil yeah. now get to use their comeback ban. Sweden have scored a third point. Both teams have not been wanting to pick double time so far. So let's see if Priscilla tries to choose a double time. So we'll see where Brazil go with this band. So you've got DT1, DT3, and you've got DT, and then you've got Nomads 1, 4, and 5 left. Data gang. Data gang. <laughs> and a gang with three SS's. Ooh, and Hannah going to choose the band Nomad 5. The Hollow Wings Nomad map. Getting the boot. Okay, so now where will Sweden go? Two Nomads, two Double Times. Both teams staying away from Double Time as if it was the Plague, but... Those Double Time maps are coming closer and closer to having to be picked. E yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're running out of maps, that's a problem. And the thing is, if we get, if this match is going to go to tiebreaker, one of those maps will have to be played. One of those DT maps. Sweden taking their time now because oh, this is actually very important for Sweden. If, if Brazil take this point, take this break point, they advance to match point with the pick. So obvi obviously this is a very important pick for Sweden. Satomi, so don't make me call you to the principal's office again. <laughs> no mod one. 
unconquered. Thank you, Satomi. No detention for you this time. Yeah, this time they get the pick done. So it's going to be on Unconquered here. Looks like the same usual suspect's going to play. Except Data. Data Gang, Data Data gang, gang is out. Gang. Come on, chat. Let's see some hype. Which gang do you want to win? Well, here we go. So for Sweden, it'll be Yukitero, Mano, Satomi, and Aceon. For Brazil, Taishi, Hanek, and Predator. Not Predator. He's like a Predator, though, when he's on fire. Predominator. I'm really tired. I gave up on reading when I saw Pred. I thought Predator. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I have casted a lot of matches. I need sleep. Is Arnold Schwarzenegger going to jump out of here and say get to the chopper next? <laughs> yeah. Alien versus Predator. Well, all right, here we go on Unconquered. We're still coming out ahead of that spinner. Yeah, we're still winning that spinner battle just barely. Sweden risking a lot on this pick, and Satomi is the first to fall. Brazil with the lead at the moment. Hanek will follow is suit. Fall. Both the captains are down early. Satomi on the recovery. AC on will miss. Yep. Yukitero missing. No full combos left on the side of Sweden. And Brazil now looking to check out. Panic recovering to 200. And Predominator with a big drop on that stream section. He missed a lot of it and that section. Yukitero's going to trade it. Satomi also struggling as well. But Taishi and Hanek holding above 200 combos here. Putting Brazil well out of reach here. And for Sweden, it's not looking too good. And the break point will go to Brazil. Five, three, they lead. One more for Brazil. Yeah, that was definitely not the right map to pick if you were Sweden. Yeah, what a performance there from Taishi coming through with the FC for Brazil. And now Brazil have the pick at match point, and they can either go for a no mod or one of the two remaining double times. If Brazil was smart, they would go with the no mod. If they're feeling spicy, they're going to go with the double time. Yeah, now they're really thinking about this, though. I mean, it, realistically, if if Brazil is going to pick a no mod or, or is if Brazil's picking double time, I feel like they're going to pick best of my love. I don't feel like Heavenly Blue is going to be played. I feel like it's going to be Axiom Crisis and best of my love. But that's just me. Still, really talking this over. Yeah, this is a big pick for Brazil. Still potentially being the first unseeded team in Catch World Cup to advance to top 12. 
Yeah, that's definitely history in the making right here for one of these two teams in Brazil. Right now, want to ensure that they're on the right side of history. Oh man, Brazil really thinking about this one. Honestly, Brazil might not have thought that they would be in this situation right now. Yeah, I mean, maybe that could be true, but at this point, you still just have to kind of pick what's They're left. They're going you... with the double time. DT Convert. Best of my love. There we go. Hannah Gang feeling spicy, wanting to put on a show. If you think about it, though, it's not a bad idea to pick this one and then have... You're basically going to force Sweden. Basically, what you're doing here by picking this is you're saying, all right, Sweden, you have to make the tough choice next of going no mod or double time. Because Brazil knows that they can't escape playing one double time. Both teams know that there is at least going to be one DT played. But they're going to make Sweden, because this thing is, if Sweden win this double time pick and stay in the match, they're left with the decision of no mod Axiom Crisis or Heavenly Blue DT. And that's going to be such a difficult choice for them because they would have just won this DT pick to get to that pick. So they'll be thinking, do we go with DT because we just won or do we pick no mod? So Sweden are going to be left with an agonizing choice if they win this DT pick. Ultimately for Brazil though, if you pick this, there's nothing more you can think about. Like the mental strategy of this match is over pretty much for Brazil. Because they don't have to think anymore after this. They just have to play the best they can. If they lose this, well, the pick is up to Sweden. Not them, so. But it's going to be Yuki Teru, Satomi, Aceon, Furt, Sweden, Brazil. It's Taishi, Hanek, and Predominators. Same squads as last time. Taishi, yet again, not going hidden. Tearing the gang apart, Taishi. Tearing the gang apart. Come on now. It worked last time, though. Yeah, it, it really didn't work out last time. Predominator. Predominator. Early miss. The first miss. Sweden's still holding on. Still nothing yet, aside from the mist from Predominator. Okay, will we see any misses here? Who's gonna blink first? And it's Aceon. gonna be Taishi and Aceon! Yeah, They're so the misses... They're gonna it out. They're gonna offset misses there. So Sweden still with the advantage. Oh, Yuki Tarot to Tomi! Tomi! Double miss for Sweden! Predominator missing, Yuki Tarot is down! At the and break, Brazil's gonna see that both Yuki Tarot and Satomi miss. They're in full control of this map now. Yeah, it's two 200 plus combos to one right now. Brazil gonna extend the lead. And for Sweden, this could be their curtain call if they don't turn it around. Hennig will miss, though. Find a miss. Yep, that is going to offset things. And now Sweden actually have the advantage now because of that miss. Hennig again. Sweden back in control. Can't Sweden hold on? But AC on end. Yuki Taro double miss from Sweden. Taishi finding a miss as well. Satomi so will cancel that one out though. Taishi's Predominator. Predominator and Haddock with the big combos for Brazil, putting in some work. 
Yuki Terra and Satomi will double miss once again into the final quarter. Brazil pulling away. They see it on the scoreboard really quickly. They've got about 50, 60k on them. Yeah, it's about seven, almost 80k now in favor of Brazil. He's gonna have to hope for multiple misses from Brazil right now. They need like a triple miss from Brazil. There's, There's one. one. That's not gonna be enough. There's, There's two. two. Oh, no way. No, no way. way. No, no way, way this happens. For Dominator holding on. Aceon is gonna kill the hopes for Sweden. Sweden, we're fighting back. As long as there are no fails. And that's gonna do it. Brazil complete the upset. 6-3. Sweden eliminated from the World Cup. Brazil are moving on. Brazil making history. First, the first unseeded team move on to the top 12 and us catch World Cup. Insane stuff, Brazil. Dug deep, got a big time win here over Sweden, who played well as well. Hannock Gang prevails today, folks. Whole lot of gang stuff. Whole lot of good gang stuff going on there. But a well-played game. So Brazil are through. They will await the loser of United States and France later. And that is going to be all for now. We'll have a break for a few hours before the U.S.-France match. But you definitely don't want to miss United States against France. In about one hour from now is when it will start. So get yourselves ready. Dude, that is going to be a really heavyweight bout right there. Two really good teams, potential grand finalists going head to head. Yep, in about one hour or so, take yourself a nice break. And we will too, to get ready. And we'll see you for the big match. I'm Dolan. Elux, it's been a pleasure casting with you. Finally got to cast with you, man. Feels yeah, good. finally. So... With that, we'll bid you a pleasant adieu, a farewell, and we'll see you in one hour for the big one, U.S. and France.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the 2019 Oz Catch World Cup quarterfinals. Dolan here, joined by JB Hyperion. Hello, hello again, everybody. Great to see you. Hopefully, you've all hung around or returned from your CWC food. A nice stretch, a rest, some hydration. We got one match left for you today, and it's going to be a huge one. The United States squaring off against France in the winner's bracket. I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, the US going up against Le Bleu here in the quarterfinals, and this is probably the most dangerous European team. I think these are the two best non-Asian teams in the tournament. Hands Definitely down. two teams that are vying for a podium spot. Uh, like the US made their first podium in uh, mm -hmm. the 2018 edition last year, achieving that silver runners-up position to China, looking to repeat the feat this year. Got a South Korea at full strength, a China that is always horribly strong. So third place may be the best anyone not from those two nations can hope for, but unfortunately there can only be one, and these two teams have positioned themselves as front runners for that spot so far. But only Indeed. one of them can stay in the winner's bracket, so who's it going to be? Indeed. Well, let's take a look at the rosters for the United States. Chicken Bible, joined by Kendall, Carisu, Zach, Rosseld, and Lexi. And for France, it's going to be Ah, Monstratorful, No Life, Hollow, Boros, and the always dangerous Alostis. Yeah, yeah. good thing that you mentioned Alostis specifically because he has been on an absolute tear so far in this World Cup, looking like one of the most dangerous players across all teams that we've seen so far. Just supreme consistency, not phased or troubled by anything, and he's got an excellent team around him that can support him. Mm -hmm. I actually think that's going to make France more potent in the like the quarterfinal and semifinal stage of the tournament because they have a team that can play so well in map pools like that. But then you also have a Lostis who can just do things that other players and other teams can't really do. So they're really dangerous in the quarter and semifinals because they just have insane players all around and a Lostis. Well, let's be real here. We're talking about their opponents, the United States, who also have Chicken Bible and uh, Russell, obviously Guillotine, as he was once known, who are two players who are also well known for doing pretty insane feats themselves. They got a few good so, players. You yeah, know. they're not bad at the game. Yeah. No, but I think, folks, you guys are tuning into the biggest match of the weekend. This is, this is something that we have been hyping since the drawings since the round like we saw the group stage and how the bracket would play out we knew these two teams would eventually clash here so we've been ready for this match for quite a long like a long time yeah absolutely we obviously have two more matches uh tomorrow philippines versus china and south korea versus taiwan they're going to be pretty intense matches also i do believe but this one for me is the match that i've been most excited about And we're back. Hooray. We All didn't right. Die. We didn't die. Well, not completely. But as we were kind of saying, like right before the whole stream crashed. Just that minor uh, problem. Yeah. The minor problem we had. We, we got into predictions and JBH and I actually have kind of two similar but different predictions. Because yeah, you mine... predicted 6-4 for France. I predicted 6-4 for, for the yeah. US. Yeah, so uh, let me let me just say that at the beginning of the tournament, I think I predicted France as contenders for the podium and probably the most dangerous European team that the tournament has seen in many years. And yeah. I strongly tip them for a trip to like at least the final four. And I haven't seen anything so far this tournament that has convinced me otherwise or to change my mind. So as much as I rate the is... US team and as much as they've done well the last couple of years, I think that France have really upped their game to another level this week this year. Yeah, you can't really refute any of that, but is this French Pokemon? This is French Pokemon. Okay. Is it me or does that Pikachu have an extremely weird facial expression? This is way too low. Why does it go that far down? He looks more like a cat. <laughs> rather than a mouse. Yeah, rather than a, just, a just Pikachu. Just slightly, slightly wrong. Boros yeah. just seems to be holding Dash for everything on this one, which is quite interesting. 
Also, they've opted to all take double time on the warm-up. I mean, I think that was just a 30-second hard map, so... It makes perfect sense, I suppose. And no live hollow chicken Bible coming in with SSs? I'm actually impressed that there's an SS from Chicken Bible there, considering that's a French warm-up and he's never... It's a sight reader. Well, I mean, it's it's a, it's a hard uh, standard convert. I don't imagine that would trouble a player of his skill level. True. But still. So this is the inevitable clash of the Titans. The winner here will move on to face the winner of Taiwan South Korea, while the loser of this match heads down to the loser's bracket. And they're going to play against Brazil. So Brazil awaits the loser of this match. Yeah, Brazil looked pretty strong in their victory over Sweden uh, in the previous match. Again, I think uh, Sweden were the favorited team there with about two thirds of people electing to uh, give them the nod, but it was Brazil that came out on top. Yeah, definitely. I was also bamboozled by that. Brazil played absolutely amazing. Oh, there's some mind games going on right here. Oh my goodness. Russell saying you will need no fail, and Lost is saying, nope, no, no fail. <laughs> <laughs> he is making a statement right now. Oh man. Well, we'll see if those words come back to bite him. No life coming out with the. I mean, oh, he's no saving the day. Main. He's a no, no fail main anyway. No fail main. <laughs> I still see remnants of the gang meme in the chat. Yeah, I heard that you uh, you led the chat on a little goose chase yeah. with the uh, Genoshi yeah, gang. Me and had some fun yeah. with the chat, all right? <laughs> it started it with good. Genoshi gang, then it turned into Hannah gang, the <laughs> Dada Pada gang, the, the, the Dada gang. Now everyone has a gang. Do you have a Doe gang? Oh, oh yeah. Is that what you're going to call your subscribers now? The Doe Gang? 100%. Copywriting <laughs> it. Trademarking it. Whole lot of gang stuff. The US are notorious for either like picking a meme or just they pick a tryhard map. Yeah, this is uh, one of the more traditional Azrael uh, kind of challenge maps. Obviously now known as Rockman, one of the uh, South Korean CWC roster members. And yeah, this is uh, a pretty spicy difficulty. Gonna warm the fingers up. Yeah. Would you just look at that? The French team right now, oh my goodness. Well, I lost this currently double S'ing with Hard Rock. Maybe he uh, he may live live good on his promise of saying that yeah, no fail said, is not required. He he said he didn't need no fail. He may have been right. Well, there's still uh, like three minutes of this to go, so we'll see if he can keep that up. But he's looking pretty good so far. Or oh oh, Kersenating is on point. I'm wow. back in the saddle. So even Elastis, the best player in the lobby, is not immune to the caster mm -hmm. curse. Yep. The power is strong with us. Oh, this is wow. why I love Chroma songs, but I could never map them. The pitch just gets to me after a little, a little too long, and I couldn't listen to this like that many times. I don't think. Very cool map though. I'm just in awe watching Elastis. Oh, <laughs> you you can do it too. Hey! Doesn't look so good for France now, does it? <laughs> uh, what BPM is this? Uh, 185. Although you'd be forgiven for thinking it was a fair bit higher considering the density. No, watch. When it actually matters in the match, when we try to curse and Tate lost this, he, he, he just won't miss. Russell does actually a pretty significant combo right now too.
And there it goes. But yeah, this is one of the classic old challenge maps. The US love to pick... Sometimes they just pick challenge maps like this. And Alostis is doing this with Hard Rock. What? The difficulty looks to be mostly kind of slider constructed, so... Yeah. Stream paths won't get too wonky. But that isn't to say that this is the same difficulty with Hard Rock as it is with No Mod by any means. This looks pretty difficult, whichever way you look at it. Yeah. There's a huge number of drops there from Alostis, unfortunately, which dropped him below 99% act. Before that, he was uh, sitting very pretty. Yeah, he had really good act. The catcher movement is just insane how they have that fine precision. Yeah. That... Timing each and every single one of these hypers perfectly, and also taking into account the flow of these notes. It looks almost robotic at points. It's so impressive. And that last part at the end. Look at the scores for both teams. Pretty yeah, close. Yeah, very close. Just, There's uh, actually 16,000 points in it. Dude, Alostis. What are you doing? Yeah, almost essing that with Hard Rock. The absolute madman. But anyway, that's just warm-ups. It doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. Six real-life match points to be taken now by yeah. either team to secure a victory. Well, here we go. Time for the rules and the bans. Let's see who's going to get the early moral ground by winning the roll. 67 from Hollow, that's pretty good. Pretty solid, pretty solid. I feel like the US are gonna either roll really high or really low. Okay, never mind. Completely wrong on both accounts, but it is a France win. 67 beating out 40. That is actually Chicken Bible's first loss in a roll. Well, losing the roll doesn't mean the worst. Their life saying that they want to ban second and pick first, okay. Fair enough. Most yep. of the picks, most of the matches we've seen today, the winner of the role has opted to ban something first, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's actually kind of crazy. They, they elect to ban something first and pick second. And ban the Crowley Hard Rock. Yep. How to Sekai has been getting banned quite a bit today. It's been played once, but I think it's been banned in pretty much every, every other map. occasion. And, and what a yeah, surprise! Yeah. Last half of the day is the second ban, the other map that we've seen banned almost. I think so far today, we've only seen three maps banned. These two and uh, Endless Ripples has seen a couple of bans. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, Russell saying, I did not see that ban coming at all. Teams really <laughs> just wanting nothing to do with uh, either of these maps in particular. Yeah. Nobody wants to play these. Yeah, so that is a 100% ban rate. Six out of six for La Silphida. No Cyber accent. Thunder Cider is the pick okay. to start it. Well, that seems wise. I mean, the US did ban Hard Rock 1, so... I think these two might be the two best Hard Rocks in the world. Just, we saw have... some pretty impressive hard rock out of teams like Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan have some pretty solid hard rock players. Mexico looked really strong on hard rock today as well yeah. in that match against Poland. But I think these two teams do look pretty dangerous. Yeah. I just, when I think of like the scariest hard rock lineups, I instantly just think of the US players and the French players. I mean, the French are kind of, French are going to potent because you have Alostis, who's so good. And then you just have also good players behind him. Like No Life and Boros. Yeah, it's pretty much expected that Alostis will FC even several things at this level of difficulty. But even when he doesn't, his team are so consistently behind him that there's usually somebody FCing which is just real pressure for the US. And also, yeah, to notice, like, 
This match has been rescheduled and France are playing at like one in the morning, which is mm -hmm. really quite kind of not yeah. brave, really, that's not really the word, but it shows that they're like not phased by like Yeah. I mean they're dedicated at odd times of day. Dedicated is exactly the right word. Yeah. But here we go. Battle of the Giants here in the quarterfinals. Yeah, last US. year we had the US versus uh, China in the quarterfinals. Two teams yeah. that eventually went on to contest the grand final. And if you think about it, like we could be set for another run like this because we've got US, France in quarterfinals, potential winner of this place, potentially South Korea, and that means potentially China in the final. The gauntlet yeah, has been are, thrown down. <laughs> there are no free lunches in the... Uh, Top seed, to the top top side of the bracket anymore. The yeah, bracket. Carisu with a miss, but Boros is actually going to trade it back shortly after. Yeah, US is going to have a very early initial advantage. This map is this is actually just brutal. Some of these weird spacings come out yeah. just almost out of nowhere every time. Just when you think you're in a calmer part of the song. And it's like a nice kind of flowing stream section like that. All of a sudden, you'll get no a fight with a strong dash. Just as No Life has found out there. Coming into the break, US No. They have a slight advantage. Still two double S's on their side from Russell and Chicken Bible. A loss yep. is still holding double S for France. Yeah, no, no Life, life with again, another though. miss right there. That's really weird. You've got Alostis being mashed by Chicken Bible and Russell perfectly. But Russell is going to find a miss right as they say that. Yeah, that must have been a bit of nerves from No Life. Seeing in the break that he had dropped that the difference was uh, slightly towards US's favor, knowing that he had to pull that one back. And yep. Boros is gonna drop as well. Yeah. Chicken and Chicken Bible, Bible dropping also though. Carissa go, oh, he's down as well. There's and no all of US. anywhere left on the side of the US. A loss this is gonna bring this one slightly back into Francis' favor. Yep. Oh, but Radis right 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 Russell gets up to 200 combo, he misses. That's brutal for the US. And France, France is gonna really out. extend the lead though. Alostis still standing strong with the double S, two thirds of the way through. In the US Carisu on the recovery. Chicken Bible back to 200, Russell's almost there, but. Oh, oh no, double that's miss a double from the US? Effect. That is not good for the US. Boros will miss drop from from Chicken Bible Boros again. Bible. This time, France know they have a significant advantage, 100,000 points now. Before, yeah, France knew they were behind, but still in with a sniff. This time, US know they have some serious work to do. They cannot see any more drops now. Yeah, there definitely is. There's still enough time, but the US have to basically FC through to the ending and hope that France do have a meltdown here. Otherwise, France are going to be taking this opening point. And there's one from Boros. No life still holding strong with that 600 combo there when Russell is yep. still No life is down with Carisu. Yeah, Miss is traded there. Chicken Bible still not a 200 combo, but now Carisu has dropped again. Yeah, the US had the combo advantage at the end there, but it's not going to be enough to pull it back. So France is going to win the opening track. Pick. That's another double S from Alostis this World Cup. I don't know how much he's at currently, but I would hazard it's probably well into double figures now. And well into double figures. It was into double figures in the group stage. Yeah. Alostis adds to his SS count. And that is, that's Cyber Thunder Cyber. That's, that's a hard map to SS. Well, to be fair to the US, that was France's pick. It was their first pick. So they must have felt mm -hmm. pretty confident in that one. US shouldn't feel too deflated with that loss. They hung in there with a decent shout for most of that map. And, yeah, they, uh, were, they hard actually rock were was something ahead. that they were banning initially, so I don't think they should be too uh, too downhearted with that one. They get to pick their prime kind of preferred selection next, and we'll yeah. see. Yeah, and the only hard rock pick left is Days, and that's I think that's a little bit easier than Cyber Thunder Cider. Just do some of the spacing, so I don't think the US are going to be worried too much about hard rock, but they were in it and leading for most of that of that map. Just couldn't quite hang on in the end, and France, with the consistency, prevailed. Well, the U.S. have a lot of other options here in this pool. Oh, absolutely. It's still very early days. And we know that the U.S. have players that are maybe not specialists, but are kind of pretty kind of well-rounded as a team. Like, 
there's not any real mod that they would be afraid of, I wouldn't have thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, with the way this match, the format works now with the second ban, it's kind of really important for teams to play the maps that they feel like they can win the most first. Before the other team gets a chance to take them away. Mm -hmm. Before the other team gets a chance to knock one of them out. So I feel like we may see Hidden here from the US first. They're taking their sweet time and deliberating this one. Yeah. I mean, it's it's absolutely crucial that they get a point on the board first here, on their first pick. That they get a point on the board and respond to the point from France. Yeah, but you mean, this is their kind of first pick. You'd have thought they'd have known what they wanted to pick first up, unless what they wanted to pick first up was banned. In which yeah. case, maybe they should have decided a different first pick, considering that La Sylphida has been banned in every map so far. They will stick with Hidden, though, and they'll go for uh, mint tiers. Yep. Yep, the US going Hidden, and they've got a scary lineup for this mod. Absolutely. So, not really surprised from this ban or from this pick at all. I'm assuming that Zach will be fitting into that third slot if he's available. Obviously, a well well known and renowned hidden player, and especially of older maps like this. But no, Kurisu jumped. Kurisu. In. Interesting. Maybe Zach is not available. <laughs> Even Karisu seems a bit surprised to be in the lobby. Yeah. With the big pink. <laughs> well, Zach's in the chat, so obviously he's Zach, not supposed Zach, to be in the lobby for this. Zach one. says HD surprise incoming, and Lexi says hi, so I'm really confused. Alostis, can I have a request? Can you not be good for like one hour, please? <laughs> At least he asked nicely, but uh, I'm not sure that Alostis is going to just uh, sit down and let his, uh, his countrymen be walked over in this one. The, Fr the French have, like, probably their best team they've seen in many years, and uh, yeah. they've got to be making the most of wait, this one. Wait, this is actually the hidden lineup for the US? Chicken Bible and Karisu? Okay. Zach wasn't kidding when he said HD surprise incoming. So this is Let's... not the conventional hidden lineup for the US. Russell is the only person who actually plays hidden mostly for the US on that team. Well, this is interesting because this is their selection, so they must feel pretty confident about yeah, it's just... pick, but also these players on this pick as no life sees an early drop from the French roster. Yeah, it's just crazy to think that Lexi and like Zach are just like nope not even thought of here like not even here but as you said no life with that early miss is going to give the lead to the US here I still don't believe what I'm seeing but no life is actually going to find a second miss here and hollow is going to miss as well no life again Karisu does drop as well. It's just a lostest chicken by Luna Russell. Karisu again. US have built up quite a lead here. Hollow and Chicken Bible are gonna trade. And this thing's gonna hurt the US a little more though. Yeah, one third of the map still to play, and it's Russell versus a Lostis for who can keep that full combo for the longest right now. Yeah, and No Life's got combo to back it. Alostis is down along with Chicken Bible and Hollow. No Life, Chicken the Bible only combo. Chicken a couple of drops there, but Hollow dropping several times once again there. Oh, triple no miss Life. for the US. I've, they've built up pretty big a lead, and there isn't much in the way of combos on the side yeah. of France. I'm not it's, sure they can overturn this one. Yeah, it's only Alostis. He's got 100 combo, but I don't think it's going to be quite enough. But the US keep missing like that. That might help him out. But I don't think it's going to be enough for France here. And the U.S. are going to fire back. And with Chicken Bible, Carisu, and Russell, they win a hidden pick. Yeah, double one miss there. Just one from Russell and from Alostis. 
Just uh, Hollow struggling a little bit to maintain a significant combo on that one. Kurisu, only five misses, but that max combo of 184 really impacted uh, his score yeah, quite significantly. They were, they were spaced out in the worst way possible. But Hollow having the roughest time of all with that 179 combo. So there we go. Two shots fired, two hits secured. One apiece, both picks one. France to pick for their second time. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly how you kind of want these matches to start for if you're either team. Well, prefer you prefer to win you and prefer break to be on your opponents. Up, but... up to nothing, but this is... Looks like France is going to be going for double time this time around with endless ripples. Now, we've seen this map banned a few times. It has been banned a few times, yes. But uh, I think the reason this has been banned is it's got quite a high approach rate for a song that has a fairly low density. So it's uh, it doesn't require kind of complete memory, but it does require a lot of strong dashing to objects and then rapidly like decreasing your catcher momentum to avoid overshooting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't flow kind of as well as uh, like Heavenly Blue, the Nelly map, for example. Which has here a much higher slide of velocity. Kendall coming into the match, making his way in here. Also, Boros is back in. Yeah, we're hitting some AR-10 now on the double time pool, so this one's for the speedy boys. For the speedy boys and Ken Kendall coming in, he's been playing absolutely great on double time so far this World Cup for the US. So we'll see if he's up to the challenge here in the quarterfinals. Looks like we're just waiting. French team asking the Americans to ready up. They want to get on with this. No time to breathe. The US trying to get every second they can. <laughs> there's mind games going on. Even when it doesn't look like it, there's mind games. There's mind games. Or it could just be Kendall forgetting to click the ready up button. Well, to be fair, like, I'm not surprised if France want to end this soon, considering how late it is for them. Yeah, that's true. They want to they want to wrap this this win up and uh, head off to bed. Yeah, and also that's also another motive for the U.S. You know, the longer this match goes, the harder it's going to be for these French pra French players because they're playing at 1 a.m. Well, they agreed to this reschedule, so yeah. they must be at least somewhat kind of happy to contest this. The French coming out with better accuracy at the start here than the Americans. Yeah, we see quite a lot of drop on misses already from uh, Kendall in particular. But Chicken Bite will find the first miss. Yeah, right at just before 200 combo. That is an unfortunate place to drop. If there's a drop from France any point after this, then uh, America might take a very slight advantage here. But we've got to see that miss first if one is forthcoming. Yeah, French players looking really comfortable right now. Only seeing a few drop on misses from all of them. But they actually look really good. If they can keep holding on to combo like this just for a little bit longer, they're going to put this out of reach. Yeah, we're already halfway through the pick. And although this is uh, not a short map, the, as I said, the density is quite low, so there's not many chances to build your combo back oh, up. Kendall. Kendall with the miss, though. And a couple more as well. That is not what the US needed. Getting caught out there. This map has been banned several times. No Life will find a miss for France, but it's too little too late for the US. They need much more than that. Yeah, Kendall is uh, starting to struggle towards the end of this one here. It's not going to make too much of a difference in the grand scheme of things. Two FCs on the side of France, only one on the side of the US. Looks like that one is going to be a second game victory for France. Again, on their pick. Everything seeming fairly standard thus far. Yep, All is two, back one. in the US's court. If you recall, one year ago when the US played in the quarterfinals versus China, that was a match in which... There were no breakpoints. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, just back and forth. Back and forth, all the way to tie break. And so far, we've had three consecutive maps with no break points. We'll see if it makes it all the way. But now the U.S. have a chance to respond here and maybe a little bit of client lag here. Honestly, with this kind of matchup, I really just don't... I don't want to spend time even speculating. I kind of just wish I could just spectate a match purely like this and just see where it goes. Because I have absolutely no idea how these guys are going to... Some uh, laying down the law from our ref Tiger Eyes in the chat right now. Trying to get this match proceeding at a sensible pace. Yeah, Kendall unfortunately just forgot to click the ready button. Well, it happens to the best of us. Let's hope it doesn't yep. happen again. Anyway, it is the US's pick next. And that actually is true from Chicken Bible. Now the referee's created some confusion. And now we're going to waste more time. <laughs> Don't waste time. We weren't wasting time. This argument is causing the problem it sought to avoid. Is <laughs> causing the problem it sought to avoid. Okay, well, no more yeah, wasted time. We're coming. going back to the hidden pool for the third, well, the final hidden pick as since the last Zilfid has been banned. Doku Ringo to Cinderella from the convert uh, offering. Yeah, this map is, this map is something, man. This map is just insane to watch people play. It's quite eventful. There's always a lot of interesting patterns and spacing and timings going on. Yeah, the addition of a high BPM combined with the one-third patterning means this is really quite dense at times, lending to some very snappy patterning, which is quite difficult to balance with hidden, to be fair. There's also some interesting patterns later on, like the uh, kind of the hyper dash chain section, and then that curved uh, like buzz slider stream that can catch a lot of players out near the end. Yeah. But Alostis is going to step out for this one, actually. Okay. Feeling that he needs to uh, prepare for whatever they're going to pick next and not or, get or, caught or up focusing says, on this. Or he says, I'm not playing this. <laughs> Either one. <laughs> well, maybe he feels he's not needed. But as we again, said, like just because he is the star player on his team doesn't mean that the rest of the French roster is weak by any means. They're still excellent players. He just happens to be the standout player on a team of standout players. So, no Lexi, no Zach for hidden. So far, everyone's hanging in there, but it's about to pick up. Oh, Chicken Bible with the first miss. And I'm right at that 200 combo mark. No life missing just after that mark as well. It's going to keep the scores very even. Yeah, it's going to allow the US to crawl back into it. No life second miss, though, is going to give them the advantage immediately. I'm sure we will see some more misses. Hollow and Boros. All the French players are down. Carisu, Russell, and Chicken Bible still above 200. Yeah, perfect time. Unfortunately, Carisu not able to capitalize on that as he sees a drop, but no life drops as well. And so the Americans will hang on to the advantage for now. French trying to recover. They've almost got two combos at 200, but a double miss from the US is going to open the door for France. They've got two combos above 200 now, and no life's recovering. Carisu's trying to get up there to stop the bleeding. The 
France are going to close the gap, and a miss from Russell is going to allow France to walk in. Boros will negate it, though. Boros missing yet again. Yeah, Chicken Bible has just got up to 200 combos, so those kind of a combo advantage is ever so slightly going over to the US now. It makes that last miss from Boros there. Two thirds of the way through. Boros again will find a miss, gets caught out by that kick slider there. And no life will fall as well. Hop, triple miss from France! Not good news for the French roster. Yeah, the Americans were ready for this one. Carissa will find a miss. A Boros and No Life did miss right before that break. I didn't even see it. Chicken Bible with an uncharacteristic drop in the calm section, though. Yeah, that was a very <laughs> random miss there. Sometimes you could psych yourself out in the calm section, though, and just miss the easy stuff that you normally wouldn't. Karisu with a drop. Uh, unfortunately, Hollow dropping as well. He was the leading combo on the front there. Not going to be able to capitalize. Russell still holding on to that combo up at 600 now. Chicken Bible drops again, but I don't think it's going to matter too much. Yeah, but if stage. Hollow keeps missing, France is not going to be able to walk in. Take this point, and Boros is going to miss again as well. And so the US are going to tie this one back up at two. Yeah, it's definitely looking that way. Again, pretty convincing victory for the US on Hidden, but unfortunately... That is the hidden pool completely depleted now. Two picks, yeah. two victories for the US, and a third ban. So where do they go now? Well, they'll have a little bit of time to think about that because France will get to pick their third selection next. Yeah, and the US are probably going to be a really capable team here on Nomad. Um, this Nomad pool is pretty big. There's a lot of popular maps in there, and the US definitely have one of the best teams for that. Um, so they're probably going to go for Nomad. That's what I would guess. But France still have a hard rock pick, and they still have double time left. Yeah, I just spied uh, Lostis in the chat saying, I wasn't playing the map because I hate it. <laughs> so that's fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> but they don't have to worry about hidden anymore. So that's uh, maybe one concern off their minds if it was. We'd also like to say hi to Toy out there in the chat. The standard OWC champion oh, coming in to cheer boy. on the US boys. Chicken Bible and again, pleading with a Lostis to go back to the bench. <laughs> he was France so good wasting while you no were time. There. They're wasting no time there. They want more DT on the table. Heavenly Blue going to be the next selection. Yeah. This, again, this mod is definitely the one weakness, I think, for the US. Not a crippling weakness, but in past years, it's always been the mod that they're slightly weaker on compared to their other mods. In all fairness, it's not been a huge issue for the US, to be honest, because Double Time is one of those mods that very few countries have three players which are really good at Double Time yeah. at this kind of level of difficulty. A lot of people play kind of Hidden and Hard Rock, and obviously as well as no mod, at this level of difficulty, but Double Time is much more of a specialist mod that only kind of one or two people at most per country play. I mean, we see some countries like Chile have an excellent Double Time lineup, uh, so, unless you're playing against a country like that, that weakness isn't necessarily exposed. But France looking like they have the roster for double time, uh, which a lot of countries do not have. And that might be something that does can take them a lot further in the tournament than in previous years. Yeah, definitely. All it takes is kind of showing one area of weakness and then another team's going, oh, hey, I can get three points there. Yeah, I will say that the US is double time... I de it's not as weak as last year, definitely because of Kendall. Kendall's been playing pretty well so far. Oh, you can have, like, a very strong team on any particular mod, but if the other team is better than you, it doesn't matter how good you are. Oh, yeah, no. 100%. But anyway, this is uh, time for a bit of an endurance test. Yeah. France going to put the Americans' double time skills to the test here. Kendall with an early miss here right before 200 at about the 170 mark. 
Yeah, we've seen a lot of that from the US so far this match, just missing just before getting to the 200, whereas the French players who've been missing have been tending to miss just after the 200. Uh, thankfully, it's not kind of broken any any points for either team just yet. But as the match goes on, pressure yeah, gets oh, close oh, oh, with the drop, though. This is going to give the advantage back to the US as Kendall has just hit that 200 combo mark himself. Yeah, oh, so but no, he misses. Oh. There's a trade. Yeah, there's a trade, and actually now it's going to be an American advantage because we have two 200 com plus combos to one. Yeah, lost this quickly back up to that 200 combo mark, yeah. but uh, Kendall and Hollow both are pretty much an equal footing right about now. It's yeah. very narrow, probably no more than 10,000 points difference at this stage, and this yeah, is a long map. Chicken Bible with Bible. a miss! So France, back in the lead. And the lost is already back up to that 300 combo mark. Yeah, not looking too troubled after that early miss. No misses there. Oh, but Kendall gets caught up shortly after. France is going to grow the lead now. Chicken Bible is up to 200. But all the French players are looking so comfortable. Kendall takes a big hit on the health bar. Yeah, we're starting to see a little bit of suffering from Kendall here. Not that he's a, a bad player at this mod at any means, but this is just something that requires so much concentration for a long period of time. Yeah. And a lot of players do not have that kind of ability. Yeah, it's not Oro just DT. The 1000 combo as Russell matches him, but unfortunately it is three large combos to two on the side of France. So they are steadily growing that point difference. Yeah. This, this map is so long, so it really does push these DT players and, and really just demands every ounce of your stamina. One third of the map to go. France know they have a 100,000 point advantage, which can still be overturned. There's still a lot of fruit to catch. Yep. Kendall's back up at 300 combo. Chicken but, Bible is the next to drop, though. Look at the consistency coming out from France right now. All three of their players are about to have a thousand combo. Kendall with yet another miss. He's trying to recover. Alostis is going to miss, though. The gap is too large at this stage. It will take yeah. a huge problem for one of the French players, or multiple French players now, to overturn yeah. the lead. And there's only this calm, calm kind of slider end section. And France going to take a point on double time. So this is great for France. Because although they haven't managed to break the US yet, they've been victorious on Hard Rock and Double Time. Hidden has been the only victory uh, mod pool for the US so far, and there are no hidden maps left. So they're forcing US to try something different now, or pick something that they know France has proven to be strong at. Yeah, definitely. But now the US do get a ban. Let's also not forget that. The US do that get their true. second ban. Uh, are you allowed to just slap Hidden on and DC pick and see? Yes. Uh, in Oscatch score V2, uh, Hidden gives no score modifier or bonus at all. You can put it on freely with double time or hard rock purely to aid you in kind of your reading if you are a, a Hidden reading uh, aficionado. Obviously, Hidden Pool must be played with Hidden, but it's completely optional if you uh, want to add it for hard rock or DT. There's no pressure to add it if you want extra points or anything like that. Kendall saying that he's having some hardware issues. We'd never like to see that. Hopefully he can get those sorted. One hard rock, one double time still available. And you got to imagine that the US are going to ban one of those. It's uh, It's got to be... Uh, it's, yeah, it's the double time. Definitely. There it is. They're going to ban best of my love. I think days from the hard rock pool is a map that a lot of players at this difficulty will feel more comfortable in, will probably have played at least once, if not several times. Where uh, So most teams should be fairly comfortable with that. And uh, yeah, uh, the US opting to get rid of that um, double time pick. They've, they've lost both of the DT picks thus far, so just not wanting anything to do with that mod anymore. Yep, and the US now with the pick, are they going to go for no mod or the one remaining hard rock? One way or another, we're going to be playing some Nomad, all right? Well, there's not going to be much left but Nomad very yeah. soon. <laughs> 
So now we're waiting for the pick here. I mean, the U.S. obviously I think a little weaker in terms of Nomad this year because they don't have Playboy. It was a big part of that three man Nomad roster from last year. But they still have a really good Nomad roster. They got Karisu, got Kendall, got Lexi, and Zach, as well as Chicken Bible and Russell. I mean, these guys can play pretty much almost anything. Their problem but, is that France have a roster that it can do pretty much the exact same. Yeah. And if you pick no mod, like the most common mod, the mod that nearly everyone can play well at this level, it's always a risk. Like, what if the other yeah. team are just slightly better than us at it? But the US are going to be picking uh, no mod. They're going to be going with uh, Chino Iro Wakiru, the uh, Hollow Wings convert difficulty. Something that we have seen a few times. Gonna be interesting to see. This is definitely a pick that if you can build a significant combo and maintain it for any length of time, you'll be definitely running away with a huge advantage for your team. This yeah, is a map that's so easy to just make a small error on, just a little miss. And when you get down to that kind of like back reset your combo, building back up to 200 just seems like such a long process because every slider jump, every stream is just so much more difficult than you expect. Yeah, it's definitely one of those kind of maps where you, you can literally just miss on anything. Or just about anything in the map. So, as you said, combo is going to be super important here. One thing we do have to mention, though, this is an interesting selection from the US. Not because it's a pick that they're weak on, but France have some of the best convert players in the game right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no life particularly stands out as someone who is like obviously not a bad player of specifics but he has definitely honed his craft on converts more so than most yeah players usually tend to favor either specifics or or converts and france excel at converts but this is kind of a this isn't your average convert as hollow finds the early miss So many awkward hypers placed here and just the timing and spacing of some of these patterns is yeah there's a lot of these slider jumps combined with anti-flow so it's best if possible to just try and stack your catcher and not wiggle too much as hollow sees another drop there if you can catch fruit on the edge of your plate without too much difficulty you can make your next jump so much more comfortable oh yeah Oh, Carissa will find the first miss for the U.S., so France going to get some score back. They're still going to have the uh, advantage overall, though, because Hollow has seen, I think, two misses thus far. One very early miss and then another miss as well, so the U.S. will still have a slight advantage, but Hollow back up to 200, looking good. Carissa with a second miss. Yeah, just That's dashing gonna... slightly too early on that wiggle. Hollow and no Black. life both drop, though. Chicken by the as well. Yeah, a lost is traded as well, though. Russell, Russell, the only combo left. Russell tends to excel at just any awkward map. Like, you think of maps that just have awkward patterns and spacings? Russell can do them so he made well. Those slider streams look so trivial. That is an impressive play by him so far. And as I said, like, he holds that combo. He knows that every second he can maintain this combo, he's giving his team a massive advantage. Yeah, that score bar is flying more and more to the left the longer and longer he holds on. But US are not completely out of this yet. They haven't won it, but they gotta put it away. Yeah, Chicken Bible and Karisu both back up to 200 combo now, so it's looking very good for them. But No Life and the Lostis have done the same. They're still gonna be growing that advantage whilst Hollow catches up. But any number of misses towards the end of this map can trade and uh, give their France back an advantage. Yeah, still not over yet, but a good recovery from France as well. They're still in this and they know it. Chicken Bible is going to provide a miss though to let him in here. France not out of this just yet. Karisu with a miss as well. And Russell is down. And that's this a triple miss from the US. I think there's still too much left in the map. 
Hollow oh, with a miss. Chicken Bible trade, but this one's going to go back to France. No life and a loss this after those early misses, holding very strong. No life and a loss this hit all of the ending. Are you kidding me? Finally, we see a break point, and it's over to the side of France. Four to two. We did say that picking Nomad and picking Converts against this French roster especially was a risk. And although Russell, with that one miss, put in a stellar performance, he was just not enough to carry the team. Yeah, uh, France delivered. I mean, they played to expectations, honestly, on picking Converts. Nomad against France is, is really difficult to win. I think the U.S. did about as good as they could have hoped for on that. I mean, just, I was really surprised. I mean, Hollow was struggling, so I was worried for the French that uh, Hollow wouldn't be able to maintain combo consistency and just continuously miss, but he did get his act together, and credit to him helped France get the point. Wow, so this is our last non-no-mod pick coming out, and it's going to be days from the Hard Rock Pool. After this, we have... Well, it could be one no mod pick if uh, France win this, or it could be a no mod marathon. <laughs> it could be a no mod marathon. Russell making his point known. <laughs> so the last hard rock pick. Things. France have really put the pressure on here because now this hard rock is basically a must win for the US. Uh, is that some uh, some friendly banter to try and hide the nerves from the US? Chicken Bible saying 200 bucks and he'll throw Zach under the bus for this one. Uh, hopefully, they're, uh, hopefully they're still just having a good time because if they're getting nervous, this is not a team you want to give an inch to. France have looked clinical thus far. Yeah, definitely. France. France are punishing all the mistakes the U.S. are making. Um, and we expected really that this is basically a match that either team could win. But here we go. On to the last Hard Rock pick. Nobody will take Hidden. And we haven't seen Lexi or Zach, so they may not be here. Well, you can only play with the roster that is uh, available to you at the time, so... And very early miss from Caruso, and a second miss as well in that introductory section. Gonna give uh, France the advantage. Despite Surprise. this is being only a minute and a half long, the max combo is just under 700, so there's a chance to get back into this one. Yeah, but combo is absolutely crucial on a map like this if there's only 700, and that miss from Caruso is really not gonna help the US. Because the French are all full comboing right now. And yeah, France looking very good right now. Carice's two misses have really let France get away here. Unfortunately, because it's such a short map, it has such a big effect. And there's another one. But France, three-way FC here. We have five-way FC on this. That's actually insane. Yeah. Carice just struggling a little bit. Maybe the nerves getting to him. No one getting caught out by that little spinner bait as we've seen a couple of times earlier today. I lost this dropping that double S right at the end, but it is going to be a triple, triple FC, FC for France. Really strong showing by them. Five way FC, Carisu the only misses, but that's going to give the point to France. They're up 5 2 at match point. I don't think we expected this sort of dominance from France. Well, if you didn't expect the uh, dominance from France, then you haven't been watching them in previous rounds, to be fair. They have looked untroubled thus far True. by any team but that they've participated against. Against the defending runners-up. You know, it's just, it's insane to see. Well, US aren't out of this one yet, but they do need to win three games and then a tiebreaker to uh, secure this one. Yeah, the France US got to win. Barely imperious form right about now. Yeah, the US have to win four in a row to take this away from France. The good news for them, it's Nomad. The 
bad news for them, they can't lose a single point. Yeah. They've only played one no mod map so far. It was their pick, and uh, they kind of got beaten on it. So, admittedly, like none of the other picks in this pool are anything like no mod yeah, five. Yeah, the one they play. Yeah, like the one they play. The problem is that, like, I find well, this so crazy that this is no mod. That, that the yeah. US are gonna have the US have to win three no mod maps in a row to force tiebreak. I think the best thing for them here is to give a shot to one of Unconquered, Axiom Crisis, or World Vanquisher. They are very similar maps, and if they can win on one of them, they will feel that they can probably win on the... They have a good chance of winning on the others. Uh, this is a winner's bracket match, uh, Kadavrin, so neither of these teams will be going home, uh, even if they lose, but uh, they will just be dropping back down into loser's bracket. Yeah, but the the thing is, if you think about it this way, the U.S. are going to be able to control two of these next three picks, so they can, if they play well on, like, Unconquered or World Bank, I'm sure they could go for one of the other ones when it comes back around to it. You have to imagine that if they do pick one of those three and win, France will ban one of the other two, though, because they will get a, a comeback ban if the U.S. score a third point. Oh, totally forgot about that. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> this is going to be rough. It's not looking too good for the U.S. right now. Reversible Doll is going to be their selection, though. I mean, we did see on the uh, Map Pool Showcase last week, Chicken Bible gave a very impassioned speech about how he loved this map, and it was one of his favorites when he was kind of just getting into a uh, higher level catch play. So obviously he's a big fan of this one. Hopefully he can uh, continue his love for it, and it's not going to betray him in this uh, most most needed moment. In, yeah, in, in his uh, dire time of need here. And hopefully Kendall can shake off the early rounds. It is really unfortunate that I haven't seen Lexi or Zach at all. I did see a uh, F in chat for Lexi being stuck in a car somewhere in chat. Oh no! The thing is they still won the hidden picks. Well, unfortunately, you can't reschedule twice, and the yeah. uh, U.S. have just got to make the best of their situation. If you're an American or you're a, a U.S. fan and you wanted to see them dig themselves out of this hole they find themselves in, do get your support going in the Twitch chat. They need you now more than ever before. All right. I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm going to have to do this. I'm buying a banner. Oh, you think that's going to sway it? I think it's going to sway it. Well, you've got three minutes, because that's about how long this map that's is. That's all I so. need. I'm buying a banner. France have pushed US to the limit here, and they just need one more point to get themselves into the semi-finals winner's bracket. Can they do it? Wawaka's reversible doll could be the final pick of today. Let's see who comes out on top. Boom! Banner has been bought. He's done it. All of the US scores doubled. Wow! <laughs> Whoa! France have triple missed! <laughs> <laughs> it really that's works! Some, that's some next level cursinating, if that were to be the case. <laughs> everyone, Zax is everyone five US banners. Any good luck I can send him, man. I've done all I can. Someone's gonna be plastering by this banner to help Americana or something to that, <laughs> something to that effect. Yeah. Right now, they're both tied. Everyone's assessing still. Consistency is the name of the game. I mean, you're not wrong. This one's not a handbreaker, but it's a little bit tricky at times. Kendall with a few droplet misses, and that's an actual miss from Kendall. That's a little bit bigger miss from the US roster. Kendall with a few drops there, unfortunately. He's just got to focus on recovering and getting that combo back. Yeah, they're not even halfway through just yet, so they can still be turned around. But France, credit to him, they're holding up. No Life did find a few droplet misses.
So France know that they have about a 35,000 point lead right now, and Kendall is the difference maker. Everyone else still holding a full combo. No life with a very slight accuracy drop, but all four other players holding double S's. Hey, right now, we just lie in wait here. France holding the lead for now. A third of the map left. They're looking to put the US away. It would be a huge win for France. And this would be a dominant win from France if they can close it out here. 6 2 against last year's runners up. We'll that see if be, they can do that though. That'd be a, a little big way time to go. win for this French team. And they're, they want it bad. They got to get it done and finish it, close it out. The US are hanging tough right behind him. Not giving up just yet. Yeah, Kendall's recovered nicely from those earlier drops. But if France don't miss, then it doesn't matter how well they perform for the rest of yeah. the pick. I mean, you still have a loss to Simboros holding the SS's. No life has done well to recover just after missing a few droplets, honestly. I think it might just be the two droplets, honestly. Yeah, just two droplets. But the French absolutely powering through this. There really needs to be a drop from the French roster. Yeah, now. it needs to happen the now or the Americans here. are done. It's not happening. I mean, we can't quite say the US is gone, but... No. France have not let their foot off the gas for a single second in this match. Kendall, Kendall misses, the drop. that's it! Wow. That's it. What Lag a at the end. performance from the French, guys. 6-2, it's over. Another double-double S. No life with the, uh, just a couple drop misses, making that a triple FC. 6-2 to France. That is an astonishing performance from those players. Another guarantee. Performing at that level against opposition of that level and not blinking is brilliant. Well played to France. Well played to the US as well. Obviously, they put in an outstanding performance, but just not able to match the unshakable consistency yeah. of the French players. And also, to their players not being there it does kind of hurt. And against a team like France, you need all of your team members. But France yeah, they... secure their second ever spot in finals week. Yes, yeah, looking very strong for them. I was kind of hoping that uh, after I hyped them up, they wouldn't fall flat on their face as they maybe have done in uh, some of the previous years. I mean, we've seen them go out in group stage despite being a high seed before, so this year yeah. they look a much different beast than they have been in previous years. And a semi-final match against Korea or Taiwan beckons for them. And I gotta That's say, they look game. really good. We have they seen we have seen France really uh, victorious in a scrim over Korea this week. So, on a semi-final pool, if their players can all keep up with that, what what, what looks like to be a rapidly escalating difficulty, that could be a very simmering, a uh, nicely simmering encounter. Absolutely. So Chile and France are through to the top four, the top six guaranteed. They're in the semi-finals of the winners bracket. The U.S. will play Brazil next week. But they will have to potentially meet Hong Kong after that. Yeah, I think the uh, team that will be fighting against Hong Kong will be the loser of the Philippines-China match, or may will it be the uh, Hong Kong will is it be going the, will it be the Taiwan-South Korea match? It'll be the Taiwan-South Korea match. Okay. So that's still not that's still dangerous. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. That is uh, concluding our stream for today. That is going to do it. So France move on 6-2 over the U.S. And we'll get to Philippines, China, and Korea, Taiwan tomorrow. 11 hours from now. Check the wiki for the schedules. Don't miss it. Well, JBH, that's going to do it. Yeah, so Hong Kong, Germany, Mexico, and Brazil victorious in their losers bracket encounters. So sadly... Sweden, Poland, the Netherlands, and my boys, Great Britain, have unfortunately exited the tournament for uh, this 2019 edition. Uh, Finland and the US, uh, not victorious today, but will survive into tomorrow, uh, next week's losers bracket. Big congratulations to uh, France, Brazil, Mexico, Chile, Germany, and Hong Kong for their victories. So yeah, thank you very much to everyone in chat. 
Thank you very much to our streamers, our commentators, our statisticians. You've all been so wonderful. And we'll see you back for two more matches of quarterfinal action tomorrow. See you tomorrow. China and Philippines await. Good night. Don't miss it. We'll be back tomorrow. Goodbye.